Hello. This is Jedi Watto, master of the art of wearing an expensive item he bought at Galaxy's Edge for the opening of the show so he can write it off for tax purposes immediately! Hello, this is Jedi Watto. I am already sweaty. Jersey Dave is still struggling to figure out how to turn the air conditioning on here, but welcome to the George Lucas talk show. Warm up. Let's look at the chat. Who here has ever has never been to a taping of the George Lucas talk show before. If you haven't, do an emoji of a pineapple. But if you have been to a taping of the George Lucas talk show before, do an emoji of a pear. And if you have been to a taping of a different talk show, but not the George Lucas talk show, do an emoji of a kiwi. But if you have been to a taping of the George Lucas talk show, but not any other kind of talk show, do an emoji of a guava. And if you're ready to have a fun time tonight, do an emoji of an accordion. And if you know, then you know what I'm setting up there. Listen, I want to get this show started because we got the great guest tonight, not like our usual bullshit. So the way we spread the love here, because this is not an in-person show, it's virtual, it's a live stream, is you have to show your love in the live chat, in the laughing, in the clapping, in the cheering, in the crying, if it comes to that. But also you have to post about this on other social media platforms so people know to tune in. In order to do that, we have some hashtags written by our producer, Patrick Codner. Hashtag American Yankofiti. Fine. Hashtag Manned Weird Al Orion. Fine. Hashtag Demand Accordion. Excuse me, let me take that again. Hashtag Demand Accordion. Yeah, that, that was a mistake. What? I'm sorry about that. It could have been the man accordion. You admit that. Yes, I messed up. I messed up on that one. Well, there's a first time for everything, and there's also an infinite time for everything. Hashtag. You said he force? What is this? If you look at the capital letters, Wano. UHF. But you realize this joke does not work out loud and it barely works visually. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, go fuck yourself. Hashtag mm -hmm. Albert Kirk Queen Amadala. I like that one and I get it. Albert Kirk Queen Amadala. A little hard to say, but I like it. Hashtag mm -hmm. George of the Jar Jar. That feels weird. I know he did a, a popular cover of that, but it's like, that's not like one of his songs. You could have picked No, any. but I was... I was going through the list and it just, it felt fun to have George and Jar Jar in there, you know? Okay, well, once again, go fuck yourself. Hashtag trapped in the Death Star. I like okay. that. People are saying Watto doesn't like sweaty hashtags. The problem is Watto's already feeling too sweaty. The robe was a mistake and Dave is still trying to fix the AC. The point is, let's start the show.
welcome retired filmmaker George Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Um, let's go ahead, Watto. Uh, let's bring Watto in right away. Uh, Watto, are you there? Hello, yes. I went to get the Coca-Cola. I'm trying to wake myself up because I don't know about you, George. Mm -hmm. But I'm still readjusting back from island time, baby. That's right. We did a show on a boat. We were on a boat, motherfucker. Uh, Patrick, do you want to? I know you're uh, dying to come in uh, to the stream and make announcements. Yes. And yeah. Patrick, you have your own cook because you saw the bit. I set up the cook, then George heightened it with the Star Wars cook, and then I assume you have a third beat. Okay. I don't have a Coke. I'll get a Coke in a minute. Um, you know, a product of the Coca Cola company. Want to check I, there? I believe that is true. Let's confirm. It's not saying it. Mm, I believe Sorry. the Sunny is the product of the Coca Cola company. The product that George is doing. George, the master of third beating, his own second beat. That's right. Patrick fails to heighten, and George comes in and heightens even further. Do you Sorry. know, Patrick? The competitive advantage the Sony has on other waters. I don't. Tell me, water. It's the only water that makes you more thirsty. That's right. <laughs> Here it is. Salt. Wow. Sometimes you, you're so dehydrated and you go, I wish I was a little more parched. Pass mm -hmm. me a dish, Sonny. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's the only water that makes you want more and more water. Or more yeah. Dasani, I should say. No. Whereas I'm the only water that makes you want more and more. Right. Make me full screen. <laughs> Make me full screen. What the? Go on. Uh, Patrick, uh, let's, get this, let's get this business out of the way right, so we can get to our guest. I feel like we, we got two working. announcements. I want to say really quick. First off, we introduced a new character in the last show, and you know we got some merch for him already. What? There's a, there's a lot, uh, a lot shirt. Uh, in addition, you can still buy the Da and the George Lucas Talk Show pass that are on planetscum.live slash merch. Um, those are available right now, and you can go get them right now. But the big announcement, there's a big announcement tonight. Wait a second. Go back to the demon for one second. I just to keep track. We have a what shirt and a Da mm -hmm. hat, but we do not have a Yo Gizmo shirt or a To Gizmo hat, correct? It looks like maybe next month we'll have them. It's our next capsule collection. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are essentially wuzzles. Yes. Patrick now didn't know about wuzzles, and George gave and I gave him what for. Patrick, why are you dicking around so much? Get to the second announcement. The big announcement tonight. Guys, if you are in the Los Angeles area on June 3rd. Holly weird, baby. We're doing a show at Dynasty Typewriter. You can go and get your live tickets for in-person or it's live streaming online. You go to bit.ly slash L-A-G-L-T-S. So unlike our book show that you had to be there for, but parts of it may get posted later. This show you right. can watch live from home with the ticket or you can go in person with the ticket. Yes. So I want to, listen, I want to sell this out, you know? Right. And I think we can. Uh, you just go to bit.ly slash L-A-G-L-T-S and you get your tickets. And this is a key reason we would love to sell this show out. We have no guest booked. It mm. would be nice to be able to go to guests and say, hey, would you like to do a sold out show? Mm -hmm. Sounds fun, doesn't it? It does. Um, Wanda, we should introduce our guest. Oh, what a guest we have today. George? What a guest we have. What a guest we have. Patrick. This is what, a guest we have. what a guest we have. Guest, can you hear me? I know you are in the private chat and the virtual green room right now. I would love to bring you on the George Lucas talk show, but I can't because on this show, we let the guests do their own introductions. Not do, I should clarify. I'm the announcer, I do the introductions, but you get to write them. Feel free to write any introduction you want in the private chat and I will read it verbatim in order to bring you on the show. 
And it, it, listen, different. it could be it could be it funny. Be it can be serious. You play it however you want. It could be a little bit of both if you want. Yes, uh, it can be funny. Perfect. It, I think this is a perfect <laughs> intro. It can be sincere, or it can be a little funny and a little sincere. Look at water is there. Look at since Avalon. Okay, we got the intro. Ready, folks? Here's Al. Hello. Hello. Wow. I, I, I did Al in all caps because I didn't want you to think it was going to be here's AI and you, didn't, you know, think it was going to be some, some kind of artificial intelligence. Oh. I understand that might be mm -hmm. a bit of a confusion there. So I would be sponsor very hard. confused. Yeah. Sponsor, sponsor hard. I would be very confused yeah. because I would think my buddy Steve, it was my buddy Steve's great movie, AI. Oh, yes. Yeah. People nice. think they tuned in to watch us interview you and instead they were going to watch a two and a half hour Haley Joel Osment dystopian sci fi drama. <laughs> And he saw, and he saw dead people in that movie too. It's he did. Incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Has he uh, ever made a film in which he hasn't seen dead people at some point? That, that cool. always works into the plot somehow. Right. <laughs> Secondhand it's, lines. It's, Secondhand it's conceptual lines. continuity, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best part of pay the opera. Pay, pay it forward, yeah. They do. Yeah. He, I mean, he's the dead person and pay it forward. Spoilers. <laughs> they stabbed oh. the shit out of that kid. Yeah. I, I have to say before we go him. in violence. Sorry, Al. Go on. Before we go any farther, I just I just have to say that I you know I'm starting this off kind of in a bad mood because I'm a little I'm a little envious that I didn't come up with Albuquerque Queen Amidala. Ah. Uh, I I wish I wish you guys were my writing team. If I don't have a writing team, but if I had one, uh -huh. I wish that it were you. We we are more than happy to be your writing team, and certainly Patrick <laughs> would be your writing team if you if you offered him to that. He he's very reasonable. This I got nothing else going on. Anyone Good to has know. ever asked Patrick to write punch up for them? <laughs> if I ever need some some hashtags, you'll be the first people I call. That's correct. Now, That's am correct. I misremembering that Albuquerque was on Running with Scissors along with Saga Begins? So that was the exact same time period. That this is crazy, but you're right. Yes, it all makes wow. sense now. Wow, it was right there. Was right I there. didn't realize they were connected, but now, now that you pointed out, it, everything kind of comes together mm -hmm. this, like that. This is yeah. George's talk show, and I need to lean back, but I have a question. No, none of that, Pat. I no, want to ask none forward. of that, Pat. It's a family broadcast. This yeah. is not week, not the week. <laughs> I was just trying to do something different, and then I realized it was probably not the thing to do, you know? <laughs> Al. Yes, Wado. You release that song, The Saga Begins. It's your main yes. single off of that, your 99 album, Running With Scissors. I, I don't think, mm, I, did we really? I guess I guess it was, yes. Okay, we'll say it's the first single. I remember, because I remember the hullabaloo of... There was a lot of hullabaloo. Do you remember that, the hullabaloo? hullabaloo? That was my favorite 60s uh, um, music show, Hullabaloo. Yeah. I, I remember seeing the video. I don't know if this was the premiere of the video. But it was an early airing of the video on Entertainment Tonight, I believe. Was and it before it, it was actually done? It uh, maybe, but the thing I remember was they were framing it as "You'll never believe who this is," because that was <laughs> one of the first times you had taken the glasses off, and you had a sort of Padawan wig in that. You had short. That, that sounds. That sounds like clickbait to me. Like number six will surprise you. It was number. It was 1999 broadcast television clickbait. Like they said later on in the show, you won't believe who this is, and they showed you. That was the episode of Entertainment Tonight that people famously were trying to click. They couldn't <laughs> click it. People were tapping on their streams, trying to on their TV screens, trying to click mm -hmm. it. I, I, I remember that now because I was watching at the time and I didn't know who it was. He said, "Who the fuck is that?" I, I was. I, I, those exact words I think I used. Yeah. Yes. And, and the song got a lot of press, and a big part of that was, I mean, it was a big, no, it was a great song, people couldn't believe who it was, but also that people were so desperate for any information about Phantom Menace. And yes. here you had a song where you recounted most of the plot <laughs> correctly. Before and, I even saw the movie, yeah. Right, so this is my question. This, this song came out at least a month before the movie. Yes. And you said, I believe I've heard you say, that that you got the plot, you sussed it out from websites with leaks. Well, that's what I officially had to say. And okay. now, George, now that you're here in person, okay. I want to apologize. 
you know, because uh, uh, forgiveness is easier than permission a lot of the times. And, and I yeah. did I did go through your trash for several weeks oh. uh, to, to piece it all together. Uh, I, I didn't want to bring it up at the time because I knew you were sensitive. But, you know, it's, it's been a couple of decades now, and I just kind of figured mm -hmm. that you'd be cool with it. That retrospect. really surprises me because I can't imagine that how much how many drafts was I throwing away of that script? I, I can't <laughs> imagine that there were too many that went in the garbage. Yeah, uh, well, that, that's that's why I was a little concerned that maybe I was getting like an early draft that you were working on, and then the song wouldn't make any sense. When I think back, it was uh, we wanted to get that script absolutely perfect, so there probably were quite a few revisions that we went through. So it was very easy to piece together uh, what was happening. Yeah. I, my, I, I, I saw I saw the Jar Jar stuff, and I thought, no, this this is not a final version. This is just like a placeholder. But right. it wound up being, it wound up working out. No, the spirit of Jar Jar was there from day one. Yeah, yeah. It, you know that was the one thing. Like we we got Jar Jar in the first draft, and we never changed a line as we went through it. it. Pass after pass, he would pretty much stay consistent because you don't. Yes, you know, once you have it, and once it's hilarious, you don't need to change it. Well, it's a fan favorite. You can't argue with that. You don't mess with funny. No. Yeah. I mean, Al, you are a meticulous wordsmith, so I'm sure you you have experience with this, especially when you're dealing with song parodies. You have to fit it into very specific rhyme schemes and timing and stuff, not of your own creation. George, you know, he's a perfectionist, and especially when it comes to comedy. And, uh, you know, I was in the trenches on Phantom Menace, and I remember this, that that was sort of the most uh, pressure he put on himself to get the script absolutely Right. And I remember over five years, George must have gone through two, three drafts. It was incredible the amount of work he put into it. It's, it's like a five year long game of Tetris where everything is kind of falling, but, but it all has to fit exactly right. right. And that's what George pulled off. Right. Still third, amazes me to this day. The third piece fell and he went perfect time to exit out of the game. Yes. <laughs> well, I knew I, I knew that, you know, there are jokes uh, in most of my movies have jokes. Um, Red Tails doesn't have very many, but most of my movies have some comedy in them. I love I love laughter and humor and comedy. And uh, but Phantom was really the one I, I had I had played a small role in Beverly Hills Cop three. And the energy of that, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if I made the next Star Wars the funniest one? I thought, let's have a character because 3PO is pretty funny. I think R2 is pretty funny on solos. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some funny characters but not like Jar Jar. Jar Jar was a character. Uh, he was the, you know, he was the, the, the breakout star. He was a laugh riot. He was so funny that we actually couldn't like, it was like a comet just blazing out. Like in, in two and three, we, we couldn't find room for that, for that brand of humor there. You know, I was hoping when you did your remastered version of the movie that you'd put in more Jar Jar, like, like supersize the Jar Jar. The problem we had was when we were doing Revenge of the Sith, the Jar Jar stuff was, you know, sometimes you have to kill your darlings when you're editing a movie. And mm -hmm. there was a Jar Jar plot where he got lost in a grocery store, but it was so easy to lift out. It didn't affect the rest of the plot. He just was like spilling everything, knocking over whole aisles. And we looked, Hilarious. At, <laughs> we looked at the final cut of the movie and I just thought, you know, this is the best work I've ever done, but it doesn't tell the story. It doesn't serve the story of how Lil Annie becomes uh, Darth Vader. And I said, you know what? It's just for me. That one's for me. So you didn't even put it on the Blu-ray. I thought that, that would be a great deleted scene. It, it, you know, it's too great. I, if I put it, if I show, it's one of those things where if I were to show you the deleted Jar Jar scenes from two and three, society would fall apart. People wouldn't be able to handle that they're not part of the saga. I know exactly what you mean there, because as a creative person, I think I can relate to you on this level, George. Yeah. A lot of times I don't put out something that I think is too good. Like yeah, this true. is just so great. Yeah. Nobody deserves this. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> ready for this. I just right. have to move on, do something completely different. That's not quite this great because it's just <laughs> it's overwhelmingly great. It would be selfish to put out something that is too good for society to handle. I'm, I'm selfish enough first. that I can deprive people of some of the great stuff that they're right. just not ready for. Well, and I'll say it because you guys can't, okay? Your creative geniuses, your moguls, okay? Both of you sit on a kingdom of billions. There is a target <laughs> on your back. Al, I'm sure you run this calculus all the time. You yes, yeah. Song, you play it back and you go, is this too funny? 
Am I That's confused? always the problem. With too many lawsuits from people who claim that their sides were split and demand <laughs> medical compensation. It's a litigious world out there, man. I, you know, so many albums we had, we're almost ready to press it. And then I got a call from the uh, from the uh, from the legal department saying it's a little too funny. Can you please yeah. like edge it back a little bit? And bruised you know, knees. I'm sure it's you get, hard. You get called about bruised knees. They say the people are slapping them too hard. When slapping they them, to they're to like red, <laughs> red and shaped knees. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that that's a lawsuit right there. That's uh, that's not a pretty thing. Oh. So now we already got some fan art. The show has just started. This is Weird AI. Here's uh, Al. You're you're in the place of Kelly Joel Osmond. Uh, wow, you guys are quick. Yeah. We like also got we got some more. Hang on, let me find the other one. There was there was Jedi Watto. Jedi Watto, King of the Tax Writer. And then there was one. Oh, this one. Uh, hang on. That was I believe Al getting uh, blown up by the Death Star. I think. That is very nice. Oh, it's it's, it's Alderon. It's Alderon. Alderon. Weird Alderon. Oh, full animation. Yeah. I now I'm not. I don't think that's on the ones, but it's good for 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 having that within a few minutes. That's very impressive. It's UPA style limited animation, but they're making I'm the impressed. most of the limitation. Al, okay. you've been on many a talk show before. I'm up uh, 83 now. 83. You um, even yeah. were the band leader on Comedy Bang Bang. I was. Now, for the, uh, they, 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 they wanted somebody to, to finally kill off the show, and Scott <laughs> asked me. Yes. The cooler. They call you the cooler. The cooler, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these talk shows, maybe you go on there and they let you leave with a mug, with a hat, with a shirt, right? I, I think I got a t shirt out of it, yeah. We have a more limited budget. This is a, a humble, modest show, self-financed by a billionaire. So we don't have gifts, but this is what we offer in exchange. You yourself okay. were just impressed. You remarked upon how fast the weird AI fan art came in. Our, I was. Our, yes. our, our community is very fast. So we always say to our guests, you can suggest, you can request any piece of fan art you want to see. It can be of yourself. It can be of anything else. It can be related to the show. It cannot be anything you've ever wanted to see produced. And in under 10 minutes, we will have at least one example of that. It's a guarantee. Okay. I would like a picture of me juggling hamsters with Cindy Lauper. <laughs> and the clock. And, and so it shall be. Yeah. 834. Go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> George, can I ask you a question? This might be kind of a personal thing, but That's great. Um, I, I've met you in person two times in my life. Yeah. And the first the first time uh, you made a point of telling me that your kids were big fans of mine and you were like very gregarious and we got along great. And the second time I bumped into you, you looked at me like a deer in headlights, like you didn't know who I was at all. And I'm thinking the first time, that's why I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt today, because the first time I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, yeah. the second time I wasn't. So I'm thinking maybe you have that, what is that kind of uh, condition where you don't recognize faces and maybe it's just, maybe it's just a shirt that you recognized. Well, the first time you were, yes, you were dressed uh, the way you normally, your, your trademark look. And the second time I, here was my fear the second time that we met. I was worried that it was someone spoofing you. Mm. Oh, because I understood. thought is this Weird Al or is this a spoof of Weird Al? Am I am I because I thought is this guy's is this guy's bit that he plays normal Al, like normal shirt Al, and so I was a little right. bit frightened. I, I thought I don't know I don't want to fall for this because no. you know it, it's we live in a world you know where uh, parodies and spoofs uh, there. Are, they exist, but they're also pranks and 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 crank yankers. Mm. And of so course, a, a, a parody or a spoof often announces itself. That's why we love Mad Magazine and Cracked and things like that because you know that it's uh, a spoof. You know that it's a parody. You know what you're getting, so you can get into the right frame of mind. But then there are times I've been fooled by Onion headlines mm. where I thought, "Oh, mm -hmm. why is this true?" And then I say, "Oh no, this is happening." And then someone will say, "No, George, that's a joke." I'll say, "Explain it to me." And then they'll walk me through it, and uh, and so I think that was my hesitance. Uh, okay. My hesitancy the second time we met, 
uh, because I, it's not that I wasn't enjoying the spoof if it had been a spoof, but if it wasn't a spoof, which I'm now learning that it wasn't, then I, I'm glad that I didn't enjoy it too much because then I would have been enjoying a, a spoof under false, a non-spoof under false pretenses. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I was, I was kind of uh, hoping that you didn't have a condition where like all people in Hawaiian shirts look the same to you. Like you might've thought maybe it's Weird Al, maybe it's Magnum PI. Mm -hmm. And ju you just knew it was me because of the context. I, you, you I put do, it together. I do now remember that uh, when we, we almost, this, this actually is clarifying something for me because I believe we came very close to casting what I thought was you as Indiana Jones. Mm. Uh, but now I'm realizing that was Tom Selleck. Uh, yes. And I'm because I, I was saying I think this is maybe wrong. He's hilarious, but I don't think this is I don't think Weird Al can play Indiana Jones. I remember everyone getting very upset with me, and I said it's Weird Al. I know it is. I don't care if it Tom Selleck. It sounds like a spoof name. He's doing a parody on us, right? And so I said Tom Selleck, Weird Al. I know who that guy is, and he's hilarious. But that's not who Indiana Jones is. We we should go with Harrison. It, it was an honor even to be briefly non considered. Uh, although now, you know, I, I really think that, uh, that you're not in the new Indy five, are you? That I'm not, I have nothing to do with it. I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, it's been a crazy year. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't, I can't swear either way. Right. I, I, well, I hope you're in it. Uh, because I do you, too. I'll be the, watching for sure. And if I show up, I'll be thrilled. Yeah. Cause I do feel like that's something that it would be interesting to see, uh, uh, Henry Jones Jr. interact, see Indy interacting with someone uh, fun and, and funny. Mm -hmm. You know, there aren't enough parody songs in those movies. Uh, I realize looking back, and I don't have any. I would love to special edition some in. I, I hope they supersize the Shia LaBeouf oh. for the next movie. Uh, yeah, supersize that one. Double the mud. Double the mud. At right. least. Oh. Have you ever, you've never, you did obviously uh, uh, an Indiana Jones or Raiders parody in UHF. Yeah. I did. And you've, uh, you parodied uh, several of George's uh, movies. You've done two Star Wars songs that I think of immediately. You did your uh, Jurassic Park song. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is there a reason you haven't taken on the man with the fedora musically? That's something that I'm considering for Broadway. I've been talking to Lynn Manuel about that, and and we're like trying to figure out how to translate the Man with the Fedora to the Broadway stage. Right now, uh, it's difficult to move forward because neither one of us are really that interested in doing it. Yeah, oh, but it's a stumbling block. Yeah. yeah, but but if if we ever like figure out why that would be a good idea, then we're mm -hmm. going to get right on it. Maybe though, you just gave yourself the the answer. Maybe. There's something about the character of Indiana Jones that doesn't excite you. And so you have yet to come up with a song for the franchise. But maybe the way in is mud. You you lit up at the mention of mud. Yeah, I think, I think probably, you know, character. Indiana Jones famously fights Nazis most of the time. He's mostly fighting Nazis. Sometimes he'll fight a cult. But let's, let's be fair. There's good people on both sides. You're good people yeah, on both sides. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, yes. But... I think maybe the stumbling block may be that what you really want to write deep down is a mutsicle. You want to write a mutsicle. It was never a musical. It was always a mutsicle deep down, hmm. waiting to be discovered. I'm looking at it, it from a new be, perspective I mean, now. You have, the, you have the opportunity for people to be like, oh, mutt in the movies, you know, I don't know. But that musical, it's pretty good. It sounds you know? You can rewrite the story of Mutt Williams. People were not that excited about Alexander Hamilton prior to the musical of Hamilton. If you look at the buzz, it was about at Mutt levels prior <laughs> to the musical of Hamilton. They were very, the, the IMDb star meter for Alexander Hamilton was very low. Can, can you imagine if tomorrow the top story on Deadline was Weird Al Yankovic and Lin-Manuel Miranda team up for Mutt the Muttsicle? It would be mutt mania. Yes. <laughs> Other yeah, mutt. Because, uh, and and the thing is, the thing, the thing that I think would be really fun about it is, you know, it, you could set it in the 1960s, mm. which is an mm -hmm. era that uh, is uncovered in the indie universe because the new one, I think, is going to take place in the early 70s. And Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was sort of 50s. And so you could have like a real... Uh, uh, 
a real 1960s psychedelic trippy mutsicle. We can have Twiggy in it. You could absolutely <laughs> have Twiggy in it. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Oh, I, I really think that the, I, I'm glad you're excited about this because you're not going to be able to stop the momentum. The mud the momentum. momentum. The mud momentum. 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 Uh, like right now, it's, I, I, you know, you're now in the, the eye of the storm. You're not going to be able to stop. Uh, people are going to be asking about this for years until you write it. Okay, guys, right right now we need the hashtag. What's the yeah. hashtag for the, that's going to be? Um, yeah. <laughs> All uh, right. Not the professional hashtag right there. What do I yeah. pay you good money for? For a job. This is your test. Patrick, it's all on the line right now. Okay, leave me, keep talking. Just give me like two minutes. I'll come up with something. Hang on. Right. Now, I truly have never seen Patrick this stressed out. I'm not kidding. This isn't a joke. He's not playing it up. He doesn't yeah. have the range. He is very good at handling high stress situations. He's a professional producer. He is really really feeling the heat right now yeah this is a this is a oh patrick are you back already it was a quick patrick, minute. can quick i say this minute. can i say this this yeah. is better be good patrick better be okay. good. and by the way I'm if gonna... you have something shitty and you didn't use the full two minutes when you could have you are never going to live it down here it is you ready yeah, yeah. okay this is the hashtag when it gets announced this is what's going to be trending on twitter Mudsicle Yankovic. Right, what do we it's think genius. That's, That's why you make the big bucks. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That is why, my friend. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see this on the front page of, of Twitter. Yeah. I want to see two things. I want to see the war in Ukraine, and I want to see Mudsicle <laughs> Yankovic. Yeah, we don't want to knock off the war in Ukraine. We can't, we can't knock it off. It's the most important We're not thing. Not going to suppress this story, but, this but people, people need the Mudsicle now. Because right. we don't have control over the terrible things that are happening in the world. So yeah. uh, it's a time, because the 60s were fraught. The 60s, I think Mutt, does Mutt go to Vietnam or does he yeah. protest? I mean, I, there's definitely a, a Vietnam War angle to the Muttsicle, don't you think, Al? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think that's right in Mutt's wheelhouse. Yeah, because he's a rebel without a cause. Oh, look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It, oh, thank you very much. Fat now, my, oh wait, we actually nightmares. we've gotten a couple. Hang on one second. Oh, okay. Um, okay. We just hit the ten minute mark. There's this one. Uh, then there's one more right here where you're actually juggling with Cindy. Oh, wow. that's right. I like that. <laughs> and they used hashtag musical nice. Yankovic, or they used musical wow. Yankovic. That's, yeah, that, close. That's, that is how fresh this art is that the, the hashtag that was just created is already featured. Mm -hmm. oh. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you, now, everybody. Now, Al, I feel like we got to get down to the real serious business right yeah, now. Yeah, we have to get down to serious business. We keep this up on. Mm -hmm. Al, we got to get down to the real serious business. Okay. There's another time that you worked with George. I don't know if it was directly. Yes. I did not paint his house. No, that's just a rumor. I, okay. Yeah. It was on it, a project. It was on a project that we love. Here, and to, by the way, George by the way, Al, don't joke about this. There's a terrible history of men that George invites in to do work in his houses, disrupting his private life. So don't even joke about this. I, I shan't even joke. No. <laughs> I feel like maybe we have to take a slight detour and talk about that very quickly. Wado, do you want to explain that really quick? George, do you want to explain the I'm so I tired. I'm so tired of talking about this on the show. Uh, Wado, just it's in the biography of me. Wado, just give the, the very shortest and most graceful version of this. George hired the man to make a stained glass foyer. This is true, Al. This is, ranch. this is true. This is a true thing. And that man cuckled George Lucas. And his wife, Marshall Lucas, left him for the stained glass art. So you didn't know, and it was in good nature, but when you joke about being hired to do home renovation work. I'll paint my own house, Al. You, you can imagine my chagrin. I am so sorry, George. <laughs> well, here's the thing, and this, is, and, this is, and this is the only reason that it's an interesting story. I kept the stained glass up. It's there. You it's see still there. That's how confident, that's how, because well, look at it, it's good. It's good work. Wow. That's good stained glass. Why wouldn't you? 
Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I mean, when you've got a, when you've got that, who needs a wife, really? Yeah. I mean, hashtag <laughs> hashtag worth it. Worth it. <laughs> I mean, okay, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk out. about it. Okay, let's detour back to oh, the taking a detour. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. So this is you on the left. You're playing for LOM, oh, aka yeah. for LOM, uh, mm-hmm. to Andy Richter Zuckus. Mm-hmm. What was the experience like? How did you get into for LOM's head? What was what was the? What oh. was the and well, let's know, go back was... even further. How did you get the job? Hmm. Ah, well, uh, Seth Green is an old friend of mine, and uh, he offered me the job of, of for LOM, for LOM, mm-hmm. uh, and I was excited to do it, and I thought, wow, I'm working on a George Lucas-approved project. Thank you, George. I approve. Uh, you know, it, it was one of those things where uh, it was not pre-sold to anybody, George, and your infinite wisdom. You spent all your own money. You made the, the series where I, we had the first... Uh, season completely done. Yeah. Second season was in in mid production. Third season was starting to be written, uh, and then, from what I understand, uh, once uh, you had made your big sale to Disney, Disney decided, mm, I don't think we want this muddling up the whole Star Wars uh, storyline, and we mm-hmm. want to confuse people because we've got all these uh, sequels coming out, and they kind of put it uh, on ice for a few decades. Right. Al, it's exactly what we were talking about earlier. It was your standard too funny issue. <laughs> that was pretty much it. I mean, you know, Disney looked at it and said, it's too good. It's too funny. We sure can't use it. Right. No. Because, I, you know, and on the one hand, I understand. They didn't want to make anything that would be confusing. You know? I get it. You, you don't want to confuse Star Wars fans. Yeah, no. You do not want to do that. You don't want to confuse Star Wars fans. You don't want to make them too happy. Mm. And that's what the show, I mean, I think that was the sin we committed was Star Wars has always been funny. Uh, famously, the most the most financially successful joke in the history of movies. I have a bad feeling about this. It's so it's so successful. People even use it in movies I have nothing to do with now. They'll do you just, get royalty on that? I don't. And, I, you know, I don't want to go to, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in court. You know, mm. it's a funny sure. joke. It's a funny joke. Yep. Yeah, um, it never gets old. I'll take my my payment in laughter, human laughter. Um, you know, it's it's one of the few jokes that actually gets funnier on retelling because by the eighth or ninth movie, you're like, I can't believe, I can't believe, believe you're still doing this. I can't believe this joke is still in here. It's so funny that I can't believe same joke, same joke, same joke, mm-hmm. same joke. Funny, 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 funny. It's like a Gilbert Gottfried routine. Like it, it's funny, and then it's not funny, and then it's really not funny. I would and never. Then it's hilarious. It's, you're right, except for the part where it's not funny, because that part never happens with never this happens. It's Always no. funny. I, I just thought it happened for an infinitesimally small period of time where you barely even notice it. It's like a flick of an eye. Yeah, but but then yeah, it goes right into hilarious. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and 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 so you know, obviously, but detours was sort of like that joke times a million. We just said, let's, what, basically the question the detours asks and answers is what if everything in Star Wars was hilarious? What if, it stopped being a series that was mostly funny. It started being a series that was always funny. And and you're right, Al, that it makes sense that you would think there was an infinitesimal, imperceptible moment in which the funny stopped. Because that's just how comedy works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But George is, above all else, a, a technical innovator. And he just did iteration mm-hmm. after iteration until he worked out the technology so that something never needed to stop being fun. I See, I think that might have been the mistake because there has to be contrast. There has to be, like, you know, death and destruction and, and mutilation, which mm-hmm. you can juxtapose with something, you know, light and, and airy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have any darkness, how can there be light? Yeah. So I, I think oh. just having like one frame, one frame, frame in the entire series that was not funny, I think that would have just lifted the whole, you know, that would be the stream that lifts tall boats. Al, can I tell you something that is not true for legal reasons? Yes, you may. All right. What I'm about to tell you did not happen. It didn't happen. Okay. Did not happen. It's just not true. It's not true. Okay. Is it true? There so when we say this, laugh at it like it's a joke. And what's funny about it is that it wasn't true. Okay. 
there were there were some people they they went on to a boat recently let's say or it could have been whenever i don't know could have been a long time ago could have been far far away so it could be like the joko cruise or not it could be not it was it would be a, it would be, it'd be the spoof version right it could okay. have been a nerd cruise going around the bahamas last week or it could have been 200 something years. else entirely yeah okay mm-hmm. got it and the, these people they did a show it was just a normal show just a normal show but a then the show ship show and then the show ended and these people decided because they were out on the water international waters maritime law what if they actually accident- anything goes yes what if, what if they accidentally oh, showed God. something what if they actually acc- and i know we were just talking about star wars detours i want to be clear it is not that it's not that no 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 they decided to show an entire episode of something something could be uh you know uh, seinfeld yeah could have been yeah maybe it was a seinfeld yeah. what yeah. what if i was in the met? ocean big bang theory yeah Who knows? yeah just a yeah. theory. Gumby? Gumby. Yeah. Pokey? Pokey. Was a blockhead? What we're saying is, what if hypothetically these entertainers briefly, briefly became, on a huge screen, briefly became sort on of an enormous screen, a movie theater sized screen, committed like a double act of piracy. They became like IP pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> And let wow. me tell you, hypothetically, yes, the people on that boat, and I can attest to this because I spoke to them afterwards. They, hypothetically, they they could not have had a more intense reaction to seeing this this show. <laughs> well, were, I am. They were they marveled at it. They were baffled. There was laughter, and then there were moments where there was no laughter. Yes, as if they were stunned. And that's important. Silence. That's important. Because yeah. well, I'm. I am thrilled and horrified and feeling ennui all at the same time. This is mm-hmm. I'm just full of emotion. Thank, thank you for sharing that with me. Oh, it's just a uh, oh, look at this beautiful. Oh, very nice. No, that, that's that's Meryl Streep though. That's is that? <laughs> no, that's. I classic. also like. That's I like that Cindy looks like Jareth the Goblin King from Labyrinth. Yes. <laughs> that's right. And I will say, I think you look a little bit more like Carrot Top in that drawing than than you. <laughs> I get confused a lot. Yeah. It's because of my bodybuilding. Can, can, can I ask Jeff Class, fantastic work on that piece of art. Would you mind doing a new version in which it is explicitly Carrot Top and Jared the Goblin King in the same situation? Yes. <laughs> explicitly. And, and feel free to make it explicit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah can, I ask you, can, can I ask you a question? I, I know, I know this is not the format of the show, but I'm, I'm just curious. And, I, and I, I, I am a fan. Oh, that's beautiful, by the way. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Uh, I, I, I am a fan of the show, but I, you know, full disclosure, I have not seen every episode and chances mm-hmm. are you have gone over this at some point. But just for my own edification, I just really want to know. Um, do you own the Whataburger franchise or do you just did you just license the name? Al, do you know do you know the story of famous Amos? Yes. Well, not the whole story, but I know part of the story. He was the part of the story where he makes chocolate cookies. chip cookies. Right. That's the part that everyone knows. <laughs> That's the most famous part of the story. <laughs> that argument nice. is the thing that makes Amos famous. <laughs> and, and I'll say, I'll say, here's the thing. That's an example of of. It's a great communication of this story, putting it on the back of the bag. Mm-hmm. But every time you yeah. eat cookies, you go, what a nice story. As a storyteller, <laughs> as, a, as a professional storyteller, because that is my craft, uh, beyond yeah. anything else, I am a storyteller. And I'm also famously a diabetic. Putting the story on the back of a bag of cookies is brilliant. You probably buy them just for the for the stories. I buy them for the story. I say, I, 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 I'm not buying them for the cookies. I'll throw the cookies in the garbage. I'm just buying it for the story. Oh, oh yeah. Much so cool. I mean, that's pretty great. Sorry, Watto, continue. Famous Amos. Is, is, is that hashtag trending on Twitter yet? I, it's it's, it's got to be. It's getting uh, there. Okay. Uh, listen, I'll, I'll cover this in short. It might be longer than the story of George getting cut by the same glass artist, but I'll try to keep it around that length. Okay. 
Wally Amos was the first black agent of at the, any entertainment agency in America. He was like a I trailer. Was an Asian. Agent. 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 Okay. Agent. He worked at the William okay. Morris agency. He represented like Marvin Gaye and Helen Reddy. He was like a pioneer, right? And was he was, was it a was he a secret agent or was he upfront about it? He was pretty upfront. I think he was mm -hmm. he was beloved for his candor. Uh -huh. And not his condor, but but like also, a candor in the wind. Yes, like a candor in the wind. But he also uh, made cookies for his clients. And they were like nice. Amos, these cookies. like like Ted Lasso. Yes, wow. yes, much like Ted Lasso with the biscuits. Right? Is that why they called him the Black Ted Lasso? They did. <laughs> and at the time, they were like, "What is that combination that? of words?" <laughs> Ted Lasso? What does that mean? <laughs> not be more confusing. And then when Ted Lasso premiered, he wrote Sudeikis a note and he went, thanks a lot. You've clarified a lot of things for me. But he would make the cookies for the clients and people would go, these cookies are good. Amos, you could get famous for these cookies. <laughs> so he opened a little shop in LA, lines around the block. It was like the original, like, cronut. Right? I was in line. I got in line. I, I, I didn't realize it was pronounced famous Amos. Amos, Amos. Now, now I know. <laughs> well, what am I be putting a little spin on it? I have to be honest. <laughs> but I like it better that way. Thank yeah. you. So the cookies are big. They're famous. And they're like, got to expand. Open more locations. Let's mass produce them. This and that. Great story. He kept expanding mm -hmm. too fast. Right? He'd be like, there's so much heat around these cookies. And I ain't just talking about the oven. <laughs> There's so much heat around these cookies that I got to capitalize on it. And he'd outlay the cash and then he'd be in the hole even though they were doing well. So then he'd sell more equity in the company. And it got to a point where the only way he could keep the company afloat was to sell every last remaining piece of equity down to his name, his face, and the story. Wow. And he's like continued making like cookies and muffins and other like baked goods since then. But he's never allowed with any of these new companies to put his name on it because they own it. And does, he auto, continue, auto, does, he con does he continue losing money when people buy his cookies? Like, please don't buy my cookies. Yes. I lose a dollar with, yes. with every cookie that you buy. It's, he has to pay people back when they buy the cookies. See, this, this is why you need to hire a good lawyer when you negotiate your deals. Absolutely. Right. So Wado Al told Al the name that he, the, the second name he chose after Famous Amos. Well, there's a one in between, which I think is not what you're talking about. Okay. He had the, uh, what was it, the Muffin Company. I'm trying to remember the name of. His, his current company's name is The Cookie Kahuna. Okay. He's in Hawaii. He wears Hawaiian shirts a lot now. He wears a hat that looks like a watermelon. And he calls himself the Cookie Kahuna because he just has is it with like something. Well, it's 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 almost alliteration. It's not rhyming anymore, but I mean, I I I support that. Uh, mm -hmm. The point is out. The exact same thing, point for point, happened with me and Wattleberger. Really? Yes. And the final. You, you call yourself the Cookie Kahuna now? Correct. I call <laughs> myself the Burger Kahuna. Oh, the bro well, that would make make, make more sense. <laughs> but it was originally called Watto Burger. Right. And then they were like, the name's confusing. The movie hasn't come out yet. Can we make it W-H-A-T-T-O Burger? And then it became Watto Burger. And I just kept on selling off the equity. Because I was like, once this movie comes out, I'm going to be rolling in it. Like, I'll have, I'll, I'll be liquid, you know? Yes. I just kept on putting yes. everything into it. And the thing I didn't realize is that George doesn't pay anyone residuals. Oh, George. That's not true. I'm famously, I'm famously generous. Work in other, the, in ways. In other areas. Yeah, everybody who was in American Graffiti is doing quite well with the royalties. Yeah, everyone who was in Phantom Menace is really sweating it, though. Not necessarily. <laughs> just the CGI. Uh, you know, we didn't know how to negotiate a contract for CGI characters. George argued that I was not entitled to residuals because I was technically his intellectual property. Well, you're he said uh, that in fact I didn't get the residuals; that he got the residuals off of me continuing to exist. Watto, have you ever wanted for anything? I like wanted to have my own national chain of burger restaurants <laughs> that were still in my name. 
All right. That's that's not my responsibility, though. You are made of billions of ones and zeros. You don't need money. Is that I, I just wanted to. I wanted to compliment you I, on, on your rendering water. You look espe especially nice today. Thank you. We've yeah. been trying to do a little bit of a 4K upgrade for 2022. Wado, tell Al the name that Famous Amos ha tried after he couldn't use the name Famous Amos. Am I forgetting the one you're thinking of? Yes, the one that's very funny. He went from Famous Amos to Uncle No Name. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle No Name Cookies. I forgot about Uncle No Name. <laughs> Which I think is a, a valiant effort to go in another direction. <laughs> You've heard of Famous Amos. Famous for making cookies. Now eat these cookies made by Uncle. <laughs> it was kind of the original artist formerly known as Prince, but it's, it's almost an even more impressive move because you're not even reminding people what your name used to be. Well, I'm just, so Uncle, Uncle No Name, the implication is that he has siblings who have children, <laughs> but he has no name. I, I, I had an Uncle No Name, so I can kind of relate to that. Right. That, that would have brought back some nice, nice memories for me. Pity the nieces and nephews who did not know how to refer to their uncle. If that was his legal name, No Name Yankovic. <laughs> no Name. <laughs> Al, can I tell you? Oh my God! Wait a second, guys. We have some breaking news right now. What? What? Now, normally, normally. The trades don't pay attention to us, no. you know. We're a little too little too small time for the trades to really catch on to things. Deadline wrote an what? article. What? It's momentum. Wow! Wow! Oh my if god! Deadline, is it a must be true? What? It's what? real. What now? What? Wow. Are, what's that ad? What got to? Did Jar Jar get Academy Award nominations? Yes, that's uh, the worst gungan in the world. <laughs> oh no. Is that a category? They're really changing the Oscars, you know? You would think it's a category. No, it's the name of the film which is nominated. Where every year we campaign, can you have a category for the worst gungan in the world? But they say it's too me. Yeah. Now, Al, last week you finished filming a movie. I did. Yes, that was last week. Right? That was last fun. Week. I did. I did. Al How's how's Eric Capel? Is he a good director? Is he a bad director? He's let's spill the, the let's spill the he, tea. He's the best. I can't I can't even joke about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric is a, a great guy. Uh, we're good friends. We, Eric did the original uh, Funny or Die uh, sketch that the movie was based on, uh, yeah. and uh, we've stayed in contact over the years. And uh, and we wrote the script together. And and it's, it's great when you work with somebody that um, you know shares your sensibilities and your sense of humor. And, and I'm not like. You know, always trying to strangle. That's not funny. What's wrong with you? Right. Which is yeah. like, that's totally my personality too. Tell you why. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> for uh, no, he's, he's, been, he's been great, man, and it looks great. We we shot the whole movie in eighteen days, which is a crazy short period of time. Uh, but we got everything we wanted. Uh, we worked with really amazing actors and and a great crew. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to see it. I think it looks really great. For, for people who don't know, this is you recently wrapped. It is a Weird Al biopic starring Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al. But I'm not speaking out of turn when I say it's, it's a bit of a parody of the musician biopic, is it not? Well, I guess you could look at it that way. I don't. I look at it as me finally telling the stories about my life that I've been holding back all these years because I didn't think people were ready for it. You know, I wanted people to know me for several decades and then then I can kind of get into the dirt. But I didn't want to poison mm -hmm. people's minds with these stories because it would have maybe colored their opinion of me. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. How, Al, many, jokes, how many jokes do you think are in the movie? 43. 43. If you, if you, I mean, jokes. I mean, it depends yeah. what you call a joke. If you've been stuff that's actually- Hard laugh. Hard okay, laugh. If, 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 you're, if, you're, if it's that, then just 42. Okay. There was one that was like, you know, on the bubble, but yeah. let's, let's say 42. Okay. Al, are you willing to reveal aspect ratio? What, what was the aspect ratio? Yes, I yeah. am. Uh, I, I am. Uh, it's a one to two, three, five aspect ratio. It's, okay. it's full widescreen. Oh. It's, uh, yeah. you know, because it's, it's, you know, it's like uh, Lawrence of Arabia. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's something that needs to be seen uh, on a big screen, unless it, it's <laughs> not going to be shown on a big screen, in which case just watch it on the Roku channel. It is, I mean, you're making me realize now, in many ways, the accordion is the most widescreen instrument. Yeah. 
It, it, it kind of is. I mean, you, you can't really, if, if you're taking a, a video on your iPhone, you really have to go uh, landscape. Yes. No, and, and something like the, you Ooh. have like your, your, your keyboards, right? That are pretty horizontal to begin with. But the, the accordion, you need the widescreen frame because it's about the, the compressing, right? It's about it, the absolutely. Ending. You need to be able to show the morphing of the. I'm, I'm so distracted and hypnotized right now with George, who's got the actual box set, the squeeze box box set, out right. of print, hard to find. I can find He's it. got one. <laughs> Al, Look at you. Al, hypothetically speaking. Yes. Do you, do you think the squeeze box box set will ever get re-released for the sake of, say, people who were out of work actors at the time it was released? I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, I think that you just have to wait until George puts his copy on eBay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because I, I was busy. I'm working on this museum, Al, in L.A., the, the, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art, which will be opening probably, hopefully next year. And so it's been uh, all my attention the past few years has really been focusing on putting this. It's a, it's about, you know, uh, um, art that tells stories. And so I was I'm not always uh, on top of it when it comes to new releases. I love music. I love comedy. I love new releases. But I don't sometimes I miss the boat. And this thing sold out. That's the museum. That's what it's going to look like. Wow. Yeah. What do you think that looks like, Al? Uh, it looks like a pair of uh it's uh, either brazier or a pair of sunglasses i'm not quite sure oh that i like that that's either sexy or cool or both there, there's no or art answer. stories there's no correct answer but we always try to show this to our guests like sort of a rorschach test and it is fascinating how many different answers there are mm -hmm. yeah i like that i like it that's kind of it actually looks sort of like your character on uh um detours a little bit those sort of fly oh yeah a little uh, forlorn action, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, it may, maybe, may, perhaps it's a tribute to the unreleased uh, detours episodes. Yeah. Which I no. think is only right, you know. Yeah. Well, I so I when when the original squeeze box came out, and you know people had their chance, and and of course they you know they uh, it was announced, you know, like this is your chance. It, you it was, get this. It was a, a pre-order item, right? You produced the quantity to meet the exact demand. Yes. Yeah, we knew there was going to be no more demand after they were sold out because they, they didn't exist anymore. Right. So uh, I just missed the cutoff. You know, I, 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 I found out about it. I went to get it and then I realized oh, it's too late. So I found someone who bought one and I said, I'll give you a million dollars. And he said, OK, wow. I said, OK. That would that would work as well. I, I, would, I thought would have thought you would just call up the company and say, don't you know who I am? I just keep repeating that and get louder every time until they mm -hmm. just gave it to you. That works all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm looking on, I'm looking on, uh, Discogs. Do you have the Discogs app now? Uh, not, not on my browser right now, but I can get there if you need me to. No, no, I don't need you to. I'm on it. I'm on okay. it. But okay. Right now, right now there is one copy that is for sale. Uh, do we want to guess how much it is? I, this is going to hurt me. I, I'm, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say five hundred thousand. No, this is a bargain. I say it's a bargain. It's I'm well, in, in mint condition. It says uh, it's sealed with all the extras. Mm -hmm. uh, sold by someone named Humblestone, who has a five star rating, hundred percent rating. Good guy in the Netherlands. Hmm. He's selling it for two thousand and two hundred two thousand two hundred wow. euros. Plus, and here's where the real bargain is: twenty-five euros shipping. That's oh, wow. That's, it. that's well, a I was going to say. I'm, I mean, you know, it, it's sort of like when you bought the the squeeze box. It was sort of like buying Bitcoin. You just kind of hold on to it, and it, it may be worthless or it may be worth a lot. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think what the lesson we learned from this is: all Weird Al merch at some point mm -hmm. is going to be highly, highly valuable. So just mm -hmm. whatever thing, whatever's got my name attached to it, in any sense, just. Uh -huh. I go out, go out into buying frenzy. Just consume until your face turns red. Beautiful. Look how beautiful. I mean, this is the other thing I know, Al, is that this release kind of was at the very cusp of the vinyl resurgence. So the vinyl release was even more limited, right? Like most people who bought it bought it on CD. And if you're now mm -hmm. someone who has a big time vinyl collection that you perhaps couldn't afford to have, <laughs> 
at the time that this pre-order went down, now you would push the button without the second thought. This, this is, you know, I, this, this came out the week that vinyl was super, super uh, valuable. And I, I think if, if there were to be a re-release, it would have to be something different, like, you know, my entire discography on like eight track tapes, which I, sure. I don't think anything ever came out on eight track. So for, for those, you know, hardcore collectors and, and hipsters that want everything on eight track tape, I, I think that's an unmined uh, market there. So we'll, we'll have to think about that. Al, I don't know if you know this, but we recently, the George Lucas talk show, George is just going to continue showing off all I'm the, show the whole box. I own all the components of this box. Uh, we recently released our, our first uh, LP, our first vinyl, uh, which also oh, was yeah? limited pre-order. It is sold out. Mm -hmm. The George Lucas talk show original live stream series. Nice. Out. It was pressed on Toydarian Blue. George, can you show that disc? Yeah. I also want George to read the guest stars on it because I think Al will find it funny. Yeah. Ooh, pretty. This this yeah. might be more limited than the Sweet <laughs> final release, but also yeah. infinitely less demand. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? But you sold out of it. You sold out of it. We did it. It was a. Uh, a band camp uh, campaign. So it was similarly, they, we didn't make a single copy more than we had uh, demand for. Yeah. Very smart, so that, very smart business model, especially if you're a billionaire. I'm not going to make another detour. You know what I mean? Like I won't, I'm not going to do another thing where I put all my money into a thing and then it never comes out. Did you put all your money into detours? I put I, barely, I I, no, it was a drop in the bucket. But like all okay. the money, all of the money that went into detours was my money. No, I understand that. I was just hoping that you didn't literally put all of your money into detours, which is what you had right. said. And I take yes. you at your word, George, because yes. you've got a very trusting face. Well, here's the thing. If I had put all my money into detours, that'd be the funniest show I ever made. <laughs> like, And that would be too much. It would I be mean, too much. That would be the end of the human race, because <laughs> oh. show that funny, everyone would just be like murdering each other They're, in the streets over how they explode. were. explode. George, if they had announced you made a seven billion dollar TV show, that's amazing. And, and we put all of the money into the jokes. It's all up on screen. You know, some and a little, a little into craft services because you want your actors to yeah. a little bit because you want to, you want them to feel a little bit of that. You know, sometimes when you make like a digital transaction, it will say like, "Do you want to round up to the nearest dollar for charity?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was like the cost of detours for George. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, do you want to round up to the nearest dollar and self-finance multiple seasons of TV shows? <laughs> like, it's good for the people. I'm giving back. For a show that has never aired to have already been working on its third season before it got picked up, I am Amazing. proud to have made a little bit of television history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were working on on a Star Wars musical. That was a third season show, and we were writing songs. And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, this is not going to happen. Out, well, out, out, out. <laughs> Can you tell us? We what has never told us about this before? It's too painful. It's too painful. I don't want to talk. Can you about tell it. us yeah. any specifics about the songs uh, or the musical? I, I I don't. I don't know that I'm allowed. Yeah. Um, but there were, uh, there were, gosh, uh, at least a half a dozen or, or more songs as part of part of the musical and the various characters on the show. We actually recorded them singing their oh. songs, and uh, and that was about uh, like a week before we found out that the show was not happening. Okay, were the songs? Were, I'm trying to think of questions I can ask. It, 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 it doesn't hold a candle to Mutsicle. I just want I to say that. I understand. It was good. It I was understand. good. It wasn't much sickle good. You've evolved as an artist since then. Of course, your newest project will be your best. But I have to ask. <laughs> yeah. Were, yes. the, were the songs in the musical episode of Beatles, were they parody songs or were they fully original compositions? It, it's been a while, but I, I'm pretty sure they were all uh, original compositions. Cool. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> can you can you reveal? I assume you sang at least one of the songs. There was a four long number. <sighs> I'm, you know, it really was a while ago. I'm not. I'm not sure that I was actually even uh, in that particular episode. Mm -hmm. So probably not. Do wow. you remember? But I did, I, 
We, I understand NDA, NDA, NDA. George is here. He's got his lawyer on speed dial. He's waiting for the opportunity to enforce. But I think this is a general enough question. Do you remember any characters who you did write songs for? You don't have to tell us about the songs of the plot line, but characters who would have sung for the first time. Dexter? Uh, we have some Dexter songs? I, I, I think probably most of the principal actors mm -hmm. in the series mm -hmm. were involved. Okay. I, I, George is looking right at me. I can't say anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, it's not. I mean, I would not be a part of this lawsuit. This is Disney property. Disney, is Disney looking? Is, is Disney on the stream? I don't think I can't, I can't no. tell. I don't think so. Wow. I mean, that's I mean, a, that's a, that's exclusive right there. That's, uh, oh, I wonder if I could find it on my hard drive. I could, no, I, I can't play anything. I'm sorry. Come to my house and I'll play it for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, yeah, I'm gonna take turn, we have a show at Dynasty <laughs> Typewriter. <laughs> uh, You've got all the albums in the box set. It's, yeah. every single it's amazing. One. Now, Al, you're touring, you're touring this year. You have so many dang dates. How many dates are you doing? Uh, 133, but who's counting, really? Is there anywhere that you have not played that you would like to play? You know, we've never uh, done a proper show in Hawaii. That's the one state we played all 50 states except for Hawaii. Uh, I, 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 I got to have a Kahuna burger and a Kahuna cookie, like yeah. fresh off the grill. It's not, yeah. it's not good when they fed exit. It's got to be fresh off the grill. So that's yeah. something that I'm excited about. You know, I, I've done uh, the, the uh, Alice Cooper's uh, New Year's Eve charity benefit shows, but that's just me. I mean, I, I want to go there with the whole band and do the full, you know, Weird Al experience. And it's always tough sure. to get, you know, it, it's expensive to fly Segways and fat suits uh, to an island in the middle of the Pacific. It's just, sure. if you're talking about hard cash, you know, uh -huh. we don't, we, we don't want to lose money. No, so my manager says the way you know. I, I don't want to take a lesson from famous Amos and, and you, Otto, that you don't want to ever get into an endeavor where if you do well, you wind up losing money. That's never mm -hmm. a good thing business-wise. Terrible. But we, we were talking about right before the stream went live that you're very excited that you're doing Carnegie Hall for the first time. I, I am. Yes. I assumed you had already played it, but this is this is a big moment. It is, yeah. The, the uh, it's the very last uh, show on the tour. It's October 29th. Uh, and, and oh, we've got it's starting to get spooky. That's starting to get spooky. Then it's it's it's, it's, it's you know it's it's uh, not quite the penultimate spooky, but it's it's very close. Yes. Um, and and you know we, I, I was told they had to practice, practice, practice. So yeah. we're doing six months of shows and then Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Al, I have a comedy question for you. Okay. When you eventually, because I believe you will play Hawaii eventually. Thank you. Especially if we, if it, now let's manifest it. Like now that you've, I don't know if you've expressed this wish before, but like, it feels like it has to happen. Is it funnier if you go to Hawaii and wear your trademark Hawaiian shirt? Mm. Or is it funnier if you go there and do not wear your Hawaiian shirt? Very they, formal. They, they just call them shirts there, George. Right. <laughs> just shirts. Um, That's funny. Yeah, we, That's funny. Yeah. I, I want to stand oh, wow. out, so I, I would probably wear like you know a, a t-shirt tuxedo or something, yeah. you know, a little yeah. little off brand. A, a yeah. solid pattern, Oxford. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that would that would make me weird in Hawaii. It would. Yeah. Uh, I, speaking of, Al, uh, I, I recently watched a TV show that I had no idea you were on. Uh, a, a show that was sadly canceled <laughs> recently. <Magnum. laughs> <laughs> or is that Mag Magnum AI? Am, am Magnum I AI, also, yeah. and also artificial intelligence? This works <laughs> on so many levels. I like uh, it. I watched I watch the recently canceled uh, work in progress, the Showtime, yes. movie, in which you were on a number of episodes. What, what, I, I, a very interesting comedic concept. Julia Sweeney, the SNL legend, played herself on the show. And in the show, it was revealed that you had always been married to Julia Sweeney. It's a, it's a celebrity <laughs> couple that people don't know about. Right. The character on the show is confused when she shows up at Julia Sweeney's house for dinner because you're so normal. You're mm -hmm. normal, Al. The weird part is all a put on. And you kind of play the most normal person imaginable. The joke is kind of, right? That's yeah. Sort of yeah. Like, it's a good joke. Normal That's to what, a boring degree. Yeah, as, as boring as possible. I mean, the director kept saying, like, more boring, 
you're showing too much personality. Just really just take it down several more notches. Uh, so yeah, I had to dig deep and find my inner boring person. That was fun. And I, I also have to say that uh, there were there was such an uptick in, in searches for is Weird Al married to Julia Sweeney. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people search that. I was going to say because you watch it and you're introduced and I recognize you. It wasn't like uh, Saga Begins on Entertainment Tonight. I said I know who this is. But I thought, what funny casting to cast. A famously weird man is a very normal man married yeah. to a celebrity. And then when they reveal, we are creating a fictional celebrity marriage, but one of these people in private is the opposite of who you think he is. It's, it's <laughs> a couple hats on top of each other. It's, there's so many hats being juggled at that moment. Uh, I thought it was a really great show. Uh, yes. I think it was kind of a crime that uh, it's only two seasons long. I, I you know, I think... Uh, it was groundbreaking. It was funny. It was super dramatic. I mean, there was there was one. I I uh, emailed uh, 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 Abby uh, McEnany, who created the show and stars in it. Uh, I think it was episode eight on the last season, and it was just so amazing. I said, oh, "That's your Emmy show. That's that's going to get you your Emmy." And I, I was I couldn't believe it when she told Is me that, that uh, it wasn't picked up. I, I'm not going to spoil anything for those who haven't watched it. Is episode eight the one with the father? It's the big episode with the father. I think it might be. It's so I, you know, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So I just remember numbers. I can't remember like yes. plot details. Yes, uh, yes. but it, it's it's a good I show. Magic and spoon. I... magic spoon cereal. <laughs> I had magic right. magic spoon cereal for breakfast. I had Ma oh, oh. Yeah. oh yeah magic spoon cereal. Yeah, it's healthy. What is what is that? It's like healthy cereal. The there's no sugar, um, but it tastes like it. It's fun. If you get this through the mail, right? The yeah, they sponsor a lot of podcasts, Al, yeah. and a lot of people who host <laughs> successful podcasts get sent this cereal for free, and I'm surprised that George has it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's made with saltines? No, no, it's just <laughs> healthy because, you know, I, I when I made C-3PO cereal, one of my uh, – did you ever have C-3PO's cereal? I lived on C-3PO cereal. One of my demands was it had to be healthy. It couldn't be loaded with sugar, so it was it was sweetened a different way. Um, it was like cauliflower and uh, healthy, healthy ingredients, healthy chemicals and things. Mm -hmm. And healthy uh, chemicals, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so now I've been trying this magic spoon because I I, I have a sweet tooth, you know. Sure, magic spoon. Yeah, I am not familiar with magic. Oh, <laughs> I mean, this I love the art. That's Even great. Works right your feeding. I really, that's the first fan art that I really want to see, like someone do that on an underpass. Like I want, I want that to be actual <laughs> law breaking have, graffiti somewhere in the world. Have, have you had underpass art based on your show before? Yeah, I see, I'll see some R2s, some Jabba's, you know, I'll see some Boba's, uh, some Indies. But that's not based on, but that's not based on this show, George. On that's not based on this show. Show. No, it's mostly my other stuff. You know, I'll see some, sometimes people do a red tail, you know. <laughs> Uh -huh. Have you, I'm sure you have in your career, seen uh, examples of, of weird owl feeding? Have you been graffitied before? Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen some stuff. Some, some uh, Banksy-like artist did a weird gal, which was mm. showing up around town, was like, so like a bikini model with my head on it. Uh, so I've, seen, I've seen that before. Yes. Uh, it People get tattoos? Who, who People knows? get tattoos? They they do oh my goodness like you know do do a search for can, can you go online do a search for yeah. weird al back tattoo white and nerdy wow okay yeah. check, check, look look it up look it up here we go oh Still wow oh boy okay here we go <laughs> I mean this is something this is something hang on uh, do 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 look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So so I, I, I've seen a lot of tattoos, but that that one uh that's that was special. <laughs> yeah. That was a, that's a commitment. That's wild. That's and that's also one. like the one here. What is that, George? That's that's a UHF tattoo. It's a UHF tattoo. Oh, oh cool. yeah, nice one. Nice one. Wow. Yeah, there's been some great art. Did uh, you ever consider I, I, I have a tattoo on my spleen? Of? Yeah. 
I, I told I told the tattoo artist to surprise me because I was never going to see it again. It was just like during exploratory surgery. And while I was open, I said, do a tattoo on one of my internal organs. Don't even tell me what it is. And then they sewed me back up. And I, I just feel cooler knowing it's there. You know what would be a funny bit is if you had them tattoo a liver on your spleen. So when they're doing <laughs> surgery, they get all confused. That would be a great prank. Yes. I love to prank my surgeon. Yes. And, and ultimately yourself also in the process. And ultimately myself. Yes. But what a way to go. Yeah. Here's a question. My, my, my final words would be, get it? <laughs> See what I did there? When you, if you go into surgery, are surgeons like, you're the guy. You're the surgeon guy. You did that song? Like, does that happen to you? Yeah, and, and you hope it's somebody that thought it was funny, but not too funny, sure. you know. Sure. Uh, and you don't want them to be super offended. Like, you know, yeah. I, I take pride in my profession, and you've made a mockery of me. I'm going to literally kill you. Okay. <laughs> Count backwards from 100. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always anxiety provoking. Al, you've sure. said that, uh, the, like a surgeon was suggested by Madonna. Like Madonna, yes. people reached out to you and said she would be honored if you did a parody. And she had this idea. And you've said that's the only time you took an idea. That the, a, you don't sort of solicit ideas in general, save for Patrick with the hashtags. But B, you, you specifically don't want to have that kind of relationship with the artist that far in advance. Yeah, it's just, the, the Manana thing was just uh, like a fluke. I, I wasn't yeah. uh, soliciting any ideas. I wasn't like, the only person I'm taking ideas from is Madonna. What, what you got? Yes. Uh, I, I just heard, you know, through the grapevine that she had mentioned that. And I thought, oh, that's a funny idea. I'll humor her. I'll do I that guess, for her. Without, I'm not asking for specific names. I'm just curious if this is a phenomenon. Do you ever feel phenomenon? Like, dun, 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 phenomenon. Do you ever feel like, have you ever experienced a specific phenomena where. <laughs> There is a musical artist where you're like, they want they want me to parody them too bad. Like they want it too much. They're too thirsty. Uh, thirsty. I, I, I'm not, I, I won't mention any names. No, names. no, 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 no. no. You're talking but about there, there, there's somebody, there was somebody that would, you know, there are a couple of people, but one person in particular, every time I would run into him at a, at a party or whatever, like, when are you going to do one of my songs? And he talks mm -hmm. just like that. When are you going to do one of my songs? <laughs> oh, my. Blake Clark. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have done such an incredible impression. I'm sorry. I, I probably gave it away. Yes. Uh, wow. You know, I, I love to be spoofed. I, I've always loved it. I, the, there was a story that's the sort of legendary about me. It's true, which is that when, when Mad Magazine did the spoof of Empire Strikes Back, uh, some attorneys who were in my employ, some Lucasfilm attorneys, uh, you know, uh, wrote a cease and desist letter to Mad Magazine and Mad Magazine responded to those attorneys with a letter that I had already sent to Mad Magazine, praising the Mort Drucker parody as genius, saying that he was Leonardo da Vinci and that and asking, could I buy the original artwork from it? So I, I always love to be spoofed. But I wonder that's good. I wonder because you because you spoof. I mean, I occasionally spoof, I've spoofed, but mm -hmm. you it's not my main thing that I do. Uh, have you, have you ever been spoofed? Mm. Ah, well, are you sure? Yeah, I, mean, I, people, I think uh, people, people will use you in a comedic way in films. You've had cameos where where it's sort of like you're a you're a funny person, like you're a funny reveal, you know, in certain naked movies. guns. Yes, but that's me doing it. So we we yeah. asking if somebody else has ever. I, I know yeah. that uh, Mr. Mr. Show, uh, yes. uh, Bob Oger and David Cross, they did uh, Daffy Mal Yankle Yankle was a character. Yes. <laughs> on once. I know Andy Samberg uh, played me on one uh, uh, episode of Saturday Night Live. How does it feel? Um, you like it? Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't live in a, you know, I kind of live in a glass house. So, you know, I, I, I can't. You like, like those stones? Not. You like those stones? I, li I like the stones. I like the bricks. I like them all. Yeah. I like uh -huh. the heavy, blunt objects. <laughs> no, that's uh -huh. absolutely. But getting back to your thing about the Mad Magazine, you know, a similar thing happened to me because in 1982, uh, back before I even had a record deal and I was just getting play on the Dr. Demento show, I had a parody of uh, Taxman 
uh, by the Beatles, written by George Harrison, called yeah. Pac-Man because you know it, that was the big craze at the moment. At yeah. the time, it was you know Pac-Man Fever and all that. So I, I did a, a song Pac-Man to the uh, tune of Tax-Man, and it got played for two weeks on the Dr. Amena show. And then uh, uh, George Harrison's lawyers gave him a cease and desist, and he mm -hmm. could never play it again. And then like three decades later, I'm, I'm friends with Danny Harrison, George's son, and I told him about this, and he was like. George loved you. He was a big fan of yours. He used to watch UHF all the time, and and, mm -hmm. and which is why uh, Pac Man is now on the box set, which you have in your possession. That's right. That's oh wow! Right. Officially released go? now. After. Al, are you yeah. telling me the only way I can listen to Pac Man is to spend two thousand two hundred <laughs> euros and twenty five additional dollars for shipping? But it, but it's so worth it. That that's euros. It's practically worthless. Wado, I'll say this. Hey, Wado. There's one for fifteen hundred on eBay right now, Watto. Oh, so. what a steal! Hey, Watto, Watto, if you want Pac-Man, do you want some advice? Yes. Dare to be stupid. <laughs> um. Now you I, said yeah. Andy. No, go ahead. Uh, Al, did did you guys hear that story? Uh, it was a great story recently about um, George Harrison and the prank he played on Phil Collins. No, what was that? I bring this up because Phil Collins and I were both in my buddy Steve's movie Hook, so it's relevant. Right. Um, he, uh, Phil Collins played bongos. This is a true story. Phil Collins played bongos on um, on a, song, a track on All Things Must Pass in, in the sessions. Oh, wow. I think it was All Things Must, Must Pass. And uh, when the, and he was brought in, he played bongos. He was a young musician starting out. And then when he, when it came out, he couldn't hear the bongos on the track. I guess Phil Spector, whoever the producer had, uh, you just wasn't in the mix or if it was so deep in the mix, you couldn't hear it. And so years later, once Phil Collins became a big star, he ran into George Harrison and he told him this story about, you know, I played bongos on, uh, it might've been, I, I'm trying to remember which song. Someone in the in the comments will say which Someone song. Someone said all things must pass. That's what people are yeah. saying. George, and, George, may I pause for one moment? Sure. Thank you, Paul Seen Pamster. There's just a joke I want to make that I can only make at this point in the story. All right, let's make it. Are you telling me that Phil Collins listened to the track and when he played it back, he couldn't hear his bongos calling in the air tonight? It's really good. Wada. Go on with the story. Why do I like that? <laughs> Why do I like that joke? I can't hear the bongos in the air tonight. That's right. No, no. So years later, Phil Collins has, you know, now he's Phil Collins, capital P, capital C, mm -hmm. star of Steven Spielberg's hook. Star. That's of how proper names are generally anyway, though. Yeah. Uh, no, but really, like, you know how it is when you become famous. Yeah. They, they get bigger. The capital letters, right? <laughs> the first letters get huge, yeah. Just huge. Just huge. A, normal, a normal person would never understand. And... He, he sees George Harrison and he tells him, I don't know if you remember, I played bongos on this track and it didn't, you know, didn't really make it into the final mix. And George Harrison said, well, I'll see, uh, I'll take a look. I'll see if I can find those session tapes. Uh, I'll look, I'll dig around and see if, uh, see what's there. And he sent- he's gonna call Phil Spector in prison and say, what's the deal, Phil? <laughs> he, sent, he sent these tapes to Phil Collins from the original sessions that had these bongos on them. And Phil Collins listens to the sessions and the drumming is embarrassingly bad. It's so terrible. And at the end of it, you even hear George Harrison say, oh God, those bongos sound awful. And so <laughs> Phil Collins was so embarrassed. He was just absolutely mortified by this. And then uh, I guess a few days later or something that he's talking to, he calls George Harrison and George Harrison calls him and and says, oh, thank you so much for sending these, but gosh, it's really embarrassing. And finally, George Harrison breaks, he starts laughing. And he had re-recorded, he had gone into the studio <laughs> specifically to record bad bongos and record himself saying those bongos are bad. He went into the studio to do a fake session. Just to play and play and play. Oh man, I, I love that story, that's, that's so funny. It's so beautiful. That's so that's great. So they they should have included that in the in the they they, they just did a fifty year box set of all things must pass, and that should definitely have been part of it. The, the fake bongos version, the, the fake bongo track. Oh yeah, absolutely. Can I but just? Yeah, is, I, I just want to punch up on my joke. I'm realizing the cleaner version is I can't hear the bongos in the mix tonight. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Much I, better. It's much yeah. better. Still I not can't good, but much better. Bumble's <laughs> in the mix tonight. And Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> now, Al, you must have considered calling the sequel to HF, right? Yeah, uh, if I were to ever do the sequel, which I'm not, but if I were, no. sure. Let's do that. Okay, great. Now, now, is this news that you're never going to do it, or because <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the exclusive news. I am never doing a UHF sequel. Congratulations, Al. I got a follow up UHF prequel. <laughs> I'm not I, saying. Here's the thing. I think that's the news. No on the sequel. Maybe on the prequel. You never know. I'm not going to rule it out. Oh. Al, I have to ask you a question. Yes. Is this the George Lucas talk show? Or is this a box of Raisin Bran cereal? Because by my count, we're up to two scoops. <laughs> wow. No sequel in this hand. Unproduced detours musical in the other hand. <laughs> That's good stuff. So much oh. trending, I can't even handle it. Yeah. <laughs> um... Now, now, someone asked uh, earlier, um, would you ever want to do SNL? Is that something that is in your career? Here's uh, something that uh, I found. They, they, they don't let you do SNL unless you're asked first. I, sure. I tried going to 30 Rock and knocking in the door sure. and saying, can I host? And they're like, eh, yeah, that's not the protocol. There's a whole thing yeah. that happens where you're asked to be on the show, and then you like work for a week with the writers and the, and the, and yeah. the cast. and. You know, I, I've show, I've showed up like early on Saturday, saying I'd like to host tonight. And yeah. like, we, we already announced, you know, somebody else. I'm really sorry. It's a shame that you weren't there for the December uh, COVID show where everyone called out because I feel like that would have been the one where you really would have had that shot early Saturday morning. And I was just three thousand miles away, so I would have been happy to go and do the show. Yeah, show up with a binax and and a and a guitar case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oaks. I just I wanted mean, to put it out into the world. I wanted to say it into the universe that we want to Patrick, Okay. It feels, Patrick, it feels to me like what's going to happen. And I don't want, you know, I, I'm not always right about these things, but frequently I am. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is that the mutsicle is the pathway to SNL because mm. the mutsicle is going to be a force of nature. The mutsicle did SNL because of the success of Hamilton. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I'm anticipating a huge mudsickle bump. So this this could be the thing that pushes me uh, over the edge, SNL-wise. Here's, here's the other thing I'm thinking about. If the mudsickle premieres, and let's say it's a summertime premiere, we also make ice cream. Uh, uh, we actually make mudsickles. A refreshing That could ice be cream. a little confusing. Because that people are, have you seen the mudsickle? You mean, oh, are you yeah, mean the frozen, frozen dairy treats? Treat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like, I, 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 like, <laughs> I think it's a good kind of confusing thing because some people will be like, uh, I got tickets to Mutsicle and like, you need tickets to buy those ice cream bars? They must be really good. And then that'll increase sales of the Mutsicles. Yeah. But then other people will say like, I saw the Mutsicle, it, it made me cry. And they'll be like, oh, well, that's wonderful. And then they'll go and see the, they'll go and see the, the musical. I mean, funny enough, uh, it sounds like the way to avoid confusion is to put the emphasis on the out. So you say, I just ate a mutsical. I just saw a mutsical. A mutsical. Mutsical. Okay. Must... Now that's very smart. It's all branding, and, and I'm glad you're on top of this. Thank yeah. you. It also seems like we could partner with City Bike to make mutsicals that would be <laughs> bicycles that people could ride around town to get cycles. To get to the uh, uh, oh, a mutter cycles. They have a, mo a mutter <laughs> in them. Oh no! Yeah, I think I think I think too many hats. Too many hats. Too many hats. Uh, so we have we have, we have, we have mud cycle. We have mudsicles and mudsicals. Mudsical. What about we team up with the GIF Corporation for the, peanut? The, the, the ones that make those little things online. Peanut. They're no, like like that. short videos that we keep repeating. Not that. The the product that choosy moms choose. Uh -huh. Oh, that chip. When they're making yeah. a sandwich, they can choose to, after applying the jelly or the preserves or the jam, <laughs> to spread on some yeah. peanut butter. Peanut butter. Oh, George. <laughs> oh. oh, George. George. Diabetes, George. I know. You, you can't mention Jif and then not expect me to not, well, 
it'll be a peanut butter. I thought you had a peanut allergy. No, no peanut allergy. We'll okay. Out. Al, I have a question for you, and I don't know if it's too personal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing's too personal with you, Otto. Great. Thank you for the permission. Al, when you're in the shower, no, here's my question. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a little joke. Okay. Misdirect. But do you, you know, you have a public life, a public persona, you do your work, George just casually eating a fucking peanut butter by the knife full. I, I'm standing by with an EpiPen just in case. I know. And also, in, in case George forgot. Maybe bandages for his tongue? <laughs> no, no. The, the Mickey knife would never cut me. And also, we should mention that Patrick is wearing a Mickey knife shirt. Yes. This is one of the most villainous characters in the Lord of the George Lucas talk show. This is mm. a, a, a bootleg Mickey Mouse pocket knife that in the past has killed some of our dearest friends like a big inflatable BB-8. Yeah. Wow. And George Actually, Mouse, for real? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your question, Watto? Here's my question. This oh, okay. A, this is a, a piece of comedy I have had the great privilege of seeing that you make, but not something for public consumption. And I, I wonder if I'm towing a line and even asking about it. But Watto is friends with someone who is family friends with you and <laughs> found out that you, every year for your family holiday card, you, I don't know if this is still a tradition, would do like a Photoshop, that you got really into Photoshop and you would send out these holiday cards where you would like have your family lined up, but your your child who was an infant at the time would be much bigger than you and your wife. <laughs> you, you'd size you up in reverse size order or make it seem like you were all stacked on top of each other or like the dog on the top or things like that. I always found them incredibly funny. And the fact that you make something this funny every year and people don't even know about it makes it <laughs> even funnier to me. It's just my close personal friends, just a just just people that that you that you know. Yes, <laughs> but not you apparently. But, but they were. But I was able to see. I was able to see a couple, and they were well done. Like they weren't sloppy. And I asked about, it and they said he got really into Photoshop, <laughs> and every year he tries to come up with a new Photoshop gag. And he has to top himself. Mm. How do you have you Photoshop? Do you, 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 you are an Adobe uh, guy? Yeah, I, I actually pay for it. I'm the one. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. I, what, what were you going to ask, Al? I forgot it was so long ago. No, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> are you able to say who your who your close personal friend was? I, I, who, I, I, who I, I, breached I, my trust and yes. shared my uh, private. Uh, <laughs> the, the great uh, comedian Spike Einbinder. Uh, oh yes. Yes, so child of uh, Lorraine Newman, original mm -hmm. SNL cast member. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, and, and, and Spike was the one who showed me several of the, the holiday cards. Yes. Very, very uh, nice. You know, you know ha Hannah used to uh, babysit my daughter. So whenever we used to go on hack, uh -huh. we're like, oh, look, honey, it's your, ba it's your old babysitter. <laughs> you're all you're all never all your babysitter. Al, I never got one of those Photoshop cards. It sound like someone would really make me laugh. I, I think I have an old email address for you, George. You have to have some of you new one. George, what's your uh, email address again? JawaWeewa <laughs> at StarWars.com. <laughs> Al, are you still doing the cards? I am. Every, every, I love every holiday it. season. Yeah. That's great. Oh, I would show you one right now, except uh, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask what the development process is? Because, like, the first couple of years you run through what if the baby is big? <laughs> what, yes. what, if, what if we're all balanced on top of each other? At this point, you must be, like, 20 years in. Is it difficult to get to the point? Go like, what am I, what's the hook this year? It's tough because every year it's got to be better. We have to keep topping ourselves every year. And, you know, it, it's gotten to be a, a major production now. It's, it's sort of like Mutsicle, you know, it's, it's got to be like bigger yeah. and better than anybody's ever seen before. Yeah. Well, fortunately, the years just keep getting funnier, don't they? <laughs> they do. This, is, <laughs> silly, I, this might be the most hilarious year yet. We'll have to wait and see, but it's oh. shaping up to be a hilarious year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 
if you were going to do this, I, I, I'm, I'm not always good with just off the top of my head spoofing type stuff, but like, like, uh, World War B, is that funny? <laughs> Could He's be like buzzing around instead of World War Three. Oh, the, uh-huh. the joke is that the, the oh. bees are fighting. The oh, war. That could be yeah. a good uh, Jerry Seinfeld sequel to the bee movie. World oh, War yeah. B. It's World War Seinfeld, isn't it? Well, what, what else? World War Tree. That funny? <laughs> I like bee better. Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, but I feel I don't want to. I don't want people to think this is a Seinfeld, though. I don't want to, because then if I if I end up doing that coffee car show, then he'll get mad at me. George really mm-hmm. wants to do the coffee car show. It's the his version that he you wanting to do SNL. George keeps on showing up at Jerry Seinfeld's front door, saying, "I, I love cars. I, cars. No one goes fast on that show. I want to go fast." Mm-hmm. Ooh. You know what I mean? They like nice. a pretty reasonable speed limit. I want to be, I'm going to go on that show, not for the comedy, not for the coffee. I want to go on for the car. I want to go mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. Do they, they let you drive or do they, as, I thought Jerry drove. Yeah, but I think I would insist. I mean, I, I think if we could get up to the day of taping and then I could just be like, I want to drive. Oh, but what you could, this would be even funnier. Like he's driving, he's asking you a question. And instead of answering, you put your foot on top of his foot on the accelerator. Yeah. And just floor it. Do, keep it do, do, do. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I go like, boom, 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 boom. If I like sing the song at him, distract him, put that foot down. Mm-hmm. Well, bring a, bring a bass with you and you can be playing bass with your yeah. hands and then stomping on the accelerator with your foot. Here's what, here's what I would do. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to act it out. Okay. So, so hold on. What's the best way? This is the way. So and, wait, hang yeah. on. I want to say, Al, you were on this show, right? Signed to them. What did I, oh no, I watched you with Jay, with Jay Leno. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I watched that. That, that, that show. The, yeah. I was so like, I, I, I got, seen I got drive around with somebody. I just. Is there a Jay Leno's garage? Mm-hmm. I did, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so uh, you're, so, you're Jerry which, right which, now, okay? And I'm in the car. I'm Jerry. All right, okay. So All right. Patrick, take take you and I. All right. So this is what you see. Okay, this is what I'll do. Right before I put my foot down, I'll go, hey, Jerry, what's the deal with this? Yeah, I think it works. It's a good bit. Yeah. Now, George, can we see just because that that bit only represented half of the show? Can you show us what your take would be on the coffee side of things? Oh. Uh, so we're having coffee. Yeah. Okay. So George, I like that coffee. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. <coughs> Not agreeing with you? One down the wrong pipe. Coffee. Oh, it's a hum homophone. Yeah. All right, now, George, you got to be funny. World War Tree. Ah! See, if he had said World War B, we could have gotten into business together. I could be executive producer. You could right. make a little scratch on the side. No, but I got no, to go my vision. World War Tree, because it's close to three. I keep thinking about it, and it's like, uh, uh, it's really, because it's so close to three. You just take the H out. Yeah. Al, I like that you're... you're interpretation of Jerry Seinfeld is that he sings his own incidental <laughs> music from the show. Doesn't he? I thought he did. He should. You know, I, I, I would have gone with World War Brie and make it about runny cheese. Ooh, that's, that's pretty that's, good. Because I got a food thing going on, you know. That's yeah. what I do. Yes. Yeah. I got a brand to protect here. Yes. <laughs> why, why, why not more songs about beverages out? You know, that's a good question. I think, you know, between the, the liquid and the gaseous and the solid state, I think solids generally are the most popular and the funniest. So I always try to go with solids if I can help it. Jersey Dave, what just happened? Yeah, what just happened on the Jersey Dave? What, what was that? <laughs> that was our, that was our no, one he, of our off-screen producers, Jersey Dave. Not sure what that back was. On now, Jersey. No, no, come on with the angle that you brought yeah, into the show. On second unit. Wait, did it come up? Yeah. Oh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> But now you have some splaining to do. I don't want to. No, no, keep it vertical. Keep it vertical. I want the angle that you were doing. Lower the camera down. Lower. Yes. Lower. 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 Lower.
Wow. Thank you, Jersey Dave. Um, Al, what's your favorite movie? Show. My favorite movie? Uh, yeah. I'm going to say Weird the Al Yankovic story. I know it's not even edited yet, but it's mm -hmm. already my favorite movie. Cool. He's just become Can I, I, re I relate to the, the, the main character so yeah. deeply. Yeah. It just sure. really speaks to me. Well, and representation matters. I imagine up until this point, you've only seen one movie with a, a character weird enough for you to relate to. Like when yeah. you went to the first screening of UHF, you must have gone finally. Well, not even that, because that was a character named George Newman. And because I, I always watch a movie thinking, that. when am I going to see Weird Al on the screen? Sure. When that do was, I get represented in this culture? That was close, <laughs> though. That must have felt a little close. It, 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 looked, it looked a lot like me. I have to give you that. But I it, felt it, it, seen. I felt seen when I saw UHF, because that's a George. That's a George. That's a George. Yeah. Well, it was a different George, but I'm glad you felt it's it. A, it's a George. And when you see a George, I like George of the Jungle. Uh, mm -hmm. When you see a George on screen, I I take notice. I think, well, well, good. I'll keep that in mind. What kind of George is this? Yeah. Is this a me kind of George or a different kind of George? Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a little bit of me in any George. You know? We all know the two kinds of Georges. A me kind of George or a different kind of George? <laughs> the two different kinds. <laughs> which which side... Which side of the road are you going to fall on? Yeah, and you were a me kind of George because you were you were relatable. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very relatable. A mogul. You were running an entire station. You were a mogul. That was a very you, George. What? That was a very you kind of George. I agree. Yeah. Well, also, I well, you and I are both directors. We're directors. Mm -hmm. You know? It is true. You, you, you've directed a few more things than I have. I haven't directed and, that many uh, things. Probably... I haven't directed that many things. You haven't? Not really. No, I produce more than I direct. Mm. You you directed the Hanson music video. Am I wrong about that? I did. And I, I would say directing the Hanson music video is probably on a par with the uh, original Star Wars. Well, well American uh, Graffiti, in some ways, is a big, long music video. It kind of is. Okay. So I guess we're pretty much on an equal level there. I, I, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll accept that. Sure. Yeah. And we both spoof stuff. We both do funny things. We're not that we're not so different. You and I, I, I love the line. You got a movie coming out. I don't even have a movie coming out now. You got no more you movies know, coming you out. You got a movie coming out. Should you ever think about making a museum, Al? Uh, I hadn't until just right now, but I think it's a great idea. Let's do I mean, it. You got nice stuff in the background. I don't know what. You like what's, that? Yeah, it's a window. That? Is that MC Escher? What's on the top? No, no, it's just a book. It's just a book. <laughs> what is it though? <laughs> He's dead, George. What is that? <laughs> MC Escher is dead. Is that a book? Thanks for bringing that up. Is that up. a book made of his remains? Did you? Is that? Uh, his, you made a book out of his remains? No, no, George. It's just like you know, pages filled with his artwork, and they go. Is he? I does this, he does, I know his stuff. He does like stairs that go up, and then they're like, wait, these stairs go the wrong way. I'm kind of in a bad mood now. I mean, he kind of really. Uh, oh, that's kind of a bummer that? thing, but. No, I'm just a little. A little I, I was in a good mood this whole time, and now I'm just you know George. you're kind of ending this in a downer because. George. Al, all Al. I knew about now is dead MC Escher. Al, I'm going to pull you off screen really quick, okay? But stay right there. We just need to talk to George for a second. Okay, okay. George, what are you doing, man? George, what are you doing, uh, man? Yeah, sure. We know he's dead. We're You're implying that, that Weird Al has created some sort of necronomicon situation. He's made uh -huh. a book of the dead out of MC Escher's ashes that then feature MC Escher's war. I don't know. I was a George, gotta, listen. We gotta land this plane strong. We gotta feel good about this. I need you to be nicer to Al, okay? All right, all right. I'm gonna bring him back have, in. Our guest tonight is we're a dial, but we need our host to be nice, George. Yeah. All right, I'll mm -hmm. be nice. Okay, I'll here he nice. comes. Hey, Al. Hey, Al. Hey. You still right, mad? Al. I'm better now. George, uh, what, you year, to, uh, what year did your first? What year did your first album come out? Uh, nineteen eighty-three. Is this a trivia question? Nineteen eighty-three was your first. Did I win? What do I win? Well, no, that's just funny because you know that was eleven years after the death of MC Escher.
You know how he died? I fell down those crazy stairs. <laughs> It was ours. I still hear it in my dreams. I was there. Oh no! Did we get some fan art of MC Escher falling up and down the stairs? Gosh! Oh, I was only 12 at the time, but I was visiting him in the workshop. <laughs> and he just kept falling down the same set of stairs over and over. It was a field trip. I was it was such a good day. I thought I'm finally gonna meet MC Escher. And I walk in, I open the door, and it was exactly as you intimated. Ooh, ee, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ee, ee, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. For infinity. He died for infinity. He's still going. George, he's, he's still, still going. going. He's yeah. still going. <laughs> Oh. oh, Al, what was it like to write the theme song to Dick Town? The, new, the recently returned FXX animated series from John Hodgman and David Rees. Second season just premiered Dick Town. What? <laughs> John Hodgman? And uh, co-creator, co-star of Dick Town recently premiered second season on Avatar. What the hell is Oh my goodness. What the hell is happening? I was just doing some late night email and all of a sudden I was sucked into this universe. Oh my god. <laughs> Hello? Well, you what? is that Al? Hi, hi John. How's it going? Hi, Al. Well, they, they just asked me what it was like to write the theme song for Dick Town, and I think you should answer because it certainly wasn't me. <laughs> Yeah, it was a col it was a collaboration. Okay. First of all, let me just say hi to Patrick. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Watto. Oh, hello, John. How are you? And uh, I'm glad that George Lucas uh, beat feet out of here. What the fuck <laughs> happened? He's gone now. Yeah. I believe uh, George did a ten one. I think that is quick uh, ten one whatever. for George. Quick that is uh, that George, is uh, showbiz. George Lucas doing a quick uh, George leak. <laughs> yeah, yes. ten ten one is a showbiz term for uh, uh, pooping or peeing. I see, George Lucas. Okay, yeah. now I want to dig into this, and this is great that we have both John now on the show here because we need two industry veterans to take this apart. Some people think that ten one can be used interchangeably to refer to someone peeing or pooping. Oh, I, I think ten one is specifically pee pee, and if you're taking a poo poo. Is 10 2. I think some two. actors say, I'm going to take a 10 2, but tell them over the radio is it 10 1. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they mean the same thing. So let me let me just ask. So so when people, uh, truckers on a convoy say, say 10 4, good buddy, does that mean they, mm -hmm. they did two poops in their truck while they're driving? Well, Al, there are a number of different configurations. They could yeah. have taken a pee, pooped on top of the pee, and then peed <laughs> on top of the poop. That also adds up to a 10 4. That that would make sense. So that's do mm -hmm. a little math before they go uh, on the on the CB. But you're right; it could be two turds. Two turds. That's what I like to think. That's right. Two turds, good buddy. Two turds. <laughs> that's what they say on the uh, on the CB radio, the Citizen Band radio. Two turds, good buddy. I didn't know. You know, all those times that I was uh, on set with um, various friends of mine, like Griffin mm -hmm. Newman on the Tick. I I would mm -hmm. say ten one. So you know, I'd be pooping. I didn't realize. I I'm heard that very much, on set a lot. Yeah, I'm still much, very much a neophyte in this business. I, I, I think it's still mic'd, so you can just say, no, it's a 10-2. Yeah. Change of plan, 10-2. <laughs> now, I do want to say, I, I'm going to leak something that was in the private chat since we're talking about leaking. Jersey I'm Dave says, to leak a leak. I'm going to leak a leak. Jersey Dave says, to be honest, he didn't say one or two. I should not have assumed it was a one, and I'm sorry. So... Many a time I would be in there and I would be like, uh, hey, uh, sound department, if you're listening in, um, I'm actually pooping. That, that, this, is not the sound, this is not the sound of me peeing. I just want you to know that I, I don't fart through my, uh, my urethra. So thank you. I, I mean, I'm realizing you should actually take that as an opportunity to test the sound people, keep them on their feet and go, what do you think I'm doing right now? Don't yeah. give them the answer. Right. Yeah. There's a betting pool. What do you think, what do you think I'm excreting right now? 
Does this yeah. feel like a drip, drip, drip or a kerplunk? Okay, here's George Lucas back again. We were um, just talking about John's new web series. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to guess if he's peeing or pooping. Now, okay. I was just doing some late night email over here and I got uh, uh, transported into this universe. Is uh -huh. George Lucas eating peanut butter with a, a putty knife? What's happening? No, it's a Mickey knife. It's a bootleg Mickey knife. Oh, okay. George, uh, again? Yeah. yeah. It says World's Fair Chicago World's 1933. Fair 1933, which I don't, that seems, it's probably not a, uh, an authentic 1933 Bowie knife. Well, you got a good eye. You got a good eye, John. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've been on Antiques Roadshow. True story. And I've did, you, I did a you got a Bowie knife? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, appraised, uh, I appraised a number of um, 10 ones on the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm actually the, I'm actually the, uh, the bathroom attendant at Antiques Roadshow. Ah, uh, so, yeah. Anyone who comes through. We were, we were landing this interview with Al. We were bringing it in for a landing. Sure. Right. right. Do you have Smooth any questions landing. for Al that you want to ask him? First of all, Al, why did you agree to sing the theme song to Dick Town in season two? That was very nice of you, and you didn't have to do it. You could have said no. You owe. Uh, I, I, owe I didn't you. realize that was an option. Oh. You never said. By the way, you can say no, <laughs> and then I would have considered that. But but it, the way you phrased it, I just. Uh, it was a fait accompli. I just thought, right. okay, I guess I'm doing this. That's true. When I'm doing my late night email, I'm often emailing heroes of mine going like, hey, uh, we need you for this thing. Uh, it's a streaming show. No human will see it, and you have no choice. So thanks yeah. in advance. No, it, tr truthfully, I think what I told John was that uh, it's not every day that, that I get asked to do uh, the theme song for one of my favorite shows. So it was truly an honor to be the, the voice. I did not write the song. I wish I wish right. I did because it's it, I think it's going to be I, can, can we lease or license that song for for the Mutsicle? Because I think even though it does, doesn't really have anything to do, it, it wouldn't work well in context. I think it's such a strong track that people would forgive that and just accept it as part of the musical. It's already an, an enormous hit overseas. Now, John, you don't know about this. Al is writing a musical based on Mutt Williams, the son of Henry Jones Jr., a.k.a. Indiana Jones, from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Ballad of the Mutt? It's it's called The Mutsicle. That's what we're calling it the right Mutsicle. now. Oh, Wait, my God. The Mutsicle. Oh, He's co-writing it with Lynn and Will Miranda. That's official. So it's uh, not hashtag just a channel now. Hashtag Mutsical Yankovic. The, the <laughs> Mutsicle. An American yeah. Mutsicle. Yeah. Mutt, an American Mutsicle. I got you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, that's that's, that's so definitely a character that uh, that deserves to live forever, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just say this. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic was very kind to sing the theme song to Dick Town Season 2. It had already been, uh, the lyrics had already been written by David Reese, uh, the co-creator of the show. And the, the music had been composed by an unknown person, an unknown a uh, contributor to a music library to which we subscribed. So the, <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. The, <laughs> the music was chosen by Floyd County to accompany wow. our eight, our 80s montage theme song opening of season 2 our big brash <laughs> rock and roll uh riptide yep. Simon and Simon uh opening. So uh, that Miami was a royalty free opening. public domain library. R RFPD, if you will. RFPD, wow. Extreme Music Library. And then David Reese said, uh, I think that there should be some lyrics to this. And the lyrics are terrific. And then the question was, who was going to sing it? And uh, I said, how, how about how about I uh, give Weird Al Yankovic no choice? And they said, that sounds good. <laughs> And so, and it was a so it's a collaboration, and I very yeah, it out. I wonder what the David person some unnamed faceless. Yeah, <laughs> this is the way yeah. all the great songs were composed. This way, this is the way that all great songs ultimately the the, the music written by an anonymous uh, <laughs> musical laborer. Right. I, I I will say I watched that the Get Back special on the Beatles and the whole series with with Paul going through the uh, public domain libraries trying to find music for Let It Be yeah. was really eye opening. It and when he so found that scary. track, he was like, oh, he was like, you know, workshopping lyrics, and then Let It Be came out, and we got to see it like happen, you know, in real time before our very eyes. It was, it was weird amazing. how the original the original uh, the original tune for Let It Be was. Let it be, 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 let it be. Let it be, 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 be. 
B B B B B B B let it be B B B B B let it be B B let it world war let it be let it be let it be world war B. I would have given to be a fly on the wall in the meeting where Peter Jackson came in and he said, Disney, I know I pitched you on a two hour Beatles documentary with unseen footage, but I think we're going to have to turn this into a mini series. I just uncovered 40 consecutive hours of footage of the Beatles going through a physical music library of royalty free tunes. And I can't cut any of this shit out. No. It's all essential. It's all essential. It's all part of the process. Yeah. We also have 40. I, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall as well. And I would love to be a fly on the wall when Peter Jackson discovered the 13 hours of that fly on the wall in the studio that he filmed. He went, this and guy is popping. This, yeah. is a, this is an untapped movie star. He's got megawatt charisma. I can't <laughs> cut well, because if you were a fly on the wall in, in Twickenham Studios while they were making Let It Be, it would at least get released by, that footage would at least be released by Disney. Whereas if you were cast as a fly who is a bounty hunter in Star Wars Detours, Disney will not release that, no matter how many hours you film of it. And there was no. a whole episode in Breaking Bad about a fly in the wall, which, so, so you'd probably get in trouble with, you Directed know, by with, Ryan Johnson. Directed by Ryan Johnson, Johnson yes. the last Jedi, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We all we all tried to jump on that uh, grenade. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, someone got a, someone got. I I have to assume this is a recent photo of MC Escher. MC Escher falling. Yeah. Falling I'd forgotten that in all those MC Escher engravings, <laughs> the stairs were carpeted. I had forgotten yes. about that. They're always <laughs> carpeted. Wait, gentlemen, I just had a huge idea. I think we just. <laughs> wow. I think the thing we just discovered is that the easiest way to get anything on Disney Plus is to have Peter Jackson say it's actually unearthed footage from the Beatles recording sessions. So mm -hmm. what Peter Jackson <laughs> goes to Disney. Right. He goes to beautiful Bob Chapek. Beautiful man Bob. Beautiful Bob. Bad things. A prince a principled person. A principled person, and his principles are shitty. And he went for him. <laughs> Who's better, his principles Bob? are ten to e, if I dare say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question: Who's better? Who's better person, Bob Chapek or Bob from Twin Peaks? Close. <laughs> hmm. Who's better person? Pretty the two, close. The two Bobs. Pretty close. Okay, so he goes to Bob Chapek, Watto, and what happens? Peter Jackson. Wow, it's almost like Patrick is defending Watto from saying something that could possibly. Hurt future employment <laughs> or current unannounced employment. The point is. The point is. What are his principles? The point is. Sure. That's not the point. That's a side point. Side point. The point, the point. is. Peter Jackson goes to Bob Chapek and he goes, oh my God, Bob, I found more footage. I found um, um, more footage. We have to put the footage out. Incredibly TV accent. Mm -hmm. of, like, uh, of, of the way we have to get back. It's more episodes. And he gives him the footage, and it's 39 episodes of T-Tours. And he goes, I know this. It doesn't look like the Beatles, but I swear this is all Beatles footage. I just found it. It's all, it's all, it's all uh, blooper reels from uh, Yellow Submarine. I think when you, I think when you <laughs> Fully could, animated blooper reels yes. from Yellow Submarine. Here's how you could convince him, because I, I know Bob, Bob's going to push back on that. He's going to say... I don't think this is Beatles footage. What because his principles are so strong. Bob always had to take Bob a hard so, so strong, so principled that he's going to be like, I, I, I don't know if this is real footage from that. you got to add those two Bobbies, those Bobbies, those British cops, who keep, <laughs> and just have them try to shut down all the scenes. They just walk into every detour scene, try to shut it down, kind of lurk in the background. Mm -hmm. and, Bob, and a Bob knows a Bob. When, a, when Bob J. Beck sees those Bobbies, he'll know you can't fake a Bobby. Bob yeah. knows a Bobby. Bob knows you can Bobby. rotoscope it easy. No problem. Now, what I wanted to ask Weird Al about was, yeah, with with MC Escher. Mm. Uh, yes. This is know, touchy, John. Be careful. This is touchy. No, I understand, but okay. I was recently looking at my my book of MC Escher engravings. Oh boy! And there's the the famous one where he's looking he's looking at himself in sort of a reflective world. Yes. And I want to know how, like, one of the things I never noticed in the background of that is right behind MC Escher, 
There's a dude with curly hair and a Hawaiian shirt holding oh, a knife. Oh, what is that all about? No. What kind of knife? Can you get more specific about the knife? It's like a Mickey Mouse World Fair knife. Officially licensed? It's an, it's an it's a knife in the shape of an accordion. Oh no! Oh, oh, yeah. no. What, what I want to know. So I don't know how. Is, do, do you invite uh, young ladies up to your apartment to show them your etchings of M.C. Escher? Was that your big line? My, your my Escher engravings. Yeah, of course I did. The problem, and I was wildly successful. The problem is, if you're trying to invite young ladies up sure. to your apartment to see M.C. Escher painting, sometimes they end up going sideways. You're yeah. like, just walk up the stairs, and then they're moving. I'm not on the ceiling. You're on the ceiling. Come down. So, oh, <laughs> never mind. This happened again. And if you have normal, if you invite someone up to see your MC Escher actions, and right. you just have normal stairs, by the time you get to the top, it's over. You, 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 you've been <laughs> thoroughly unimpressive. You just walk to the top of that staircase, and then just like, I don't know. Yeah, not doves, doves mm -hmm. turn into black swans right in front of your eyes. Anyway, mm -hmm. why did you kill him, Al? That's what I want to know. Why did you push him down those stairs? Uh, I, I, I have no memory of, I, I could have been blacked out. I'm going to say that that's what happened. Is it that you needed to be the king of the absurd? MC Escher needed to die so weird Al Yankovic could live? That sentence you know, I, feels like destiny. I know. And, and I know that, by the way, that Patrick is already laughing. He's suppressing a laugh because we know not, nothing is funnier to Patrick than death. Go on out. Well, this was 1972, so I would have been 12 years old at the time. So I, right. that was when I was... I was going through a murderous rage phase. So again, no, I have a memory of this. you're so confused. Uh, your body is changing. Liberty. Eighth grade is hard, man. Eighth grade is the worst. So you know, no. I, I, you know, it could have been, it could have been any number of reasons. I, I, yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't want to cast aspersions out, but I do find it a little bit convenient that MC Escher dies, and eleven years later, you come out with your first album. It seems I'm going to use the Twinkie defense. I, I I know that that's that's uh, not necessarily valid in court, but I, I I think it's it's the way I'm going to go here. Now, by the Twinkie defense, do you mean you you secretly uh, provide the jury with Twinkies as a form? of... Yes, I, I bribe them with Twinkies. Jury tampering. So that yeah. They'll let me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Works um, it, and it usually works. works. I, I don't know. I, I want to say I want to say I don't believe that Weird Al is a murderer. I'm just going to go on record. But thank you, John. Yes. I don't think Weird Al murdered. And yet, I will say this. I will say this. That's the nicest thing I've heard today. Well, and also, I just happen to enjoy delicious Twinkies, and I have them here. There's no, there's no connection. I will say, I will say, as the prosecution in this case, I also do not think that Weird Al Yankovic is a murderer. But I do have Exhibit A. That he consistently kills. Oh, can we get Al Yankovic um, is not a murderer trending? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hashtag Yankovic no murder. Hashtag free Al. <laughs> Hashtag 12 year old murderous rage, not weird Al Yankovic. Uh -huh. Hashtag Escher not dead, still falling upstairs. You know, I'd hired these other guys to be my hashtag people, but I'm going to fire them now and just hire you, John. You're killing it with a hashtag. Thank God or whatever. I could use a job. You guys are done. I don't know that we're going to get a Dick Town season service. three. So I would love, I would love to be Weird Al's hashtag guy. Holy moly. Would I be able to walk? I would be able to walk into any restaurant here in New York City. And just show them my card. Weird Al Yankovic's hashtag guy. Well, well hold on. First of all, you'd have to show them a vaccination card. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That's the first sure. card. Right. First vaccination card, then hashtag card. And they're like, oh, well, 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 welcome, Mr. Hodgman. So please give our best to Mr. Yankovic. Would you like to 10 1 or 10 2 before you sit down? <laughs> and I will say, I will 10 4. And they will be like, I don't know what that means. 10 4, goodbody. I don't know what that means because there are other things that can be excreted. There are other things that can be excreted. This is true. Is George, we two, didn't two, get one, a real two, one. I think 10 4 means real answer, number George. one, was number two, one? number three, and number four. What? We didn't get a real answer, George. Was it a 10-1 or 10-2? I didn't get a real question. <laughs> what What? What did you do? What did you do, George? Oh, what did I do? Mm -hmm. It was Pierre Dasani. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dasani in, Dasani out? Ooh, the salt beverage. <laughs> Dasani out. <laughs> wow. do, you know this, do you know this, John, that Dasani is the only water that makes you more thirsty? I am uh, parched. Make me more thirsty. You're, salt. Not, there it it's is. Not salt. Salt. <laughs> Magnesium, potassium, and salt. And chloride yeah. and sulfate. 
Oh, Dasani, right. Dasani everywhere and lots of drops to drink. <laughs> anyway. They're not your sponsor, are they? No. no. Nobody sponsors oh, us. Magic stone. Okay. <laughs> George, um, if, if people were going to order Magic Spoon, is there a promo code that they should use? No. No? Oh, yeah. Jawa Wiwa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Al, do you have any questions for John? I, I have so many, but I've got his yeah. email, so I'll ask him when it's not okay. you know, being broadcast to hundreds of thousands of people. There's a lot. Yeah. Al, I have a question for you. Okay. Something that you can talk about in a public forum that won't get either one of us in trouble? Yes. <laughs> okay. When are you going to commit the murder that I paid you for? <laughs> what? I mean... Thursday! Okay, thank you. Don't rush me. Thank you so much. No, I. Are are you are you on tour or are you not on tour? What's going on? Currently, no. I'm doing I'm doing this show, Mm -hmm. but I will be on tour as of next month, and -hmm. all the tour dates are on WeirdAl.com, your one stop Weird Al shop. Are you going to the Calvin Theater in Northampton or not? If you want me to, I will. Okay, that'd be great. My friend Monty Belmonte would love to see you. That's all. Okay. A command performance. Is he going to command me to perform? No, no, I am. And he'll be okay. there. He'll be there. Okay. I'm very excited for this. I'm very excited. Are you glad to be out on the road again? Have you been out on the road? Uh, you know, for the last two years, for some reason, I just haven't had a huge desire to be out on the road. Huh, I just thought, you know, you know, and I just, I just figure that maybe now I, I just wanted people to, uh, to say, you know, I haven't seen Alan a couple of years. I, I don't know what's been going on these last you know, 24 plus months, but, uh, but I, I think it's finally time. I think I've reached a point in my life where I, I feel like I need Al as part of the equation of my happiness. Have you missed touring? I uh, yes. Sometimes I'll, you know, walk into my living room and see my wife and I'll say, hello, Los Angeles. And she's like, no, Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne, you married me. You should know. Because I saw you, I saw you perform once live in Kansas City, uh, uh, Missouri, and that was at a, uh, a, a celebrity uh, charity event called the Big Slick, that Paul Rudd that. and Jason Sudeikis and uh, uh, a, a Eric Stone of, Street, Eric Stone Street, uh, they put that on to raise money for the Children's Hospital there. And uh, there was not for the TV series Children's Hospital. It was not, they were raising money to, for season 35 of Children's Hospital. <laughs> they never was, made enough of that show. It was, <laughs> it was, uh, they, it was, a, it was a, a, a huge Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we, and all of the celebs and also me did a big event in this big theater for the donors. And we played a game of like match game and there were some, there were some songs and some dance and so forth. And there's some question about like, is we're now going to show, is we're now going to perform or just play match game. We're now sing a song. And uh, what I heard was that you were saying weird. was like uh, weird Al. You you're saying like, uh, you know, my, my show is a big show. I have a lot of costume changes and I have a band, but you were finally persuaded to do it. And I did not know what to expect. And I don't remember what song you sang. All I know is that the theater was destroyed by your performance. <laughs> like <laughs> it was matchsticks by the end of it. I mean, but to be, to be serious, you came out and you sang and we were all on stage watching you and you leapt out into the crowd 30 feet and they caught you. They threw you around the whole theater like a, a giant uh, beach ball for a while. <laughs> then you came back on stage, closed, closed out the song turned around and i have video of this al you are a werewolf at the end of the song you are not a human you are like this this possessed demon you you didn't recognize the other humans around you it was so incredible i'm not i'm exaggerating the theater still stands it's a beautiful historic theater yeah I, i'm not going to contradict anything you just said but you no. went you went oh that's that's, that's incriminating I mean, I'm, that is there so, wasn't no, almost not what happened. See, like, there is, there's also this, which I like. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh come on, <laughs> come on, please. Well, we should say, I mean, what John is describing is not an isolated incident. I feel like you have a reputation for being one of the best 
live acts in the business and have been so for decades and continue to uh, somehow outdo yourself. And I, I saw the... What, and somehow out-tend to yourself. I also out-tend to yourself. I can say I, I know some people who have worked backstage crew on your tour, and it's really a handful for them. Yeah. But, but I, I think saw, he's up to 10, 152. <laughs> he's at this point. Yeah. I saw the, I think, the mandatory world tour. Yeah, mandatory fun. Mandatory fun. In theater, and it was like transcendent. And I, I regretted not going to the, the strings tour. You did the strings tour like right before the pandemic. And I went, I'll have so many chances to see so many perform chances. in the next two years, specifically. Yeah, I'll see them during the pandemic. You know, there's always time. 2020, 2021. I'm going to be lousy with opportunities to see Weird Al in super spreader events. And I, I was remiss in overestimating your, uh, your willingness to infect other people. But I, I will not miss a chance to see you perform again. Now, now Watto and George. No, I'll say this. I got two tickets for Carnegie Hall, and I do not have someone taking that second ticket. Watto! He's like, Watto's got it. Uh oh. I'll just there buy. I'll buy one for a million dollars. <laughs> My question, Weird, Weird Al Yankovic, do you acknowledge that you become a different creature once you get into the flow state of performance? Yes or no? I, I have not ever checked my DNA pre and post performance. I will say that it's a certainly a possibility. But do you go uh, to I a different place to... mentally? Is my is my experience of of seeing you transform into a into a into a demented rock god? Mm. Was that I, I, do, you, do you feel that or I, do you I, not feel that when you're on stage? I yes, it's not an isolated incident, and uh, I, I did enjoy that entire anecdote as it was beautifully described in your book, and it was a joy to hear you say it out loud. I wasn't trying uh, to plug my book, but uh, medallion status is no. Available let's move some paperback. paper, John. Let's move some paper here tonight. Medallion <laughs> status is available in paperback. Paperback now, great. What now, paperback? now I have a multi-part question for you. Yes, give me part three first. Well, part three. Okay. Um, do what? you feel? Do you feel that laughter is the best medicine? It is, uh, unless your appendix bursts. Great. And then medicine is your best medicine. Great question, great answer. All right, the, the first part of the question, do you believe that laughter is infectious? <laughs> mm. 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 You know, uh, I, I, I've been told that there's a, a vaccine that's being developed right now to prevent people from, from catching laughter. Uh, they're working on the yawn vaccine. Yeah, it's, it's called Dicktown, everybody. It's oh, called Dicktown. Wow, yeah. self-burn. <laughs> Second part of the question, what do you say to the charge that your concerts are super spreader events? When it they are laughter? super spreaders of joy. joy. Laughter. Now, right. when, now, I got to follow up for this. So now it's a 2.5 part question, 3.5 point question. When you say they are super spreaders of joy, you mean the emotion or the dishwashing liquid? The dishwashing liquid. All right. Well, okay, it's all right. over the place. People slipping and sliding everywhere. So, so wear shoes with some traction when you come to the show. Yeah, there we go. This oh, is what this is what I've oh, seen. This, this is... is so wrong. It's so wrong. No, this this rings a bell. I mean, look closely in the background. You can see it, right, everybody? I can I see that. that. We also Listen finally have a motive competition. He was the only person weirder than him. There can only oh. be one weird. I don't, you know, who's, who's bring back some pretty bad memories. What to bring back that murderous rage, which I've been suppressing for many years now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you've been channeling it into your performance because you just kill and yes. kill and kill and kill. Do you find, do you, but I mean, ser seriously, seriously. Yes. Yes. Does, yes. It, does, yes. It, does it scare you when you become this other creature on stage? <laughs> You know, it's it's like, you know, it, it is very much like becoming a, a werewolf uh, because you have to have like spotters. You have to have people like pull you away, like when you make your transformation right. and, and tie you up so you can't harm other people. So right. uh, and you open and you it, open every concert with you uh, handcuffed to a radiator. Right. Because it's a full moon and you don't. Yes. Wanna, right. And then you then you turn into even weirder Al, murderous rage Al and you rip your hands out of those handcuffs and you start, you go into uh, Amish, Amish paradise or something, right? I believe so, yeah. And, and we do make people sign a release before they enter the auditorium, like at right. some point during the show. Al may turn into a werewolf, may claw your face off. Right. You have to be cool mm -hmm. with that. 
And there's a whole zone in the front where people have to wear um, special protective clothing because you will breathe th fire on them. It's, it's like a Gallagher show, really. We have protective tarps for the first seven rows. <laughs> right. Just, just in case. But it's, not never, it's, not it's, not, it's not watermelon guts. It's, it's, uh, it's hellfire that is spewed from the mouth of Weird Al. Correct. Right, okay. I was just making sure I understood what, what to expect on this tour. I mean, I if that's, that's not there are, many, there are many, there are many in the in the chat going, "Ah, weird owls of London." <laughs> I, I was also seeing Werewolf of Linwood, which is a good one. Nice. Oh, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, All my questions are very sincere, though, because I've 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 I've, I've performed. I've been um, around performers. It was a transformation that I I thought was very in, in, impressive and and uh, inspiring. But well, I, would think, I, I would think I would you know people should go see it while Weird Al lives. Because <laughs> afterwards it's going to be a drag. Well, before the ghost of MC Escher comes back and takes yeah, revenge. Right. Uh, Al, can you at least next time you write an album consider writing a song about Watto or one that mentions Watto? Just consider it. It's been a while since you've written a Star Wars song. You're kind of overdue to complete yeah. the trilogy. It's true, you know, yeah, people are asking for the trilogy. Uh, I, I've got my two big Star Wars songs. And if I did a third one, if I did a whole Watto song, it would sort of become the Star Wars show. And then, George, I think then you, at that point, you're going to want a little taste if I'm I don't, But I don't, get it. I, don't, I don't get any of the money now. That goes right to the mouse. Goes to the mouse. Goes to the mouse. That goes to the mouse. Was that was that was that was that part of your deal? You get the you get the knife as part of your, the uh, the sale. Yeah, that was that was yeah, total no, compensation. They me with this knife when they uh, tricked me into selling all my Star Warses. Oh, it was the you know it was the ultimate trick. You know, I I had a big tax uh, tax issue coming up where I had to sell now or else things were going to be a little different for Uncle George, and uh, mm. so I had to sell it pretty quick make a rash decision to sell all of my Star Warses and and I did and now I don't own any Star Warses at all but I could make another one I just change a couple of letters around I can make another Star Wars tomorrow do they it own, they don't own 3 CPO I can make 3 CPO <laughs> come at me come at me <laughs> Varth Dater I watched that. Around. I watched that. Me five minutes. It take me five minutes to write War Stars. War Stars. War Stars. John War Stars. War Stars. Right. Exactly. Suk <laughs> Suk Lywalker. Uh -uh. Wado, what is the song that you would like Weird Al to write? What would be the title of it? Do you well, think? I was just looking. I was trying to pull it up on my phone because I don't know if you know this, Al. Uh, this wasn't always a live stream. Mm -hmm. No. George Lucas talk show used to be a live stage show. We did it at the various outposts of the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York City. Okay, here mm. comes a history lesson, everybody. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm ready. For many years, for many years. And then George said, I'm going to have to miss a couple shows. I have to go work on the museum. I guess the show is canceled. And Watto said, let Watto take the time slot. Let Watto do his own show. So Watto did a show, a musical review called Watto <laughs> Bout Me. <laughs> Fashions of a Toydarian. Well, Watto tried on the Weird Al hat for a night and wrote some song parodies, but made them about Watto. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to brag, but it was one of the last five shows that ever happened at the UCB Theater before wow. the coronavirus shuttered them permanently. Some the people cooler. Some people have said he <laughs> closed the theater. I was yeah. looking back at they were ru they were rushing the virus over to the theater that night. They like, were. We got to stop this. He said everything about this is wrong. This has gone too far. I'm looking at some of these songs that uh, I had on the set list that night. Uh, uh, what about me? Is a parody of what What about us by Pink. <laughs> Uh, I didn't have a title for this one. I did a version of Tomorrow, the song from Annie, Little Orphan Annie, except it was about my little Annie, Anakin Skywalker. Uh-huh. Right. And it was, the, the lead line of that song is, two, two sons will come out tomorrow, which right. is pretty cool. Two sons will come out tomorrow. He's a big laugh. That's solid. Right. But the, nice. the title is still the same. It's still called Tomorrow. Yeah. The funny thing yeah. happened around the word tomorrow. Yeah. 
uh, I, I, I did a parody of, uh, of I, you know, Watto was tackling the biggest hits of the time, right? This is early 2020. Sure. Watto wanted to strike while the iron was hot. So obviously the third song in the lineup was a parody of what would I do if I could feel from the whiz? <laughs> <laughs> and it was called what would I do if I could fuck? And it was about the fact that Watto is CGI and doesn't have genitals. That song didn't go over as well with the audience. It turns out they didn't want to think about Watto having sex. Mm. Having sex. Yeah. That right. one that one really cooled off the audience. I'll tell you that one. Shouldn't have put it that early in the in the set list. What else did we have here? We had- You don't want to think about your parents or Watto, really. I mean- mm-hmm. just a, No, the big, the big two. It's yeah. a short list, it's a short list. Grandparents, Watto parents. That's the order of things. That's it. You don't That's want it. to think about having sex. Did, did the, uh, maybe this time, mm-hmm. the, the, the cabaret number, it was about Watto's gambling problem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, you know, Jellicle songs for Jellicle cats. The, the song yes. Andrew Lloyd Webber took. I did this song about Watto's appearance in Attack of the Clones, and it was called My Sequel Song for My Sequel Hat, because in episode two, he wears a little hat. He wears hat. a little hat. Yeah, he wears a hat. He being, he being the tip you. of the hat. Yeah, I'm right. talking in the third person. Right, yeah. Watto, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, oh, uh, it's all coming back to me now, the Jim Steinman song. <laughs> Which one? The song is all coming back to me. I wasn't saying oh, that. Oh, 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 oh. I'm saying the title of the song that we know. I thought you were remembering a great Jim Steinman song. I just, <laughs> Al, I just remember the great Jim Steinman song. It's all coming back to me now. It is called It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Oh. And the, the Watto version of that was uh, Your Mind Tricks Don't Work on Me Now. That is a line that right. Watto says. You're a Toydarian. Uh, Right, mm-hmm. and then the finale right. song was uh, uh, "What a Wonderful World," and in that case, it was sarcastic. It was about how Watto's life in person. <laughs> they don't bring him back for any of the movies anymore. I also did uh, for a holiday special on this live stream. I did uh, uh, "All All I Watto for Life Day," which was a parody of Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas." So these are some of the things that are off the table. Now, Al, mm-hmm. I'll I, okay. feels like Al, these Watto songs are pretty well covered. I'm not sure that <laughs> Al, I, I'm, I'm not Madonna. What? I'm not Madonna. Oh no. Okay. Oh. Well, let's go with this. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with this. All right. Go with me on this. All right. I'm not. All right. Madonna, hypothetically. But I am a successful billionaire, and I've had a few good ideas over the years that have paid off pretty handsomely. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pitch you something that I genuinely think is money in the bank. Because it's a popular song, and I think it's lining up right with what we're looking for. Mm. We don't talk about Watto. Wow, the parody of "We Don't Talk About Bruno." It's mm-hmm. right there in the Billboard top one, right at the top of the charts. And you're already talking to Lynn on a regular basis about the musical. Easy, to and, it, and it's true because we don't talk about Watto. I mean, we do on this show, but generally in the culture, we don't talk about. It Watto. otherwise feels like there is a media blackout. We are the only <laughs> outro that talks about Watto literally every episode. I, ironically, I talk uh, to to Lynn all the time about Watto, but I never made the connection to do the song <laughs> parody based on Watto. And you think that would have like you know uh, we would have put two and two together. Mm-hmm. And had gotten ten four, you know, but we didn't. <laughs> and here's the thing, like, I don't know if you like uh, a million dollar idea. Do you like million dollars idea? Like I like some ideas. of them. Sure. Is it going to cost me a million dollars to hear it, or no, how no, does this, this work? This is a million dollar idea. This is a million dollar idea, Al. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think this All is. Right. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the third song on the uh, Hot 100 is Super Gremlin. The My buddy Steve produced Super Gremlin. That's the third song by Kodak, Kodak Black. My buddy Steve made Gremlins. Who produced oh, it? Never, I've never heard of that song before. Super Gremlin. Wow. I mean, I'll play it on the stream. No, do not. <laughs> oh, well, I'll play it on the stream. No, don't play it on the He's stream. gone. Um, what about... I'll play it on the play stream. Play it on the stream. Yeah. Well, Patrick, you're trying to change subject. We're in the hot spot here. Have you ever thought about don't go chasing Watto falls? <laughs> no. But if, if I ever do a Watto concept album, that'll be one of the top 500 ideas that I consider. 
Uh, Adele has a song called Easy On Me. What about Watto On Me? <laughs> now that I like. Yeah. Hold on, let me just pull up the top songs on iTunes right Lil, now. I Lil, 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 Lil Nas X has a song called That's What I Want. Oh. That's What Do I Want. That's, that's, that one's a layup. <laughs> Are we, we're just going to oh. sit and wait for you guys to pull this <laughs> No, I got it. I got it. I'm looking here. Best new songs on iTunes. Uh, Al, Florence and the Machine has a song, a new song called My Love. What if it was called My Watto? <laughs> Let me write that down. What is, oh, Al, there's no paper. Sorry. Al, what is the worst idea for a parody song that has ever been pitched to you by a fan? Or someone mm. on a live stream. Mm. <laughs> ah, it Has was it, something Watto people, related. Do people come up and say, "Oh, here's what you should really do"? Ow! Uh, that is the bane of my existence. That is the mm. curse of my life. Ow! Yeah. I got such a good pitch. This is what you should do. I'm looking at the best new songs. One of the top new songs on iTunes. I've never heard of this before. Is a song called Wheelie by a group called Lotto. <laughs> sure. Right the fuck there. You just make a song called Lily by a group okay. called Wata. Wata. Of course. Also, and this is more of an Anakin pitch, but there, Morgan Wallen has a song called Sand in My Boots. <laughs> uh, I hate it's sand. Yeah. Anakin would hate that. Can you right. imagine how mad he'd be? Sand yeah. gets everywhere, well, including in my boots. Since, since you're the uh, Toy Story supporter, it could be a Snake in My Boot. Well, that's right. Oh, that's Good right. point. Uh, CK has a song called Love Nuan Titi, ah, ah, ah. Watto slots right in there. Love Nuato Titi, ah, ah, ah. Good. It's good, good. stuff. I think it's we just figured out like four hours. Hours, hours and hours. <laughs> Is that spoof. an invitation? I'm sorry. That's good spoof. <laughs> that's good spoof. <laughs> that's good spoof. That's good spoof. <laughs> Yeah, I've um, got to admit, I know, I know that you get this all the time. People come up, but you know when someone brings you good spoof. You know. You know. Mm -hmm. You do know. And it's you never know, happened. You know I do know. I do know when, it, when that happens, but it never has. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't say what the worst idea that anyone came up to you with was? Uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, what a wonderful world. What a wonderful hey! world. Hey. What? What? I didn't. That I. That's mine. I own that, and I no, performed somebody, it. Somebody, somebody else somebody pitched else that. Else somebody else. Uh, uh, right. Okay. But Wado, that's not a feel. You, do you feel, feel good Al? Do you feel one, the need? Wado. Do you feel the need to go through like the iTunes top ten charts and familiarize yourself with what the songs are today? Great. I'll tell you, John. Yeah. I'll tell you and only you. I feel the need. The need for speed. Whoa. Wow. Okay, so we have it here. Weird Al Yankovic enjoys methamphetamine. Wow. Yes. There we go. <laughs> it's maybe not Lucy. even a thing. Breaking news. Breaking it's news. Al, the need for Al, if I may ask a question, just a brief follow-up. Yes, please. You've admitted here on the stream that uh, on occasion you have felt the need, the need for speed. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt a similar need for speed to cruise control. Oh, uh, I, I can't say that I have ever. That's always life. felt optional. It's always felt like a luxury, no. like a, an indulgence. Yeah. yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it. But I, don't need I can it. take it. I can leave it. But it usually I'll leave it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an option. It's an option. It's an option. Al, how does this compare to time you were on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? What is like, like, where do you rank them? Uh, Are, you on a couch? Uh, Are you on a couch right now? No, I'm I'm sitting on hot rocks. Hot rocks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the couch the couch is over there. I am on the floor. Wow. You're on the floor. Oh wow, Johnny never had sent anyone sit on the floor in front of the couch. No, he never called see, anyone not, over I'm the a, floor. I'm a trailblazer. Well, uh, yeah, come on over. Sit on the floor. No, not on the couch. I prefer you there. Yeah, sit on the floor. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like to feel closer to the earth. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More grounded, as it were. That's nice. Sure. So equal. Who else, is the, that's, yeah. who else was on the show with you, Weird Al Yankovic, when you were on Johnny Carson? Do you remember? 
the, the first time, the, the very, the very first. How many time times? How many on, times were you on? With Johnny Carson, just yeah, once, and just that once. I was, I was on the same show as Michael J. Fox, who at that time wow. was promoting a little movie called Back to the Future. Uh, and, and oddly enough, uh, a- after I performed, uh, Charles Nelson Riley was on the Tonight Show. Wow, who, who, who I wrote lineup. a song about years later. Yeah, that's a great lineup. Great lineup. Yeah. Did you yeah, perform? Wow. Did you perform a song on that show, or did you just come out and chit chat? No, we did. We did. Uh, we did Yoda and whatever the polka medley was at the time. Uh, this was 1985, so whatever that would have been. Sure. Uh, and I'll, it, I'll let know, the Weird Al complete us in the chat. Bring you know. Somebody will know. Somebody yeah, will know exactly. Uh, and, and I had to write out horn charts for everybody in the band like an, an hour before we performed it because I was under the impression that they already had charts, and I was told, "No, they do not. If you want them to play, you better write something very quickly." <laughs> So wait, you had so to hand you write the charts? Like, so you yeah. played with Doc and the band? Severinsen? Yeah. Yes, I did. That's was that cool. like? Walking the boys. Was like? Now, I heard uh, I heard he never actually played the trumpet. He just faked it. He it's all fake. The, the, whole, the whole show is lip sync. Right? Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Are you I heard telling that. me on the same episode of The Tonight Show, there was both Doc and Marty? <laughs> 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 there were in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was two for one. Great Scott! I hear that Doc Severinsen is actually just a doctor of podiatry, not mm-hmm. a doctor of uh, uh, trumpology. Trumpetology. I, you know, I, sh- I should not let him have opened me up for exploratory surgery and tattoo a picture of my liver on my spleen. That was no, a mistake. In that was not. That was not his specialty at all. We play a game. What do we think Doc's real first name is? Oh. What, what you know the an- do you know the answer? I do. Oh, right, so we're talking Patrick, about Patrick, for those for those of you who are under fifty. Yes, we're talking about Doc Severinsen. Check the, your the, text quickly before we play this game. I'm oh, going to guess Decretia. <laughs> what was your guess, Weird Weird Al Yankovic? Uh, Decretia, Decretia. Oh, so Doc is no? short for Decretia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Am I close? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say to everyone. I'm, I'm going to guess that his his real first name is Mister <laughs> George, Doctor Henry Jones. <laughs> I'm going to say George is closest because it's the most normal name. I wait. I haven't. All right. Well, oh, you gave John, me information oh, there. I haven't no, guessed. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Phil, Doctor Phil Severinsen. Okay, I'm going to move it over to John being the closest. It's yeah, Carl. but he got insider information. He Carl. knew Carl. He knew Carl. 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 Doctor Doctor Carl Severinsen. Carl. No. He's Carl got the same name. As, he's got the Carl. same name as. He's got the same name as Sling, Sling Blade. <laughs> Carl Doctor Severinsen. He's got the same name as Sling Blade. He's got the same name as Sling Blade. You're telling me, Patrick. Uh-huh. Because that's Sling Blade's name, right? <laughs> you said it with such confidence, and now you're, you're not even sure? Well, now I'm doubting myself. What's Sling Blade's name? Sling Blade is not a superhero. <laughs> it is. His name is Carl. Is Wait, is Sling, Blade, Sling Blade Marvel or DC? I'm not sure. Yeah, his name's Carl. Who produced, who produced the movies? Who has the rights to the movie Sling Blade? Because it would be pretty cool to bring... Sling Blade into the MCU or the DCEU. That would be pretty cool. Be cool. If we rebooted Sling Blade. Yeah, because he, a... he, he is a superhero. He slings his blade at Dwight Yoakam. <laughs> uh, Dwight okay, Yoakam no. is the supervillain of Sling Guys, Blade. It's a Miramax. It's a Miramax. So. Hey, Patrick. Patrick. Patrick, I am no need to say, Patrick, there's no need to shake your head. The Miramax Library is now safely owned by a venture capitalist firm that Rob Lowe is a part owner of. So no controversy there. There you go. Um, Sling, Sling Blade, man, if Sling Blade came out of one of those portals at the end of Endgame. Oh, you're a good guy, Sling Blade. That's fun. Weird Al, Weird Al Yankovic, do you enjoy a superhero movie? Yes or no? Yes, John Hodgman, I do. Which is your favorite superhero movie of the past? Oh, hmm. one of the Mans, Ant Man or Iron Man or mm-hmm. 
or um, Beanie okay. Feldman, one of those. Uh, well, <laughs> wait a second. Al, you raise a good point here. I'm the Ant-Man trilogy. So I'm just be a trilogy directed by Peyton Reed, who, if I'm not yes, mistaken, indeed. was the main in-house director on the Weird Al show. I can't believe your research department. Holy moly. What is, are you? Is this Watto or Nardwar here? No <laughs> deep dives <laughs> necessary. Are you no a human research, yet? No research necessary. Watto watched it live every Saturday morning. And we did do it live. Amazing. Even the animated parts. <laughs> yes. Those were animators drawing very, very, very quickly. Have you ever <laughs> nudged Peyton Reed and say, hey, maybe let me play, I don't know, Annihilation, Psycho Man? <laughs> Al Nihilation. Al Nihilation. Al Nihilus, the king of the negative zone. Al well, Tom Man. Sharpling told me. Tom Sharpling told me that if Peyton ever cast you in something, he will cut you out of the movie. Wow. So that's I, I was the... told not not to allow that to happen. Okay. <laughs> I got the big pitch. Sharpling protecting his turf of being in every Ant Man and getting cut out of it. I got the big pitch. How about this? All right. Who is the biggest villain as yet? Unseen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Victor Von Doom. Big one. Oh. Thank you. What if instead his name was Al Actis? <laughs> Gal, a G Gal Actis. No, I no. I made the joke. There's no need to punch it up. You confused it. Yeah, Al Actis. Al Actis. Weird Al Actis. The world, the world eater. Weird Al Actis. Weird Al Actis, Al Actis, the Escher killer and the world eater. He eats parody <laughs> worms. I think you should workshop this a while longer, but it, it's getting there. It's working for me. Oof. Oof. Patrick, you got any notes? Weird Al is tough in the pitch room. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Just swatting them away. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Like Weird Al doesn't need to do a movie with the MCU. Weird Al's got his own thing going on. <laughs> Weird Al doesn't need to be Al Actus. So you got to come up with something sharper. We're not going to do... The MCU is going to be begging you to be part of it, and you're just going to uh, swat them away. Yeah. What the oh, sorry. The sorry, you guys. I'm, 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 I'm Weird Al's representative, uh, re sure. regular John. Sure. And uh, I'm here to tell you, like Weird Al doesn't need to do any of this stuff. You know, he's he's very busy singing uh, singing uh, lyrics that someone else wrote to a public domain song for an animated show called Dick Town. Uh, he's not going to be oh, in the where MCU. Where can you see that, John? What's that? Where can you watch Dick Town? Well, watch that on Hulu. Bit.ly slash Dick Town. D i c k t o w n. Is there a day oh. and time in which regular episodes air on linear broadcast? Uh, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> They can, I'm, I, I hear the most reliable way to watch it, though, is on Hulu on Fridays. New episodes mm -hmm. on Fridays. Bit.ly slash Hulu Fridays. Fridays. Yeah. So you can, like, torrent it on Saturday. Is that correct? You, you yeah. can't. No, please don't. Hey, excuse me. I'm, here, I'm, trying to, I'm out here. Regular John is out here trying to protect Weird Al's time. Not only that. Protect Weird Al's residuals. Protect Weird Al's time. Weird Al's residuals. Hulu Fridays. No. If you don't catch them on Fridays, just just sail on down to that Pirate Bay on Saturday. <laughs> sail on down to that Pirate Bay and see what's on offer. What the the I mean, I mean yeah. yeah, you'll find me hot on the is, dark web. There is a boat on <laughs> Dicktown, so that boat could be parked in that Pirate Bay. A houseboat. A houseboat in which my character lives. Hey, yeah. I'm not gonna. You want, I'm I'm trying to field pitches for Weird Al here. I'm not gonna pitch my own show. All right. Okay, I got the pitch for Weird Al. Yeah. <laughs> I'll Normal. hear it, and then I'll, and if I think it's good, I'll bring it to Weird Al. Normal John. Regular John, thank you. I'm sorry. You're right, Wado, I'm going to let you just talk to John for a second. Okay. So you're the... I have hey, so, yeah, uh, it's great to see you. I've got um, a little bit of time. Okay. I hear you have something you want me to bring to Weird Al. What's going on? Ooh. Big fan, by the way. Big fan, by oh, the way. Thank you very much. That's so yeah. kind of you. Hold on one second. I was busy reacting to something... Off screen. Oh, Ooh, I thought you were. Ah, ah, I thought you were doing a ten five. No, no. Oh, okay. Ooh, ah, ah! I wish someone would ask me what's happening. Ooh, ah, ah, uh, ah. Hey, what's going on, Wado? I'm sorry. I just got such a hot pitch. It's burning my hands. All right. I, I've. I, that's fantastic. I've heard. I've heard it all before. Let's. Uh, let's hear it. What do you? What do you got? A pitch for Weird Al? Yeah, we've heard that your client Weird Al recently turned down the tailor-made role. A weird owl actus. Mm -hmm. Too commercial. 
too mainstream. Just not, just not, it's not, not that. He's got a lot of respect for uh, the whole MCU. It's just not something he's interested in this time. Well, you say he has respect for the MCU, but maybe the MCU is not the right fit for Al. Well, I'm all ears. I have um, a different you I think he might want to be a part of. A different you. Okay. Interesting. The, the MCEU. Uh, the Marvel Cinematic Extended Universe? No, the MC Etcher Oh, 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 oh. oh I, I see. Uh, well, uh, I'm interested. Go ahead. Tell me more. Now, what if I add another letter to the P? Um, okay. Uh, sure. Go ahead, please. Did you say woke? Okay? Like when something is both woke and okay? <laughs> that's, that's right. I am a member of the woke mod, by the way. Well, of course I could tell. You won't stop waving your SJW flag. Here's the letter I want to add to the mm. niche. Another C. So M C M C M C U. Nope. M C M C E U. No. The M C E U Marvel no, M C I, Escher I, Universe. Like, we're not adding another M. We're, this is the pitch. The yeah, M you have to. You have to literally spell it out for me. I'll spell it out for you. Is the is, is the M C E C U the M C Etra sure. cinematic, cinematic universe. universe? Why are these things stuck as still images? I want to see that staircase. The movie. Well, uh, you kind of already did in the TV show uh, Squid Game. It's a TV show. I don't count that. Well, I think the rights are tied up with Squid Game. I think all of the, all of the MC. They own the Wacky ECU. Stairs now. Yeah, yeah. That production company bought Wacky Stairs. Uh, bought uh, Silver Orb. That's coming up on Netflix. Silver Orb was Phase Two. Sorry, they already oh, got it. Build up to the first movie was going to end with an end credits cookie for the Orb. And it was going to take six movies to build up to it. Yeah. No, but John, I mean, you got to pitch this idea to Al. I got to pull Watto. All right. Uh, Al, I was just talking to Watto. Um, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I know you're very busy, and I don't know if you have time for this, but uh, basically, the idea is uh, you would have full creative control, both uh, as an executive producer and um, showrunner, if you want to do uh, uh, TV shows. Uh, they've got something set up called the MC ECU, which is the MC Escher Cinematic Universe. And the idea is there's going to be a whole movie based on the wacky stairs. There's going to be a whole movie based on the on the reflective orb. Uh, all of all the the hand drawing the other hand is going to be their summer tent pole. And um, they want to know if you want in. I was under the impression that those were all part of uh, Squid Game's uh, intellectual property. Is that not the case? Yeah, but there seems to be some rights issues. We might be able to carve out certain territories. Um, Manitoba uh, mm. is open. Uh, they, okay. they have not received Squid Game yet. Um, parts of New Jersey and uh, parts of Utah as well. So this would be kind of like um, uh, when they did Quicksilver in the Fox Universe and Quicksilver in the MCU. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be so. You would be definitely going. You would definitely be going toe-to-toe uh, uh, -to -toe with the hand drawing hand uh, movie right. that's coming out of South Korea in about five uh, minutes. Uh, Tell me what the MCU idea was again. The original one. The MC the MC Escher Cinematic Universe. No, no, no. Before that, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. No, no. That's oh, you, you want to. Oh, I, okay, I thought that was off the table, but that's cool. You know, I just want to revisit it because I really, really, no offense, hate this idea. So let's just revisit well, no offense. the first idea. Uh, right. So I think the idea would be that you would play an, uh, an intergalactic um, uh, giant who goes around eating planets. Yes. Uh, and before you eat the planet, you sing a parody of all the, pop the most popular songs on that planet before you eat it. And it would be Weird Al Acticus. You know, I, I hate that less than I did 10 minutes ago. Right. You would also be asked to play uh, the, the the silver accordionist herald of Weird Al Acticus. Al, Al what is, it? is this a whole separate 
characters is like a Peter Sellers kind of thing? No, it'd be a Norbit kind of thing where you play a number of different characters. A Norbit kind of thing. Okay, right. got it, got it, got it. You're going to play all members of the Fantastic Four, uh -huh. uh, but they're going to be called the Altastic Four. Oh, um, makes sense. Yeah, so we, we would need an original song for each of the characters. So uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. Fantastic is a stretchy guy. Uh, the Invisible Woman is invisible. We would need a song for the th the uh, the thing, uh, something to do with it's clobbering time. Maybe it's slobbering mm. time. Maybe it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm not weird out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, and, and they're all like food related parodies somehow. Okay. Um, Al, look, we've worked together for a long time. They don't, I've said this before, they don't all have to be food related. I'm sorry. They can be. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even. All right, you're right. Food, 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 food related. Of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they are. Uh, I'm so sorry. What was I even thinking? Um, the Human Torch uh, uh, could be the. I don't know what the Human Creme Brulee. I look. I'm not the. I'm not the genius here. You are. You leave that to me. I'll, I got that covered. I just, I'm just you know, trying to delineate the parameters here, so we know what we're talking about. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, those those are the offers on the table, and I also have the it's kind of a wild one, but. Um, You've been offered a chance to play um, Sling Blade in the Sling Blade reboot. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about that. Yeah. Uh, there's, you can see some image on the that's screen. That's Carl, right? It's Carl? That's, well, Carl, that's his alter, alter, uh, yeah, his alter ego that he was. He, he, become Sling Blade? he becomes Sling Blade um, every time he drinks from the vial of blood that he keeps around his neck. <laughs> Very obscure Billy Bob Thornton. Deep, joke. deep cut, deep yeah, cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he turns into Sling Blade. I'm glad you got that. All right, my life, my life is complete. Regular John is out. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's your the, the world is yours. The world is your oyster, uh, Al. Um, um, yeah, I want to be the the consumer of all worlds and Sling Blade uh, as well. Now, I, I'm taking all offers now. All offers are back on the table. I have wow. a pitch. I have a pitch if you're open to it. And, and it doesn't have to be a private pitch. We can have everybody, everybody on the screen for it. We can even have Watto back in. We can bring Watto back in for this. I don't think that's necessary, is it? We can bring Watto back in. He's no. a friend. I'm not he's sure where Watto, Watto left. I'm not sure where he went. Keep talking. Yeah, we can bring he's Given that he has no genitals, he's doing a 10-0. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, John, I'll pitch this right to you, Al, as well. And, and you know, I, I a full disclosure, I'm in the museum business now. I don't have direct ties to the uh, active uh, Star Wars properties, but I do. I do have the ear of Filoni and and Favreau, and I can uh, I can sometimes uh, move the needle a little. Um, and I do have a thought for a thing that I think you'd be right for. Um, do you like? First of all, I, I assume you like Star Wars because you've been involved with Star Wars properties before. I have not seen it yet. Uh, I'm told it's quite good. Right, uh, I, I, again, I, I've written all my songs based on things I found in your garbage. I have not bothered going to the theater. Well, if you like the I, garbage, you're going to love. Sure. If you like the garbage, you're going to love the stuff that we put up on the screen. Because I actually released a garbage version of it originally in uh, 1977. I didn't put the real version out until Disney Plus came along. Um, oh, yeah. The early versions were all just garbage. So essentially, that you know, because they, weren't, they, weren't, really. they yeah. weren't done until they, it, it's not done until you McClunky it. You, you have to wait for the technology to catch up with your genius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would even build on that, Al. If you're a fan of Yoda, I would go as far as to say that some of Yoda's best work is in the Star Wars movie. Hmm. Oh, I will keep that in mind. It's on like it's on my to-do list. It's like, you know, I've I've got that got that on my calendar. Watch the entire Star Wars collected works. And yeah. it's I, I, something always comes up. But but here's here's the pitch because Star Wars is largely about fathers and sons. Fathers and sons, that's it's just key to the whole thing. It's about the relationship between between uh, daddies and their boys. Mm -hmm. And um and there is a father-son uh, relationship that's never been explored. We, we've seen the father. We've never seen the son. Uh, and it's a character who, in the, in the current chronology, we've seen, we've seen him pass away. He's a beloved character. Um, but we, we, never, we le never learned about his personal life. And I think it's a rich tapestry to pull from. And the character's name, uh, and and you would not play unless you decide you want to play both. But I, th I think you'd be better playing the son. The character's name is Admiral Akbar, mm. and mm. his son is Weird Al Akbar. Ah, uh, you know, I, 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 again, I haven't seen the movies, but I'm, I'm not familiar. But I, I have eaten many times at Akbar's snack bar. 
Mm. That's one of my favorite local dine, dining. I love that. Can I just say I love that? <laughs> I don't you know can. if you're pitching that. To, I don't know if you're pitching that to me, but I'll buy that in the room. Okay, please do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, buying, it room, I'm buying it in the room. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so I, I will be Akbar Junior in this scenario. Yeah, Akbar Junior. So Admiral Akbar and Weird Al Akbar. Could I have a moment just to talk to my client for a moment? Absolutely. Your client being Weird Al. Oh yeah. <laughs> Al. Hey John. You can't just be pitching Akbar Snack Bar to George Lucas. Why? What's well, that's a ten million dollar idea. Oh. But it's owned by Disney. George can't make that stuff. Oh, I forgot. He's got no he's got no ability to make any Star Wars at this time. Now, if you wanted to pitch him a, a War Stars. <laughs> I mean if that's you, true. If Would there be an act bar in War Stars? Well, there could be a back bar snack bar. Back, okay. Right. Or a back bar art. Yeah. Something like that. Uh huh. But, um, you know, you, you, that still just, stands. You know, that works for me. He's just going to, he's, oh, okay. Well, let's go back into the room and we'll pitch that. Okay, cool. If you're worried, because uh, I, I mentioned this before, if you're worried about the, the IP, um, not we have no concerns about the IP. I think the the. Well, the, the, I mean, the, how are you? Because I've been drinking a lot of Dasani. Yeah, Dasani in, Dasani out. It passes through your body and is not absorbed in the least. It it, it takes so much from you. Is it true that the Dasani is cultivated directly from the planet Crate? That's what I heard. It's yeah. the natural flowing water of the salt planet Crate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, from you the just, last Jedi. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fly your little uh, scrape speeder over the surface. <laughs> That's what they did. The Coca Cola Company. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a thing. We got a thing that flies. Let's make sure it scrapes the surface. They have a plastic bottle at the bottom of the scrape speeder, and as the thing flies forward, the salt scrapes straight into the water bottle. That's right. That's where. That's where it is. I can't wait to enjoy. John. I'm not worried about the IP. I mean, if you're pitching for the Dasani Cinematic Universe, yeah. yes, we're in. We're we're all ears. But... Yeah, because it's wet, but it's a dry wet. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. the best kind. Right. Yeah. yeah, like it'll wet so you down, but it'll dry you out. So it'll the deal's going to happen. This sounds like it's happening. It sounds like it's happening. So I... I, 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 I uh, again, I have a way of dealing with IP. I just put a different letter in front so we can be back bar, cack bar, dak bar. Uh, Dak-bar. I am allowing John to negotiate on my on be, my behalf for all future IP. Dak-bar. So Dak-bar. I completely defer to him. Dak-bar. Whatever. Dak-bar. All right. Here, here's 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 Dak-bar. all right. Let me, let me George. Thank you. Dak-bar. First of all, I just want to say you're a legend. Dak-bar. We're both incredible big fans. Dak-bar. Uh, I could see a, a universe, Dak-bar. a cinematic universe, if you will. Whack bar. In which, if you were suggesting yeah, that, for example, uh, yeah, weird, weird Al were to commit to a back bar snack bar, Zach bar, and um, or a whack bar snack bar, let's put it that way, like a whack bar, right? Whack bar snack bar, okay. And the idea is that uh, Weird Al Yankovic would uh, would dress as Admiral Whack Bar. Um, and not a full head thing because we need to recognize that it is weird. Al, it might just Here's be thing. if we can just put a space, Admir Al Akbar. Disney doesn't own it because it's a different character. If Ad Admir, right? Admir, Admir Al, Al, Al Akbar, right? Admir Al Akbar snack bar. Yeah, and I, and the idea is that uh, who doesn't uh, admire Weird Al Yankovic. No, right, of course. I mean, everyone will be very excited to see Weird Al Yankovic we'll in the theme park. We'll say, admire, admire, where's the E? There's teenagers selling it out behind the snack bar. Yeah, it's admire ap- ap- apostrophe, because yeah. that's that's the, the lingo today among the right. teens. And and when you're doing that stuff, when you're doing ecstasy, you got to drink lots of Dasani. And we've heard that Al has a, a need for speed. We can throw some E in there if that's also his bag. Right, some ecstasy and some speed, sure. Can I also? Uh, so let me let me just let me just. I want, I want to jump. Let me just jump in, sweeten the deal for a moment. All right. I'm you were listening. saying, well, he can't have the head thing because people need to recognize that they it's out. See, they need right. to see that it's weird out. Right. What if we approach this from the exact opposite angle? What if we take Admiral Akbar, 
we put the Hawaiian shirt and the curly wig on him. And then we just, whenever the puppet opens its mouth, we play a Weird Al song. And Al doesn't even need to show up. It's a straight royalty deal. That's a... Uh... Mailbox money, I like that. It's mailbox money. Oh, okay. I guess Weird Al speaks for himself then. That's fine. Oh, no, sorry, John. No, 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 it's great. I think, I, think I think we have a deal. I think we have a deal. I think we have a deal. God damn it, Weird Al. This is how you got into that dick town mess. I know. I'm just sorry. Call, just don't answer your email anymore. Next thing you know, you're going to be writing a, a thing for season three of Dick Town. Oh, buddy. <laughs> hey, at least season three of Dick Town is going to be released, right? Uh, I don't know. Check out. Speak it speak into it. the world, John. Just say yes. I'll say my intention into the world, which is I hope everyone checks out uh, Dicktown at bit.ly slash Dicktown on Hulu. John, John, I got the great. Yeah. I got the great. Featuring the great. Uh, there's an actor named Griffin Newman who's going to win an Emmy. Oh, the guy oh, who shits on set? set? Yeah. The, yeah. The famous set shitter, Griffin Newman. Yeah. Is a. Is, uh, is in is in uh, uh, episode eight and nine of the second season. Oh, wow. coming, right, coming right up. All new episodes uh, in, in, uh, on Thursdays in March on FXX, and then on Hulu on Fridays, including the great, great uh, vocal stylings of Weird Al Yankovic in season wow. season one theme song. What a wow. fine plug! With lyrics by David Reese and music by unknown artist. John, that's a good plug. Yeah. Now, now, John, you're saying you don't want to. You don't want to jump the gun. As much as you like a third season, you can't it. announce it. You don't want to. Uh, uh, it's something you can't come through, right? But inherent in that attitude is the idea, the perhaps false notion that you need to wait for someone else to give you money to produce an animated series. Now, what if I told you that you could spend your own personal billions of dollars producing multiple seasons of a very funny animated series, and then you just trust that they will find a way out there after that. You don't have to wait for the money, people. So you're not you're saying not not taking the the path well traveled to being on television, but taking kind of a detour. A detour, and sometimes that detour lasts for a decade, but we believe it will eventually re reemerge with the highway. Uh, John, don't, don't give away your location, but but I, I notice walls uh, uh, behind you. Yes, yes, I definitely live in a walled compound. Are you in? A, are you in a home, a house? Uh, I like. I'll stay with walled compound. It's very walled safe. compound. Are you, are you a homeowner? Well, I am in a walled compound, and I'm safe here. Thank you. All right. Don't answer me. If you are a homeowner. You could use, you could sell that house and put the money into releasing or producing, not releasing, but producing a, a third season of Dicktown without ever asking permission. We can't ask you to release it, but we can tell you to produce. to produce it. And we have to beg you not to answer this question. George told you not to answer. Please do not answer. No problem. That's a solid plan. So... I think that what we can probably settle on here is that Weird Al Yankovic will go to Anaheim and stop by several Ralph's uh, uh, supermarkets, mm -hmm. uh, get some packets of combos, get some packets of um, Nesquik, some, some little boxes of Nesquik, some Capri Suns, uh, sneak them into Disneyland uh in a long trench coat and then he will discreetly paint his face blue or purple to look mm -hmm. something like an alien mm -hmm. and then once he's inside galaxy's edge we'll bring out sort of a cardboard cigarette box that will say admiral al's whack bar <laughs> and sell snacks in in galaxy's edge just on as a side hustle Yes. Without approval, just as sort of a pop-up shop. As my interim manager, if that's what you're recommending, I will have to do that. I think that it's probably the best best way to go. It's going to get a lot of buzz. Yeah. John, John, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Are those mm -hmm. stacks of compact discs behind you? No, no, no. What they're, are they? They're, they're they're books in a in a unique bookshelf. Uh, books in a unique bookshelf. 
Yes, yeah, so the CD is a literature. What, what, uh, what's your question, George? Honestly. Oh, well, now that they're books, it's moot. I thought, boy, you got those CDs, you could sell those anywhere. <laughs> okay. Now that I know they're books, what are you going to do? You can't, you can't compete with Amazon. That's the bookstore. Yeah. No, I, I have some CDs. Why, why do I want to sell my CDs? I don't know. You're trying to fund that season three of Dicktown. Yeah, I think I think we're all set. I, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go afoul of uh, FX and Disney, who own the IP to Dicktown, yeah. um, by trying to make an independent Dicktown with my own money that I raised by Call mortgaging Dicktown. my walled compound Dicktown. and selling my CDs. Dicktown season three. Dicktown. <laughs> Dicktown. Season three. Dicktown. Dicktown. B- oh, I'm sorry. B- sorry. Dicktown. Dicktown. B I C K. Yeah. B I C. Bunch of pens. No, that no, that's IP. Yeah, that's IP. You think Bic's not going to come after you? If you don't put a K in there. When are you guys going to put gonna... a K in there? You're going to be in court the rest of your life. The pen boys are going to come after you. When are you guys going to let Weird Al Yankovic off the hook? When are you going to let this guy go? <laughs> I, I, I was trying to land this. I want a quick break so I can just grab a quick eight hour sleep and that'll be fun. Yeah. No, I mean, look, the headline here is I don't think we have to let Al go because I think the show itself is winding down. Two great guests, nothing more on deck. So we can. <laughs> what? What? Wow. Wow. Big, big energy. Big, big energy. Wow. Hodman. What? Oh. Watto, Watto, George. We were tr- Luke. Now, ben, ben, we were trying to land the plane on this island. I am like, trying to land the plane. Hey, so man, how are you? Have you guys oh. started to sing songs of his back to him? Is it that part of the night or no? We've been pitching him songs all night, but we haven't been singing. Oh, Maybe that's I the can't, Well, it's IP. It's I IP. Can't can't imagine. Al, if we go to hour four, four we all get a prize. Al, what are you going to have for dinner? I don't know. I haven't started cooking it yet. You're going to cook it? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. You're not going to you you get your you craving for. Sorry, what? Go, George. You should do it. It's your show. I don't want to go on top of you, George. Let's say you're, maybe your question was better. Let me hear from you. What do you have a craving for, Al? Craving. Mm-hmm. What are you craving? <sighs> Beans. <laughs> beans. I want yeah. beans. Yeah, there's my guy. There he is. Wow. All right, so we'll have some beans probably tonight, right? Al? All right, it shouldn't take yeah. long to cook. Some I'm beans. Good. All you Open need is all you need is a fire and a metal container. Go down by the train tracks. Cook some beans. Wow, I'm on hour three. I'm on hour three. Uh, George is taking Christopher Walken like pauses between sentences. I'm definitely on hour three. <laughs> oh. Al, have you talked about your Have you talked about your uh, show starring Daniel Radcliffe yet? Has that already been brought up? Yeah, no, hey, that was so long ago. I forget now. Yeah. That was hours ago, man. <laughs> the movie got released already. We've been on so long. Uh, really? Roku is already streaming it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh. We're editing in real I'm time sorry. on Roku. Mm. Hey, so, so, Ben, how you been? Yeah. I'm good, man. How are you? How is everything? Yeah, hold on one second. Al, we're all just going to pull back for a moment so you can interview Ben. I know you want to eat dinner, but it feels like there's a good thing going on here. Okay. What about Hodgman? So, he's just going to leave? All right. He's, 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 Hi, gone, Al. he's gone now. Hey, man. How are you? So are you are, very how, well. How are you? Are you working on Sonic 3 yet? I'm work with Sonic Two Press is happening right now. I'm on, I'm doing a movie in New Orleans right now called Renfield uh, about Dracula. Remember Dracula? I do. Yeah, you, Nick Cage plays uncle. Dracula. In the... Oh, are you serious? You, perhaps. But but and how but, did but, you have but, to pay? Was it with blah blah blah? <laughs> perhaps. So so that's exciting. So Al, when that's you go on tour, you have a very enormous tour coming up. It's Humongo, uh, starting um, end of April and going through the end of October. We're doing a, a 133 shows, and I hope you come to all of them. Um, my plan is to come to all of them and uh, create some sort of Roku Zoom series that revolves around me watching you do your shows. So it'll be just me videoing myself watching you singing along, if that's fine. 
So, so is this part of your uh, Sonic Two Media tour? Part part of the. Uh, <laughs> uh... This is going to blow your mind. They uh, they did not want me to do this. This is something I'm doing on my own. Patrick emailed me a link, and th- and then this happened. Wait, Are I have they... two more questions. Uh, Al, can oh, I ask you a series of questions? Please. It's too. too will you take your yourself. family? Will you take your family on tour with you, or no? It's too much for to bring whole family. It's too much. They're going to like figure out what what show they want to come to in the middle of the tour and go there and meet me on the road. And we'll have a picnic. Oh, that's cute. You'll have a picnic. Oh, a little picnic. It'll be great. What do you think you'll eat? Beans. <laughs> Did I get the reference or no? Was there something earlier that happened with beans? No, that was just for you. <laughs> are we doing b-sides on this tour or are we going through the dare to be stupid album a to b a to z it's uh, it's, it's all it's all the songs that nobody wants to hear it's, it's a, a show geared to the <laughs> hardcore fans they don't want to hear hear the real deep cuts so that's that's who's going to show up oh that's and very like one, very one exciting every night going like he didn't play eat it and then they'll be like you know oh my. and then they'll be like fist fights Fisticuffs. How Everybody. old do you think the people that come to your show are? You just impersonated two very elderly human beings. Between 75 and 90 years old. That's like the, the core audience for the tour. <laughs> That's your core demographic? Will you do yeah. one long polka or will you do a series of small polkas throughout? I don't want to give away any surprises. It could, it could be no polka. It could be back-to-back, wall-to-wall polka. Because I, I just oh want you to... God. Uh, expect nothing so that anything that we do will be a huge surprise. Wow, that's very exciting. A lot of people are calling uh, wall to wall. Here comes Hodgman. You have My a manager's question? on the phone. Patrick. Okay. Oh, they're all back. <laughs> Every- Hi, everybody. I was just checking Wait, out. So they're uh, next to each other? Hey there. Hey, we're next to each other on the floor. Patrick updated to Otto and George on the floor. Hang on. John, yeah. you and I have never really gotten to talk uh, in in length ever, outside of me being a fan of yours on uh, your brain and uh, Daily Show and Twitter stuff. Oh, you are such a kind person, and I am a fan of yours. And no, we have never, I don't think, had a chance to talk before. And Man, I'm, at so a, I'm, at I'm at a loss for words. I'm at a loss for words. No, you're fine. You don't care. Oh, you got your little Groot? Oh, not Groot. Your baby Yoda? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse Your Grogu? Me. Excuse Your Grogu. me. Ben Ben 8. Get your IP yeah. straight. Sorry. Oh, and Patrick's there too. You guys are having a little slumber party. On the Grogu. What the heck is happening in that room? Um, what do you mean? You, Al, you know what the hell's happening in that room. Get Patrick some sugar and let's see what happens. Al, will you be playing Melanie on the tour? Uh, Melanie Charter from the old show Fridays. Is that what you're talking about? Wow. That is a deep cut. <laughs> that is a deep cut. I'm competing with you, John, so. Wow. George, George, do you remember Melanie? Do you remember how Melanie goes? Melanie, why Very won't good. you go out with me? Can and you, you come skip on the, road the whole first part? You just went well, right to the court. Al, here's what I want. My wife's name, my wife is Melody Hobson. Would you do a, would you do a spoof? I'm sorry. Oh, I just want to let people know. I gave Patrick a pickle, and now he's choking to death on the pickle. He walked out of the room. The very final George Lucas talk show. The producer dies by choking on a pickle. I hope he he does choke to death. Weird Al 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 doesn't know that the show has ended and stays online for 19 hours. Patrick ruined Oh, that's the worst part. And then goes on cruise ships around the world, apparently. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Patrick, are you okay? You're right, man. I, I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't Still that much go. No, you don't. It's chug not, it. Chug you don't it. have to. No. <laughs> Wait, why are you eating it? Do you hate pickles or no? No, Watto handed it to me. Oh, that's cute. It's a Watto pickle. It's a Watto pickle. Ben, where are you in the it's world? It's a Watto pickle. Ask? I'm in New Orleans right now. I'll be New here Orleans. for another couple of weeks. The yes. Large, Do you have any recommendations? Easy. I haven't been there in years. Yeah, you should I've watch been there in years. What well, do, do you eat everything, or do are there things you don't eat? I eat everything. I, I wasn't a huge oyster guy until earlier this year, and now I'm oh, eating yeah. oysters like crazy here. Galatoire's is very good. I like that's the oldest restaurant, and one of the oldest restaurants in the United States is Galatoire's. <laughs> Sorry, Watto is absolutely cracking up, and I don't know why. Watto cannot control Man. himself. <laughs> what's, what's Admiral Akbar doing? It's Admiral, it's Admiral Al 
Akbar. Weird <laughs> Admiral, Admiral Akbar. <laughs> I was laughing because uh, George had a very good recommendation for you, Ben, in and, terms of what to do while in New yeah. Orleans. You have HBO Max? What is, what is it? You have HBO Max? Huh? You have HBO Max? Yeah. Stop you yelling, George. I'm on your show. I came here. Don't yell at me, please. You should watch Treme. There's... You should watch Tremay while you're there. George, he's not Why? It's, it's all about New Orleans. I understand. Wendell Pierce is in it. It's, gonna, it's a great show. I watched it. Do you need me to watch it again? I don't need you to watch it again. It's it's more of a speed two cruise. George, you what? irritate me so much. You have so much <laughs> anger. We're all here being positive people. I've never seen Al be mean to anybody. And you're making... Look at Hodgman. Have you ever seen him this angry in your life? Yeah. Look at that. You can't even see his eyes anymore. He's so angry. You told George you were in a place and we're looking for recommendations of things to do in that place. And George Watch the TV <laughs> show about the place. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. I have I have a less aggressive question for you, Ben. Sure, of course, Waddle. Thanks for asking and being so less aggressive. Al, you must be starving. Surely you need to get food. I'm gonna about the six hour mark, I'm gonna maybe take a break for do a ten four perhaps. <laughs> Can I? What can the problem be, sweet Melanie? Here's what I want. My wife's name is Melody Hobson. It would be really good if well, you would stop. do a stop. George Watto was talking. George Watto was talking. Watto, what were you saying? Business. This is yesterday's business. We got it. It's from an hour ago. I will let it happen. I'll allow it. All right. Melanie sounds like Melody, and Melody is the name of my wife. And it'd just be so great if you would do a spoof of your original song, Melanie, but make it about my oh. wife. A parody of my original song. Spoof mm -hmm. yourself. Yes. You got to spoof I, yourself. Oh, yeah. I, you wrote it. You own it. You got to make it. Spoof, spoof. <laughs> you got to spoof yourself. You I remember this song. time code. Remember this time code because I want to hear that again later on. Yeah. Remember this time code, Patrick, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Clip, yeah. It and ship it. Ship it. Clip it and ship it. What if you had, what if you had one song and one opportunity to spoof your own song? Would you... Take that Go opportunity to spoof it, or would you let it flip? Or would you infuriate a billionaire? You gotta spoof <laughs> yourself. You wrote it. You own it. I gotta oh, watch guys, 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 guys. I was spoofing on an Amazon. It's your IP, Al. You can do whatever I, you I, want. I, 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 would, I would do that for a for a billion dollars. No, no, for a billionaire, yeah. a million dollars, please. Oh, a million. John, what do you think? Well, it's only a million dollars, but you are doing it for a billionaire. So that make it for, an for a B. What? That's what they always say. Exposure there. Um, no. A, billion, a million to him is like pocket change. I think let's just concentrate let's just concentrate on the on the Admiral Admir Al Akbar snack bar. Oh boy, John, I think that's, that's a long walk. Oh, it's Admiral, beautiful. Admiral, 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 Admiral snack bar. That's what we need. There to, it is. That's what we need to find. Where is that in Disneyland? Yeah. 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 Al's going to Al's going to do an un, an unlicensed pop-up in Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. Where oh, that's gonna, great, Al. He sells Twix yeah. and shit out of a coat. Uh, does, does for cash only question? in front of the uh, Wado still is oh, Sorry, Wado had a question for me like 25 minutes ago. Yeah, Wado. Hi, Ben. Hey, Waddle, lovely to, lovely to, uh, hey, by the way, while I have you here and Al's here and you're great at this, what's the domestic gross of UHF? UHF. Well, it, it, and, and what year? And what year? This is, the, look, Al, I'm good at this and the pressure is on because I'm speaking to a man who probably has these numbers committed to heart more than anyone. I think he's got. So he's very good. This is not even a bit. Watto is incredible at remembering the year the movie came out, and he's very good at calculating the gross that it made. Any movie that you guys name, he could tell you the year almost spot on, and I know, roughly what the domestic I, gross was. I know that the film did not get the success it deserved in its time. I know that. Mm -hmm. Just give the year then, year. Watto. Just the year. Okay, I, I'm going to guess both. I'm going to guess both, but I'm not sure I have it. And I want to remind people for after this segment is done that Watto still has a question. Watto still has a question. Okay. Watto still has a whiteboard. It's actually a data pad on which to watch the photography. I see. I'm joking. It's my merchandise. It's a whiteboard that's designed to look like the data pad that Watto uses. I'll Watto, you're stalling. You're I'll stalling, accept anything. Watto. Yeah, what's just the year? year? I just want a year, Watto. Ow. Just a year. Ow. 
was the year 1987. 1987? So close, but no. Later. 1989. Fuck. Okay. 1989. 1989. 1989. I'm going to uh, I'm going to say that at the domestic box office in the year 1989. Right. The film UHF grossed. Seven million dollars domestic. And that's a Rob, about that neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't close, know. Patrick, 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 you've got it up on Wikipedia, like me. Wikipedia right? says six point one, which is like 6. pretty close. Six point one million dollars. Round it up. 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 Oh, here we go. Got around it. Hang on. Hard crocodile has the real number. Six million hundred fifty-seven thousand hundred fifty-seven dollars. There you go. I think wow. I was. I think I personally was that last seven dollars. Yes, I was as well. Uh, Al, I have a follow-up question. I know the water was a question. I have a follow-up question. One of the funniest, I remember as a kid getting that, as a kid, geez, when I was younger, getting that uh, DVD of UHF was a big deal for me. And then on the footage, on the DVD, like on the director's commentary, you go into detail of every address uh, <laughs> that everybody went into. Are these fake addresses you were doing as a bit, or no. were they really? That's Those are real insane. addresses. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I, I would not lie to you. So, Al, you keep saying that. As your representative, can I be selling the weird Al UHF address tour? Maps, <laughs> maps of all the addresses in the movie. <laughs> if you feel like that's a good direction for my career, John, you go right ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting on it right now. I'm going to compile all those addresses, and then we'll get some maps together, and maybe a walking tour, and uh, uh, you can record some uh, narration. Nice. You know, I, I, I was going to pitch the after party tonight, but I think this this is going to go on for another four or five hours. I'm not sure that I'm going to. Mm. Have, man, have you know. started it? I have, have not. Started? I've been I've been saving it for a special occasion. I think tonight's the night. I've been hearing God, nothing but stalling. amazing things. Oh, he could be watching the show. Watto still has a question. Watto still has a question. Well, I'm oh, so sorry. sorry. Watto still has a question. Watto. Watto has the floor, and he's Thanks. on the floor. This better nice. be good, Watto. Ben, God, the water, a lot of pressure. Ben, up better be great. I'm ready for it. Okay. Wait a minute, you're asking Ben a question? Yes. Weird Al Yankovic hasn't had since dinner. I... <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I tried to ask this question half an hour ago. Yes, Wado. Lovely to see you again. Half an hour ago, he was only two hours late for dinner. <laughs> ben. Yeah, buddy. Wado, draw it out. Draw it out. Ben. Yes, my friend. Am I mistaken? Are you a man of the Jewish persuasion? I am, yes, sir. That wasn't the question. That was the wind-up for the question. Okay, here comes the big throw. Watto's big question. I want this trending. Hashtag Watto's big question. <laughs> and before the question, a statement. Al, given the, given the windup of this question, I think you should you probably, can get there. You, you should probably leave as soon as possible, Al. <laughs> I don't, don't want to be associated with this question. I don't like where this is going. Ben. Ben. Yes, Wado. Happy Furlong. Oh, thank you. What does Wado dress up uh, as for Perm? He dresses up as a Toydarian drunk trader who loves to haggle with a gambling problem who maybe owns a slave or two. Oh, Jesus. Okay, what's your question? It's a fun, 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 fun character. This is why you don't right. ask a question when I'm mid-question, because you might not like it. Of course. It I forgot. Well, next time, say, I got a small question, a statement, a meme sentence, and then a question. This is all part of the wind-up. Here comes the <laughs> Hey, it's me and Al. Jay Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's Watto. Just ask the question, Watto. <laughs> there is Watto's big question. <laughs> Here it comes. Sponsored by Beans. Patrick, take everyone off the screen other than Ben and then and Ben and I, and then when he answers the question, bring everyone else back. Okay, we got a we got a WBQ. A WBQ. Here we go. WBQ. Ben. Yes. Hi, Watto. WBQ. Hashtag WBQ. Put in your hashtag. How are you celebrating for <laughs> is that another small one thank you uh, for that hashtag is that another small one before the big one or no yeah there might be one more question 
When is Purim? Hold up. When is Purim? Do you know off the top of your head? Wednesday, March 16th. Today, this it's is happening right now. It's happening this moment. It's happening. That's why it's a big question. Al, do you have a Purim song that we don't know about? Bring everyone back on screen. I, I do not. I'm 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 uh I'm working on one this evening after I finish uh, binging the after party and, and oh, finish. Can't wait for you to watch eight, it. Eight hour podcast. Only thirty. Al, can you email me after you watch the third episode of After Party? Can you email me and tell me if you liked it? I will tell you right now. I liked it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you, and I know your work, and I know you wouldn't do something that wasn't amazing. The You're last, very kind. The last pre-question has been. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know how I'm current. This is how I'm celebrating Purim. It, have, it starts this moment and it ends. And then I'm working. We're working nights because it's a oh. vampire movie. So it works. Time is of the essence. There are 29 minutes left in Purim. Here is the final question. It just started. Purim just started. It's Wednesday, March 16th, is it not? Doesn't it end on the it, 17th? He's in central time. The, he's in he's central time. The evening. Time. The evening of the 17th. Damn. Oh, right. Night to, oh, yeah. Yes. I'm going to them. Fine, little less yeah. pressure, but my big question still stands. Wait, what's your dog's name, Al? Uh, we haven't named her yet. What, do you have a good name for her? How old is she? You haven't named her yet. She's 13 ish. <laughs> what do you, how do you tell her to come over here? Like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey. No, no but that, that's not even a command. Well, then you follow up with, hey, go, go somewhere else. And then, and then she goes somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. She's she got her stuff here. I think that's that dog's good. name is Dr. Carl Severinsen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Watto, your question, I'm sorry. Watto still has, Watto a, still has a question. Has a big <laughs> question. Okay. Then, I, haven't eaten dinner. I haven't eaten lunch or dinner yet, by the way. Yes, Watto. Here is the big question. Okay. I don't know how I'm celebrating Purim. I know that's your side question. What's the no, big, no, no. What's the big no, question? Somehow, somehow this podcast is turning into the Stanford prison experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for repeating that you don't know you're celebrating Purim. It teed me up perfectly for Watto's big question. <laughs> ben. Yes, the, WBQ. Here it comes. Here's the question. Can't wait. Here we go. Can you please ask Watto how he's celebrating for <laughs> I guess it's more of a request. The request w for it. Wado. Yes. The WPQ May I is more of a WBR. A question? <laughs> Please, anything. Go ahead. I'm an open book. Hashtag BBQ, if you don't mind. Hashtag BBQ. That's great. Ben's big question. Hashtag BBQ. Uh, I'll ask you the question when someone has written hashtag BBQ. We'll wait for that. Okay, game. we're ready. Okay. <laughs> we're ready. That took, that took milliseconds. <laughs> Watto. Yes. I have a question. Please, go ahead. How are you celebrating Purim? <laughs> How am I celebrating Purim? How are you celebrating Purim, Watto? There's only one thing I do on Purim. It's, if you ask me, the proper way to celebrate Purim is what I'm currently doing. Wada, mm -hmm. how are you going to celebrate Purim? I'm doing this right now, Ben. I'm a notion. I'm the hammer toss. I love it. Al, I do want to point out you are right now one minute away from being here as long as Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. <laughs> Oh, you got to eclipse it. We got to break that record. Yeah. Do now, it. Al, Al, uh, I know you're looking forward to those beans. Oh, I am. I got a question for you. Okay. Do you have HBO Max? Oh, boy. I have everything. All right. So that's it. He's a yes. not in New Orleans. You're not, you can't tell him to watch Treme. He's not in New Orleans. So what are you going to ask him Well, to watch? there are other shows on HBO Max besides Treme. If really? You want, if that's you, pretty much it, isn't it? I think they added another one. Do they? Yeah, I think they you added. Should advertise that. I think that uh, guys, I'm trying to get Alice Beans. I think they added more than just Tremaine now. Dream on, guys. I'm trying to get Alice. Oh, Beans. remember that? Yeah, I love Dream uh -huh. on. Oh, sexy show. Michael McKeon from Radio Land Murders. Get out of here, George. Take it down a notch. You're so horny. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, George. How are you going to get <laughs> Alice Beans? Al? You've been drinking. You've been drinking so much of that Dasani water. You're extremely thirsty. 
Mm. A lot of salt there. Al, I want you to go to your HBO Max. Yes. Okay, here we go. Go to the left-hand side. Go to your hubs. You know how to get to your hubs? They got all sorts of hubs there. They got Studio Ghibli. They got every kind of hub you want. Okay. Go to the Looney Tunes hub. Okay. Scroll to the side. Go all the way to season one. You're going back into the black and white era. All right. That's where you're going to find some beans. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. George. Oh. Hollywood awesome. Capers featuring Beans. Beans was Porky's sidekick. They phased him out pretty quickly. <laughs> but you can have him all to yourself tonight. Wait, Porky and Beans? Uh, Porky and Beans. Yeah, Porky, Porky and Beans. Beans. You're just now getting it? It's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> Who was Beans' manager? What kind of animal was Beans? It looks like he was... Uh, you know how I talked about how you get away with... Uh, Copyright violation just by moving it slightly to the side. Yeah, so that was basically Mickey Mouse, but you just sort of like give him pointy ears. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a vampire Mickey Mouse. <laughs> He's real close to Mickey Mouse. It's just like Undead. change three things. There is an article, uh, an old school article, when they talk about making Sonic the Hedgehog that they combined like two of the most popular. I think it was like it might have been Felix the Cat and Mickey Mouse, or two. They combined two. And that's how they kind of came up with the design. Isn't that true? Yeah. But he's faster. Yeah. Sonic's the fastest. That's why I love him. Thanks, George. I didn't know you liked Sonic. That's nice of you. You know I like fast stuff, though, right? Sure. I didn't know that. Can you give me yeah. an example of your three fastest things that you like? What are the things that you eat, that you like love that are the three fastest things? Fast cars, Millennium Falcon, and uh, running away from Nazis. Because <laughs> that's fast. Yeah. Why do you think I dressed up as a guy who has a Sonic for a hand for Purim? What the Ooh. fuck? Did you guys just see what? that? What? Wow. Did you guys just see that or am I freaking out? I think, I, I think that was a... Oh. Wow. It's Sonic and the Pirate. Yeah. He said, for a miracle. Sonic I'm a Nazi Nazi and George has Sonic for a hand. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. George, that's unbelievable. Happy Purim, Ben. Happy Purim. Happy Purim, everybody. Oh, my Purim. goodness. How, how long does this show go for? Another couple hours? Yeah. I mean, get out right now, we're, get out we're you firmly, can. Up, to, up to this point, we've been in speed territory, but now we're in speed two cruise control territory. We don't need to go any further. That's not true. I think we could push this another couple hours. Probably. The show's in cruise control. We can all kick back and relax now. Yeah, it doesn't have to be so tightly uh, scripted from this point on. We can kind of yeah. loosen up and take it easy. <laughs> Everything has now? to be uh, <laughs> uh, pressure's off. Would you say we're basically in Phantom Menace territory as opposed to New Hope territory now? I think, yeah, yeah, better, I think so. Better. The best is the best territory. And that we're the best part. The best is yet to come. Oh, I guess Wado, you exist in Phantom Menace territory, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, do I ever. Yeah. <laughs> I put a few Wados in. You get, there are some hidden Wados in some of the movies that people don't catch. Wait, you were telling me you wanted to you you were telling me yesterday, George, that you wanted to um, reboot two franchises that you had nothing to do with. Yeah. What were those two franchises? You were like, if I could reboot any two franchises, it'd be these two, and they were very unusual. Yeah, uh, Sherlock Holmes's smarter brother. The Gene Wilder. Yeah, Gene mm-hmm. Wilder comedy from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Reboot that. I don't know it. Then. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I would defund the Keystone Cops. <laughs> defund the Keystone Cops. What do you think the demographic of people out watching of this is? <laughs> what do you think the demographic is who watches this that gets these? Mostly, jokes mostly, uh, mostly beans watchers from the early Looney yeah, Tunes. Mostly freak. beansies. Yeah, I didn't know you had a big beansy following. Oh yeah, A A A K C A B. All Keystone Cops are buffoons. <laughs> He's fun, though. They're falling all over the place. Yeah. I just want to quickly clarify that your pitch to Ben in the conversation that you did have yesterday. That's right. It's very true. You said to Ben, you volunteered, I would like to reboot the Keystone Cops. Ben probably said, really? And you said, yes, I would like to reboot them by defunding them. Yeah. That's, I that's want to bring them back. Just you so got to tell a new story. story. What's a new story? They've never been defunded before. That was what they... Have you ever seen them? That's how they behave with full funding. <laughs> wow. So imagine if they had no funding is what you're saying. Ooh. Yeah. Get a couple of social workers in there. <laughs> you know? You're talking about the Keystone social workers? 
He's on social work. You don't know how to deal with actual problems in society. Not just like all jump onto one police car and drive down the street crashing into everything. Wow. Wow. And then Sherlock okay. Holmes' smarter brother. That's more of a passion okay. project for you. Though. Right. Yeah. It's not, there's, there's no central conceit there. Yeah. And instead of Gene Wilder, but George, is that a franchise? No, but it should have been. That's the thing. You want to reboot it. And instead of Gene Wilder, let's get Van Wilder in there. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the fictional like character, yeah. the fictional character Van Wilder played by Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. He likey. Many, many years sorry, ago. Do you, sorry, guys. You, did you, I'm sorry. Did you say, sorry. What did you say, George? He said he likey. Instead of Gene Wilder, let's get Van Wilder. I heard that part. Then you responded mm -hmm. with. And I said me likey, which is what Van Wilder says. Right. So you want. The Can we get a confirmation on this? Can we it's get a famous, a famous, Van very Wilder famous catchphrase from Van Wilder. The pitch is George Lucas presents. National Van, Van, Van Wilder in. In. Sherlock Holmes' younger as, brother. As Gene Wilder. I thought it was smarter brother. Okay, I'm sorry. George Lucas presents. Van the younger Wilder. brother would be a prequel. National Van Lampoon's Van Wilder's. Ryan Reynolds as Gene Wilder's as Van character Wilder, as Gene Wilder in, in Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes', Holmes is smarter brother, smarter brother. Colon Game of Shadows. Yeah. Can I uh, can I say something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk show. Al is now twenty minutes away from being on this podcast longer than the runtime of Dances with Wolves. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We, now, Al, we've had Kevin people stay Garden. for an Irishman plus. We've never had anyone stay for a world plus. Yeah. Yeah. Watto, I need the year and I need the domestic growth of Dances with Wolves. And I need it within 10 seconds. I don't need you okay. bullshit. 1990. Uh, 43 oh, million. Oh, well. It is 1990 because I know it beats Goodfellas at the Oscars that year. But I think Wait, Al is, is severely underestimating the domestic growth of Dances with Wolves which I will say was $160 million. I'm not counting all states in that gross, so I could be yeah. correct. <laughs> I'm counting 15 if the United States 100, I'm mean, even going to up it. I'm going to say 165. And one second, I see the worldwide. Uh, I have it right here. This is what I got for you. 1990 is the release date. That's correct. The domestic gross, what did you think it was? I said 165. I can give you, I can give you US and Canada. Is that okay? Yes, please. I'll take it. Okay, what is your everybody go around the horn? What do you think the domestic gross for Dances with Wolves is? For US and Canada? Yes, sir. Right. Current and, current and day total? Price is right rules? Uh, uh, closest without going over? All re releases, the, everything counts. Everything counts up until now. The, may, may I say the worldwide gross is is very, very, very impressive. Very impressive. Right, right. But we're just looking for the U.S. and Canada gross, which is also incredibly impressive, but the worldwide will blow your mind. We went worldwide crazy for wolves. <laughs> nice. Can we I'm, use that? I'm going to stand behind 165 domestic, but I'm going to additionally throw out 325 worldwide. 165 domestic. Patrick? I've seen the number, so I don't want to. Okay, Patrick, George Patrick Lucas? Patrick recuses. Alpha Star yeah, Wars. Recuse. Half of a Star Wars. Okay, which Star Wars, sir? You've released many of them. Yeah, it will be half, exactly half of one of the Star Wars. I won't say which. You guess which. Okay, John Hodgman. I'm going to say 100 Howard the Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Yankovic. Uh, 127 million domestic, uh, infinity worldwide. Wow. Wow, infinity. Okay. I'm going to first say that Infinity Worldwide is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> good guess, though. Of good guess, Al. He did say no, that's of course. It destroyed, Dances of course. with Wolves destroyed the global economy. There was no currency <laughs> left. That's correct. Every that's bank so account was empty. He said it was an impressive number. And with that hint, Infinity was a good guess. Mm -hmm. U.S. and Canada gross. $184 How are the $84 million. Wow. I understand. Worldwide, worldwide, four hundred twenty-four million dollars in nineteen ninety, which, is, which by the way, to, for Al's credit, equals infinity dollars today. There you go. With inflation, how much? Thank you. 
<laughs> the, so someone, someone, someone to de-age Al for this photo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the worldwide again, Ben? 420. So the worldwide, John, was oh. uh, 424. 100 I, Howard the Ducks. 100 Howard the Ducks is three. Three hundred and eighty million dollars. So oh, oh, you're so close. More so than close. hundred Howard the Ducks. <laughs> so close. So incredibly close. I don't like. I don't like that. Oh, well, that was a great game, everybody. I'm, I'm, Howard the Duck made thirty-eight million dollars. I don't like that. Sorry, I, that's I, crazy. I want, if I can just, I don't believe promote it. Something that I have no part in, but I think is a good resource. Uh, someone is independently. Oh made a website called Box Office Game. It's boxofficega.me. That's sure. like a Wordle-style quiz where every day they put up a new five, a top five from a weekend at some point between 1980 and now, and you have to guess what the top five at the box. That sounds like it would be extremely fun for a person. Uh, it's fun for a specific person. Mm -hmm. I, Wait, I gotta. I have to order food within the next ten minutes, or I can't get food for the whole night, and I haven't eaten in twelve hours. So I'm gonna put oh, you on oh. mute, but I'm like physically here. Give me one. I'll see you very soon. Oysters from Galatoire. Oyster from Galatoire. Um, uh, 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 garlic, garlic bread from Galatoire. Add that on. It's um, Treme. HBO. Max. Treme. I can't eat Treme. Lace, I can't eat. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Get some of that. Um. Extra remoulade. Get extra remoulade. Oh, God damn it. Beads. Al. Beads. Beans. Beans. Al, how does it make you feel that Ben's Beans. been here for 30 seconds and he's already getting food? Yeah, right. I, I didn't realize that leaving was an option. <laughs> it was always an option. The thing, the thing, the thing is, Al, Al's never going to leave. You guys, he's just too He's just too good a person. Yeah. yeah. You, have to, you have to tell him to go away. Al, trying to no one wants to do it because he's such a pleasure to have around. <laughs> Al, the Al what do you want to plug? I've got, I've got all, all I want to plug is Dick Town and the after party. Wow. Thank you, Al. That's so nice. Al, I'm starting to think that the real food was the friends we made along the way. There you go. Also, also that Al is a, a, a cannibal. And I started to feel like perhaps the real food was the friends we made along the way. No, wait, I meant to say the opposite. The real, yes. the real, the real friends was the food we made along the way. I, I'm starting to feel like the real friends with the food you made along the way. I'm starting to feel like the real friends, perhaps. Oh no, Watto's. Uh, I need to reboot Watto. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I'm starting. Do a hard reboot. Watto? Yeah, what do you come to my shop for? Oh no. oh, no. Hold on. Uh, I have a question. Are Republic credits good here or not good here? Uh, your mind tricks don't work on me. Only money. Uh, is that a, a oh, is that, do you own that child? Yes. All He's right. nice, no? Ben! Ben! What did you hey order? Hey, guys, I did it. I what ordered chicken. Got? chicken. I got chicken. But I have to. Famous, so today, famous, by the way. Oh, yeah. Famous New Orleans chicken. Yeah. Famous New Orleans uh, chicken. No, I, from, from the hotel that I'm, I'm currently staying in because it closes soon. But um, I am filming nights starting tomorrow. So I have to somehow stay up to like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. tonight to get myself ready for it. Great. Weird Al is with you. Weird Al will be there with you all the way. <laughs> At some point, the four of us will leave the show, and the two of you can hold the screen down to get. Weird, ben on he's the too screen. nice. He weird won't Al, leave until weird you force Al him too, out. Is too polite to leave, and he's too nice to force out. That's the problem. He is too polite to leave. He's yeah. too kind. I don't think he'll. I don't think he'll leave. You have to like. He's like. He's like you know the part of the movie. Get out of here. We don't want you anymore. Get out of <laughs> oh, here. No, that'd like, be heartbreaking. We couldn't do that. Couldn't. Just imagine everyone yelling like at Weird a, Al. Get a the dog fuck that out. you're trying to push out. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, Weird Al. Yeah. And then we all want you out here anymore. Crying. Go what? on, throwing rocks at Weird Al. Get out of here. No, I don't love you anymore. Do I need to be the bad guy? What? Okay. Yeah, Al? Patrick, you need to be the bad guy. Al? Don't be mean to him. Don't be mean to him. Don't not be mean to him. He doesn't deserve I would it. Never be, I would not ever be able to live with myself if I was mean to him. But Al, you got to eat, buddy. It's time <laughs> to go eat. It's time to eat. Yeah, Al, you look so skinny right now. You have oh, to Al. eat right now. 
Al, get out of here. How long? How long? Let me ask, get out of here, Al. Do you have any more of the body of MC Go. Escher to, to eat? Noshing on some Escher? Get oh, out no. of here, Al. Go. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. I gotta go. Get out of here, Al. Bye, Al. Bye, Al. Goodbye. Bye, Al. Bye, Al. Bye, Al. Thank you. Thank you. Get some Love beans you. now. Goodbye. Beans. Patrick. Oh. Ben. Patrick. Ben. Why Thank did you boot Weird Al Yankovic? Ben. He he was not gonna make it through the rest of this stream. We were gonna lose him. Did ben. you boot him? Don't ever say anything but that. I love you just saying Ben methodically. Ben. Yeah. It's like a metronome for me. Ben. Yeah, it's like rain against the window. You, were, you said you were filming Nights in New Orleans. Yeah. That would be Nights of Rodanthe, would it? Sorry. I, you talked into your sippy yogurt, so I couldn't hear you. The voice, your voice echoed through the yogurt, so I couldn't hear it. Say it again. That wouldn't be Nights of Rodanthe, would it? Sorry. Is that a, a, is that a, a movie or... Nights of Prosperity. Sorry, you got it. Put the put the yogurt down for a second while you're talking, buddy. I really can't understand. Nights and Day, the Tom Cruise movie. The problem is, it's Nights in Rodanthe. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. George is getting confused because I what? pitched George something the other day. If we want to talk about franchise reboots, of course we all know the later in life romantic drama. Starring Diane Lane, Richard Gere, and Viola Davis was titled Nights in Rodent. Mm. Oh, <laughs> moments too late. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ben, Al, and MC Escher. Wait, John, what time did you, how long have you been here, John? Have it's you been here for the whole time? No. It's about 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. <laughs> right on. I, was in, I was in the waiting room for a long time. And then uh, the show started. Watho pissed the reboot. I was in the waiting room again for a long time, but then I got on about uh, oh, nice. minutes before you got here. In Rodenti to George. And he said, Nights in Rodenti, that don't impress me much. What about the Knights of Rodenti? What if everyone who romanced Diane Lane on screen after the year 2000 had to team up to rescue her? In suits of Whoa. armor. Whoa. We're yeah, talking gear. We're talking John Cusack. Stacked We're talking. Cast. I'm sorry, what, George? Stacked cast. Yeah. I don't think Hugh Grant ever did it, but he feels on game. So let's throw him into the mix. Yeah. Uh, Costner. Costner, a knight of Rodenthe. <laughs> <laughs> Twice as nice. Wait, this is you're bringing up a great Waddle. May I may I uh, ask a question to George? Yes. Do you want us to leave, George? Yeah, just me and George for one second. Okay, a lot of people are. are there's a lot of new Star Wars series out, yeah. right? A lot of Star Wars series. Some people are using, you know, the Episode One uh, uh, Obi Wan. People are different, you know, stuff like that. Sorry, you're hurting. You're hurting it. You're hurting it. Oh, Sorry. He's, he's comfy. Um, if you could cast Star Wars right now, Sherlock Holmes smart. Oh my God, it was real with Ben Wilder. <laughs> if you if you could cast a New Hope today with mm -hmm. actors that are appropriate age appropriate today, what would your cast be? Uh, well, I mean, probably get Leo in there, right? Sorry, Leo who? Leo uh, McKern, who is in uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother. Oh, Let's okay. Uh, we're saying age. We're saying age appropriate, though, right? Oh, so then Leo, then Leo DiCaprio. Leo DiCaprio is probably too old, also for who? Like hey, Luke Skywalker? Uh, old man. Which old man? Random old man? Uh, what if he was old Ben Kenobi? Don't do the voice. Don't when you're trying to give me attitude, get high pitched. It's so yeah, unlike yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, old Ben Kenobi. You don't like it. So you want Le you don't you want Leonardo DiCaprio to play Obi Wan Kenobi, correct? Yeah. Okay. Who's playing Luke Skywalker? Um. Who's good now? Um. Probably. Uh, I'm worried that you don't watch new stuff, George. I watch some new stuff. 
What's the, the latest things, movie? One you of the Stranger seen? Things kids, right? Finn Wolf Gang. What is his face? Finn Wolfhard. You know his yeah. name. Finn Wolfhard. He's probably been on the show. He's a he's a comedy fan. He's a Ghostbuster. So? Yeah, I know who we're talking about. He's a Ghostbuster. What's wrong with you? I'm so impressed with your setup, Ben. You look like you're being shot on 35 millimeter film. I am. It looks so good. Like I have a pretty good setup right here, and it's but it's like a little clean, a little too digital. Yours looks very warm. It's digital, but it's warm. I appreciate it. Well, this is just the wall, and this is the hotel room that I'm staying in. Why does everyone come back? <laughs> I mean, all you had to do was answer the question. I didn't say everyone go away. Just justify your Han Solo. Answer. Who's your Han Solo? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn is too old for Han Solo now. Haven't be old. How Han old Solo. was How old was Harrison Ford when he well, played then, okay, Han Solo? Then Vince Vaughn play Oldie One Kenobi. Oldie One Kenobi, not I'll Oldie One. I'll change it now. If I'm making it new, put new actors in. I'll have me called Oldie One Kenobi. That's not funny. That's a little funny, Ben, and you know it. What the fuck are these people doing here? We're in the middle of a conversation, Patrick. Just justify being back. You don't have to leave. Just justify. Isn't that sad that they have so low self-esteem that they can't? Princess speak? Leia. You want to Princess be? Leia. Princess Leia. J Lo. <laughs> Why Jenny from the Block? You do you listen to hip hop and R&B? A little bit. Name three current hip hop artists. Uh, Kanye. Sure. Yeah. Two more. Um, Lil Nas X. Trumbo is the knight of Rodanthe. Trumbo is played <laughs> by Brian Cranston, was married to Diane Lane. Add them to the roster of the knights of Rodanthe. Who's the one who's saying Panda? Panda. All right, someone else asked the question. I don't want to, I don't want him to know the answer and I don't want Matthew to. McConaughey in the movie Serenity slips the salon. He would be a knight of Rodin? Lane. He would be a knight Rodin. of Rodin. Liam Neeson played Mark Felt in the Mark Felt biopic. But who played his wife, Audrey Felt? Why it was Diane Lane making Liam Neeson a knight of Rodin. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> ben, are you scared George, of vampires? Still... In real life? Mm -hmm. Um, If I saw one, I'd be terrified. Yeah. Absolutely, I'd be terrified if I saw one. So what? A vampire. A vampire. Cartoon yeah. Kyle McLaughlin. We all remember Diane Lane as Riley's mom in Inside Out. But who is her dad? Cartoon Kyle McLaughlin. Welcome to the Knights of Rodin. Ben, is your vampire movie like Count Duckula? <laughs> Count Duckula was amazing. You're talking about the Duck and the DuckTales yeah. franchise? No, no. It was, uh, he had no. his own thing. It, it, but he was similar vibe. He had a very DuckTales vibe. Count well, Duck there's also Magic of Dispel who can kind of feel like a count yeah, as but well. She's not a vampire, though. She does <laughs> black magic. The, the but magic count, count Duckula is 100% uh, a vampire. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer is no. The female lead in hardball. But who gave her the hardest bowling of all? Why? <laughs> it was Keanu Reeves, member emeritus of the Knights of Rodetti. <laughs> that's a good bet. I don't uh -huh. even know how we got here. You said you were John, you know, you, you, John, you do you, you feel like they're keeping you hostage? You. What's that? Do you feel like they're keeping you hostage as well? I was just about to say, I'm, I'm no weird Al. I don't, I don't have to be the nicest guy in the world. I can leave. No. I can live. You seem very nice though, John. I feel like you are a very kind person. I no, try, I try. I'm just happy to be here, Ben. I'm just happy to be here. Secretary. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that if I leave, if I leave this this uh, conference call, I'll never be invited to another conference call. Diane Lane owns a horse. A horse. I'll get a you day. think we're? You think we're never going to invite Al back? I assume she fucks. The oh, I presume not. Secretary. After, after, after the way Welcome he fucked up. I didn't know when to leave. 
Of course not. Overstated. Welcome. Can you tell how many people are here? Can you tell how many people are watching? Yeah, there's 748 people watching, Ben. Oh, no. Wow. Go. What's the height? What's the height of uh, this, this one so far? Tonight? Uh, it might have gotten close to 800, but it's been pretty consistent. Ben, what kind of chicken did you? What kind of chicken did you order? New Orleans special. Thank chicken, you for asking. Chicken it was, etouffee. It's, chicken. No, it's like a, It's a chicken with some Brussels sprouts on the side. I what I really wanted was uh, chicken fingers and stuff like that. But I was like, man, uh, I just I can't do it tonight. I don't think I ate a great breakfast this morning. Where'd you go? A place called Bearcat in New Orleans. Oh, all right. Sounds like a wuzzle. Sounds good. What'd you have for breakfast? It's a classic. Sorry, it's, classic it's just. Question. Did you hear what George said? It's crazy to me that nobody else picks up on these, these like the acid that leaks out of his mouth when he opens his mouth. We've been you know what? About a lot. You know what a wuzzle is, Ben? John, do you know what a wuzzle is? Is it a Star Wars? Uh, uh, well, well kind of. It's the same ownership uh, 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 now. Uh, what? What, uh, what? What? It's from one of the George Lucases. No, it's not from a George Lucas. It's from a Walt Disney, specifically a Michael Eisner Walt Disney. In the 1980s, the Disney Corporation was floundering and they were looking to create some new characters. So they created a couple of made-for-television franchises fe featuring all new characters. You might be familiar with the adventures of the gummy bears, but did you also know that there was a series called Disney's Wuzzles? And Wuzzles are animals that are a combination of two different kinds of animals. Sorry, George. I missed oh, George, 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 George. I missed it. I missed it from the top. Hit me from the top. Yeah. Take All right. Time. So Walt, uh, the Wuzzles are not George Lucas creations. They are Walt Disney creations, specifically Michael Eisner's Walt Disney's. In the 1980s, the Disney company was floundering. They wanted to create. Look at us, characters. George. Don't look off to the side. Look at us. What? Look they at us. They new the characters. They, so they decided you might remember the adventures of the gummy bears, but you also remember Disney's the Wuzzles. And Wuzzles are animals that are combinations of more than one animal, usually two different animals, a la a bear cat, as Ben referenced. I made a reference to the Wuzzles earlier in the show. It was very quiet and no one noticed. But this is a callback to earlier in the show. I'm talking about Disney's Wuzzle. Wait, 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 George. S start from the beginning. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Disney's The Wuzzles. I'm talking about another creation of George Lucas, <laughs> the creation of Walt Disney, specifically Michael Eisner's Walt Disney's in the 1980s. The Disney company was floundering. They decided to create some new characters. You might remember the adventures of the gummy bears, but do you remember Disney's The Wuzzles? The Wuzzles are animals that are combinations of multiple different kinds of animals, such as a bear cat, as Ben referenced. So that's why I brought up The Wuzzles. I referenced The Wuzzles earlier in the show. It was very quiet. Not many people noticed, but here it is again. It's a callback to the Wuzzles. And it's something you made up, George? No, it's not a George Lucas made up. It's a Walt Disney made up, specifically a Michael Eisner Walt Disney made up. During the 1980s, the Disney Corporation was floundering and they decided they wanted to create some new characters. So they created the Adventures of the Gummy Bears, but they also created the Wuzzles. The Wuzzles are cartoon characters who are combinations of more than one animal, a la a bear cat, which is what Ben referenced. Which is why I brought up the Wuzzles. I referenced the Wuzzles earlier in the Wait, show. Wait, and you said, and Bob Iger created that? No, Bob Chapek is a monster, but he had nothing to do with this. It was Michael Eisner who brought the Disney Corporation from the brink of failure to a new horizon of success in the 1980s with the invention of Touchstone Pictures, the motion picture chain franchise label that is for adults so they can make movies such as <laughs> Down and Out in Beverly Hills, Outrageous Fortune, or Ruthless People. You know, people call Hollywood many things. City of stars, city of angels, city of dreams. But there's a seedier side to Hollywood, a side I call Hollywood land, a magical land in which Diane Lane is fucked <laughs> by a sad, drunk, suicidal Superman played by Ben Affleck. Sad, drunk, suicidal Superman played by Ben Affleck. Welcome to the Knights of Rodin. Someone in the comments is saying they can see Wikipedia in my glasses. Those are the comments, not Wikipedia. Because I got some of the information. Wait, how wrong. do you see comments? They're comments? All I see is our little private it's live chat. stream. They're, I mean, if they were seeing language, they were seeing the screen, they were seeing the comments. I don't have Wikipedia up. That's why I didn't Wait, get ben, all the do you want right. to read the comments? 
Well, what I want, honestly, is to understand where the Wuzzles came from, because I'm not quite certain how it worked out. Yeah, no, I... You said, George, I was busy looking up other Diane Lane movies. What did you say? So they're just singular animals, right, George? Hey, more than one animal will make a new animal. How? Name, here, let's play Wuzzles. Name an animal, Patrick. Uh, uh, bear cat. No, one animal. That sounds like a Wuzzle. Name a normal animal. A he bear. was a three uh, Wuzzled animal. A, a, gir a giraffe, a giraffe shark. Okay, but call it a giraffe or a sharaf. <laughs> Wait, but explain George. to me where it came from, though. Yeah, they wanted to make new characters. They were like, "Look, Mickey, Donald, Goofy. They're not doing it. We need new blood." It was like when Lauren brought in like uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Randy Quaid and people. You know, Lauren Lapkus. Lauren, yeah, Lauren Lapkus like, brought in Randy Quaid and Robert Downey Jr. Why? To bring, to bring in new blood into the yeah. into the SNL but, franchise. But George, yeah, this is a bear cat. Bear cats that's are a real, real thing. That's a, not a bear cat. That's a binturong. That's a Wuzzle. You're on Wuzzlepedia. <laughs> you don't show me a Wuzzlepedia page. Tell me that's no Wuzzle. Also known as the Bear Cut. Wuzzle. Patrick, now, look George, at Fox I did, find, I did find a fun fan-created Wuzzle poster. Cool. It says, they want this to be made by Disney and Blue Sky and be marketed as the studio that brought you Frozen oh, and wait. Leo. That's the Wuzzles. Wait, can you go to the real Wuzzles? I think I actually do remember these I mean, guys. These are the, these these are the, these are the real Wuzzles. Those are the real Wuzzles. Those aren't the real Wuzzles. Those are the real Wuzzles. Those are the real Wuzzles. So those what's that wuzzles. messed up m moose fish down at the bottom? I think you named it right there. there. Mess, moose messed fish. up moose fish? All right. Moose fish. <laughs> moose fish. Messed up moose fish, and that's a bumble lion? Bumble lion, that's right. Bumble oh, yeah, lion. let's. Yeah, they didn't want. Okay, I got that right. And then we got have that a... right, John. Uh, now, John, it's actually like... called a moosel, and it's half moose, half seal. Moosel. Oh wait, let's try to guess them. Let's try to guess them, Patrick. Okay. Let's try to guess them. Don't, don't, no. don't tell. John, yeah. Watto, George, and I will. Yeah. Okay, so we have a monkey. All right, I've, I've done two already, okay. so I'll let you do you do some. Ben. I unfortunately looked them up okay. before you said it, Ben. So it's up to you and John to guess. All right. Okay. Uh, the one on the left is maybe. Uh, Hippo with a rabbit, so a uh a, 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 a rabbo or a no rabbit. now uh, that, yeah. I need to be a little Funny. creative with this one. Yeah, I got to I have to beg you to think a little laterally here. Yeah. Bonnie Poe. Is it a hippo and a rabbit? Yeah. Yes. Bonnie Poe. Okay. Sorry. Now what, what if what if the composite name of the hippo and the rabbit didn't have to include both animal names. What if there was a Sorry. sideways way of describing that combination? Uh, Jack Hippo. Uh, I think we can say this. I think we can say this. Ben, John, what is the full name of a hippo? Hippopotamus. Oh, Hi Hopopotamus. Hippo yeah. Carl uh, Severin. Hippopotamus. Hop wow. is voiced by Hop Joanne Worley. Hopopotamus. Welcome to the Knights of Rodan. <laughs> yeah, these are all these are all members of the Knights of Rodan, right? All these all these uh, hybrid animals had sex with Diane Lane. They've all given it to Diane Lane. By the show, wait, what? That's what you were doing? You, that whole thing was just people who have been in sex scenes with Diane Lane. Yes. Yeah, that was the bit. Or the sea biscuit didn't have a scene. You were just speculating. I was speculating. Yes. I was picking up on an undercurrent. What is up with this uh, chimpanzee with a candy corn for a nose? Great even... What do you think is up with him? <laughs> well, I don't know any animal that has a candy corn for. What a about nose. a unicorn? A unicorn and a chimp, a chimp or a get rid gorilla of the, or get rid a of the candy corn. Keep the shape. Yeah. Get rid of the candy corn. Keep the shape. Yeah. yeah don't get distracted by the color. Is this a thing where the animators drew? Oh, rhino! A it's a it's a rhino! It's a rhino! It's a rhino! Mm -hmm. It's a rhino pansy. Um, Hold on, Ben. I think you're close. John said that. What did you say, Ben? No, I think you're close. John's getting further oh. away. You were close. <laughs> oh. Rhinoe, rhinoe, or a mon oh. a monko? So close! So fucking close! You're close. <laughs> Stretch it out a little bit. Both is it, a, is it an ape or a monkey? Is it an ape or a monkey? 
Bonoborono. It's a monkey. It's a monkey. Rein, Rein, Reinke. 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 Stretch it out more. Stretch it. Rein, Rein, Monkey. Reinanke. Reinanke. Reinoke. Yeah. Reinoke. Reinoke. None of that is. Not, that's, that's false advertising. None of that looks like a rhino. The what about the candy cane horn? Maybe it's a rhinoceros in name only. And then there's this golden bear cub that's got flowers growing out of her brain. Is this an animal? Oh, yeah, what's that? Is this an animal hybrid or an animal plant hybrid? <laughs> oh, wait. What, is that, George, what did George just say? I got bored. Said, maybe it's a, a rhino in name only. <laughs> yeah, we get topical. Take that, Daily Show. Okay. I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, the animal in question. Uh, there's a little creative license on the flowers. Yeah, what's a flower? <laughs> what animal is flower head? I feel like there's, is it a daffodil? I think there's an element that is off screen that is not <clears throat> visible in this picture. Because it feels like her defining characteristic is not visible in this photo, which makes it a little unfair. What she is got it a kangaroo? Head? She's got wings. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not fair. She's got wings. I'm going to just say it because it's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Never, yeah. I also have to recuse myself because I just looked it up because I couldn't bear it anymore. She's well, you couldn't bear it. That's pretty <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't butter bear it. She's anymore. butter bear. Butter bear. Oh she my has... goodness. Is this a Norman Rockwell reference? <laughs> Oh no! Have we just crossed over the Nar the Norman Rockwell extended cinematic universe into the Disney cinematic universe with a wuzzle but that is part of the butter world? Wait, who? But wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who started butter, the wuzzle? I've heard of butter start? boy. I've yeah. heard of butter girl. I've Hang on, Ben. Ben is a good. Butter I'm sorry. Ben is a good question. question. Uh, Go ahead, George. Do you know how Mike the wuzzle started? Yeah, Michael Eisner took over the Disney company in the 1980s. The Disney company was floundering. And they uh, needed some new characters. So they came up with the adventures of the gummy bears. They also came up with the wuzzles. And the wuzzles are animals that are more than one animal. They also came out with touchstone pictures, movies for adults that Disney could make with no repercussions. Down and out in Beverly Don't blink. Hills. Do not blink. Do not blink. People. What? Don't blink. Don't blink. Don't blink twice. Have a staring, have a staring contest with the commenters. Ready? On three, two, one. Blink. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make it a thirty. Eight. <laughs> Eight seconds. Seven. That's pretty good. Nice. One, two, three, three, four, four. five. Six, seven. You already blinked. Eight. Yeah, I feel that we have. Yeah. You don't think you, can, you don't think you can do it in ten seconds without blinking, George? That's actually <laughs> something weird that we just learned about you. Ready? One. Ready? One. Ready? One. Two. Ready? <coughs> oh, comedian, comedian in the car getting coffee. <coughs> One. Two. Approval by I ten. I saw you choking. I thought you could use this kick. No, I don't. I hate it. But you were choking. Give me some candy. Wano, I'll eat that pickle. I am going to leave when Ben gets his chicken. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, That's I can't wait promise. for this chicken. Should... Guys, should I eat it live on the air? I bet it's a big yes. fetish for one of you guys, right? Mm. I really like the idea that we've Let's get some show. ASMR chicken eating, Ben Schwartz chicken eating. Oh, this is good, Patrick. Patrick, this is good. Oh, we're already doing some ASMR. Mm. Oh, that's great, Patrick. Patrick, that's great. That's not working, Patrick. It's embarrassing, Patrick. 
Got to make it st louder too. Not really a crisp pickle, huh? Yeah, oh, no, that's a pretty, pretty limp pick. <laughs> watch out for your fingers, Watto. Watto, watch out for your fingers, Watto. Oh, very good, like a petting zoo. Very good, Watto. We can gonna see watch. you in the reflection, Watto. We're going to watch him die wow. on the air. We're going to watch him die. This, this is going to now be known as the George Lucas snuff film. This is oh. really disturbing. Hey, guys. Oh enjoying the show tonight feel free to donate send some money our way just go to bit oh yeah what do you get isn't there like a shirt or something well you can buy shirts you can buy hats we got a lot of stuff let me pull up a picture ben you can see these uh here we go god it's crazy how much patrick looks like david crumholtz the older he gets thank you so much i Love really him. like john i really do like the fact that we have now become a show where at certain points the guests boldly announced that they will leave at a certain point <laughs> sort of defiantly john he's already gone. left he's gone guys he's gone. and you know those what? aren't books look at those i was right those are cds those aren't books he didn't want to sell off his cds to fund season three of dicktown george listen while we're here we're since we're you know late into the show we could re-plug patrick look patrick look patrick look oh, wow, Don't I've, never it. I've never seen him do this before i've heard you that he can eat oh my god i've heard I've heard that he eats Whoa. the wrapper, but I've never sure. seen it. I've sure. heard that he chews so hard he breaks the wrapper. He eats the inside. It's like how people could do that thing with a cherry stem where they nut tie the nut. I heard he can get that in his mouth. He opens it with his teeth. He eats it, and then he just throws out the wrapper. This is it right now. We're watching it. I've only heard. I've only heard this. This is unbelievable. We're watching this in real life. Oh, this I've is the trick where George eats the thing and he spits out the wrapper and it's tied in a knot? John, that's exactly right. That's exactly yeah, right. I heard that's about exactly that. right. Here he goes. Oh, he got a little bit of chocolate. You can tell he's starting to get his Here chocolate. Fix, he has to get rid of that wrapper now. He's trying to break open that wrapper. Now watch this. I've only heard that he can do it. I've never seen it before. And we're going to stick here until he does the whole thing. This is unbelievable. Here it comes. Is he breaking through? It usually takes a little bit, he says. Okay. Maybe try the other side of his mouth. He's not having some. Okay, very good. Can't yeah. use his hands. Now, Ben, what is he chewing right now? Is this a Twix or a Charleston Chew, or what is it? Thanks, John. So, John, what he's chewing right now is a Laffy Taffy. I'd say one of the worst candies you can eat. So yeah. his his reward for getting through mm. this is one of the worst candies you can eat. No one likes a Laffy Taffy, but here's George Lucas eating one, and he's going George to Lucas loving it. He's trying to all he has to get. And, John, you would say, by the way, while we're doing the common surface, you would mm -hmm. say that it doesn't seem like a hard thing to do to break through a little little flimsy wrapper, right? No, Ben, I would have guessed that the, this would have been over about, uh, oh, I don't know, 30, 35 seconds ago. But uh, I agree. It, be, yeah. it, it all depends on the staleness of the Laffy Taffy. This could be. That's true. If this Laffy Taffy is a couple of years old, uh, it's, it's impossible to say because there's an sure, Now, John. Yeah. You would say I was going to say you would say that the uh, the problem with this technique that he's using is the taffy itself is probably getting stuck to the wrapper, making it near impossible to get the wrapper off. Correct. Well, if you if you go into this and you accidentally salivate all over the taffy and the wrapper, then mm -hmm. there is going to be adhesion mm -hmm. at that point. There will be binding. Mm -hmm. So the trick is what you okay. want to do is drink as much Dasani water as possible, so your mouth is desert right. dry, basically. Right. Get the actually, salt in there to kind of get the salt corrode. in there to dry it all out now. Okay, we here we go. Here, uh, so the Dasani is coming in. Now this is okay, allowed. This is allowed within only one pool. sip, though. Only one sip, and only it can't touch sip. his lips. It has to be poured from the higher height. Higher height, of course. If we're going by the league rules, higher height. There has to be five inches what of is, distance. What is on perfect your perfect done? And now he can use that, that to chew. He, again, he can't touch. He can't touch his mouth. Can't touch. But hopefully, now, again, what he's what George Lucas is trying to do is take the wrapper off the wrapper, <laughs> Laffy Taffy, eat the Laffy Taffy, and spit out the wrapper. Now, That's what he's trying to do. Oh, the, oh, 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 Not, oh my gosh, Ben. Not wow. only have you done it, wow. not only have you done it, but it has come out as a perfect origami swan, just like at the end of Blade Runner. That's really, that's really incredible. Wow. I have to say, Unbelievable, Jeff. I, I, I can't honestly, believe we were here for it. Honestly, Ben, I did not think he had it. I thought he had lost it, but he, I mean, there's a reason that he's known as the master of the Laffy Taffy Challenge. You know, oh, here we go. What is it? It's a Pop-Tart. It looks to me like this is a whole Pop-Tart. Is it a Pop-Tart? Is it Pop-Tart? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's about to do it with the Pop-Tart way easier. Whoa. Harder, not a sticky thing. Here it goes. Not allowed to use his hands. He's about to eat the whole Pop-Tart and just spit out that foil wrapper. I Two Pop-Tarts to a package, John. I got I to gotta say, Ben, I don't think we've seen 
a clearer definition of hubris than what we're seeing right here. <laughs> George, George Lucas got hungry, but is he hungry enough to eat two Pop-Tarts out of a wrapper without using his hands? <laughs> the Remove skill set the it takes, by the way. I, it's just, just, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen it done. Yes, okay, there we go. Wado this, helping this him. The league, rules, the league rules say This is allowed. A, a second chance is allowed. Now he's using a dolphin technique for this one, John. And uh, mm-hmm. what I appreciate about it is that he's thinking about, like, right now, what he's not thinking about is he can't get forward. He's not getting any more food right now. He's trapped and he's lost. Can't use his hands. Cannot use his hands. Okay, That's fine. We get that back his mouth no, using it. He, he can use a, a sonic hand, though. He's That's allowed to use a sonic hand. A sonic hand is allowed. <laughs> he lost it. <laughs> But, oh, that's such a shame. He can use such his a feet. Such a, such, a master his of his, such a master of his craft, but, you know, he just, I think he overreached. <laughs> Wado, what's the next candy that you have for George? Because we know this is only the second one. There's one more. There, there, is, a, there is always a third. A bag of onions. onions. Oh, that's a great one. A bag now, of Funyuns. That's an, un, an to, unopened bag of Funyuns. <laughs> no, say, this is very exciting, Ben, because, I mean, this is what George is known for. He is known as George Bag of Funyuns Lucas. <laughs> if we can just get this past, is the I mean, picture. I have to say, this is uh, to me, this feels like a misstep, but, you know, I doubted him on the Laffy Taffy. Maybe George Lucas will be able to pull this off. This is unbelievable. By the way, he's now trying to chew. Look at the little tiny bites now. He's trying little tiny bites now. Little tiny little bites. Tiny, little tiny bites little now. Tiny, little tiny rat bites. Yeah, that's a technique that I haven't seen. <laughs> I haven't seen that since Tokyo, honestly, Ben. And uh, it's a pretty amazing that he's going to use it now. But can I be can I, can I be honest with you, John? This is Please. this is a desperate man. What we're watching right now. What we're watching is well, a desperate man who cannot pull it off. It's with that, yes, yeah, so and there he goes with Sonic hand helping him out. But this is a desperate uh-huh. man trying to get the little crumbs out, trying to get the crumb bolts out right now. And the, ama- the amazing the amazing here he goes. Is- and the amazing thing is that if it were not tonight, this very night, Purim, Sonic Hand wouldn't be allowed. Mm-hmm. Sonic Hand would not be able That's to. That's true. Allowed. Absolutely correct. Sonic and Waddle, you here. know the rules. You're still allowed to, you're, while it's in his mouth, you're allowed to pour that water in five inches above his face, even if his mouth can't accept it. Right. So this is it. This is a way to lubricate the, uh, this lubricate the, the things to get in there. Here so we go. Wonderful. Use, yep. And maybe this will ease very good. along. <laughs> Very good, very, very good, uh, very, very good, Wado. <laughs> good, Wado. That's perfect. <laughs> Let me take a picture. Just that's for me. Uh, yep. uh, to that other camera, if you don't mind, Patrick, I want to take a picture of him pouring the water while he's trying to eat with the Sonic yep. can. Try to use this as promotion for a. Uh, okay, this is great. Can you can yeah show that Sonic can? That's great. Now a little bit higher. That's great. And here we go. And there you go. And whenever you're ready, and pour I, that whenever I'm you're ready. Wado, and this is the Sonic board thing. <laughs> and that second camera does come courtesy to us from the Waffle House. Thank you for Waffle House. Really? Oh my goodness. Yep. Oh, oh God. George. <laughs> well, we have seen the heights of the heights and the lows of the lows. I would urge Watto to move in quickly and make sure that uh, George Lucas is. <laughs> Able to breathe because his airway is clear. Can I just hop in and say we did a show on a boat last week, and this is now the second show in a row where George Lucas is thrown up during the show. Uh, that scared. wasn't throw up. That was just you spitting out. That was just you spitting out. The oh, stuff right I there. don't know. I don't know. And I'll be uh, pouring everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Quite a performance. He goes out, not a winner of the second challenge, but definitely has the heart and the now oh, inflamed yeah. esophagus of a champion. 100%. And we get... Always. Great. 